Python Programming, Deep Learning, Three Books in One, A Complete Guide for Beginners, Python Coding for AI, Neural Networks and Machine Learning, Data Science Analysis with Practical Exercises for Learners, written by Anthony Adams, narrated by Russell Newton. Learn Python. Get started now with our Beginner's Guide to Coding, Programming, and Understanding Artificial Intelligence in the Fastest Growing Machine Learning Language, written by Anthony Adams, narrated by Russell Newton. Introduction The Python programming language would be a really contemporary online programming language that was originally conceived and made by Guido van Rossum in the 1980s. Since that moment, Python has become a high-heeled programming language that is modular and adaptive. A variety of the biggest sites in the world are using Python, such as YouTube, Discus, and Reddit. Python presents several attributes which make it an attractive programming platform, such as stability, portability, object-oriented improvement, a strong standard library, and a wealth of third-party modules or bundles. Stability Python was under active development since the late 1980s and is now thought to be a programming language. The programmers of this Python language conduct comprehensive functionality and regression testing to ensure the language stays bug-free and steady with every new release. Portability Python programming provides several features that make it an attractive option for online software development. Python programs are portable, as Python interpreters are easily available from many modern operating systems, together with some embedded computing applications. Object-oriented improvement, the object-oriented nature of Python, makes it the greatest initial language for new developers and simple to learn for programmers migrating to Python from additional object-oriented languages. Python programming is instinctive and reinforces great application structure and object-oriented approaches. Standard Library The standard Python library provides developers various attributes like more complex languages, such as C++, while maintaining pragmatic and simple language system. Comprehensive file-based I.O., database interactivity, innovative exception handling, and a slew of built-in data types make Python appropriate for both web programs and mimicked programming. This makes Python net programming a simple endeavor for program developers hoping to transition into net software development. Third-party modules Python is famous to be an inclusive language, utilizing extensive functionality inside the library. On the other hand, the growing prevalence of Python programming has caused a massive group of third-party packages, modules, or modules, therefore, that expand Python's functionality and permit the language to look after programming challenges which are exceptional. For example, modules can be obtained for managing non-standard database links and advanced cryptography functionality. Furthermore, there are modules available for managing everyday tasks, such as reading record metadata, which include graphs, and compiling Python applications to standardized executable applications. Python web programming has been made accessible as a consequence of accessibility to several web-centric modules to manage tasks like email, preserving HTTP country, interacting with all JavaScript, along with other ordinary web development tasks. The Information Evaluation Procedure – Five Steps to Enhance Decision-Making You need greater information analysis. 
with the ideal information analysis procedure and resources, what was an overwhelming quantity of disparate data becomes an easy, clear decision stage. To boost your information evaluation skills and simplify your decisions, implement these five measures on your data evaluation procedure. Step 1. Establish your queries. On your organizational or business information evaluation, you have to start with the ideal queries. Questions must be quantifiable, concise, and clear. Lay out your queries to qualify or disqualify prospective answers to your particular issue or opportunity. As an example, begin with a clearly defined issue. A government contractor is currently experiencing increasing prices and is no more able to publish competitive contract tips. Among the several questions to figure out this business problem would comprise Could the firm reduce its employees without compromising quality? Step 2. Establish clear measurement priorities. This step divides to two sub-steps. A. Pick what to quantify and B. Decide on how to quantify it. A. Pick what to quantify. Employing the authority's contractor instance, consider what type of information you would want to answer to your main question. In cases like this, you'd want to understand the quantity and price of present employees and the proportion of time that they spend on essential business purposes. In answering this query, you probably will need to answer several sub-questions, e.g., are employees presently underutilized? If this is so, what procedure developments could help? At length, on your choice about which to measure, make certain to incorporate any sensible understanding any stakeholders may possess, e.g., if employees are decreased, how do the firm react to surges in demand? B. Pick how to quantify it. Thinking about the way you want to quantify your information is equally as important, particularly prior to the information collection period, as your measuring procedure either backs up or discredits your investigation in the future. Crucial questions to ask to this measure include What's your time frame, e.g., yearly versus quarterly prices? What's your unit of measure, e.g., U.S. dollars versus euro? What variables must be included, e.g., only annual salary versus yearly salary and cost of personal benefits? Step 3. Collect data. Together with your query clearly defined, along with your measurement priorities in place, now it's time to gather your own data. As you gather and organize your information, don't forget to keep these important points in mind. Before you gather new information, determine what data can be gathered from existing sources or databases available. Collect this information. Decide on a document saving and naming system beforehand to aid all task staff members collaborate. This procedure saves time and prevents staff members out of collecting the identical data twice. Should you have to assemble data via interviews or observation, then create a meeting template beforehand to guarantee consistency and conserve time. Maintain your gathered data organized within a log together with set dates and include some other origin notes as you proceed like any information normalization done. This clinic divides your decisions in the future. Measure 4. Analyze data. After you've gathered the ideal information to reply your query from Step 1, it's time for deeper information analysis. Start by manipulating your information in several of unique ways, like 
hammering out it and discovering correlations or simply by making a pivot table in Excel. A vanity enables you to filter and sort information from different factors and permits you to figure out the mean, maximum, minimum, and standard deviation of your information. Only make sure you prevent those five dangers of statistical information analysis. As you control information, you might find you've got the precise information you require, but more inclined, you may have to update your initial query or collect additional information. In any event, this original investigation of trends, correlations, variance, along with outliers, will help you concentrate your information evaluation on better replying your query and some other objections others may have. Through this period, information analysis tools and applications are very beneficial. Visio, both Minitab and Strata, are good software packages for complex statistical data evaluation, but generally nothing really compares to Microsoft Excel concerning decision-making tools. Should you require a review or even a primer on each of the purposes Excel accomplishes your information analysis, we advise this Harvard Business Review course. Measure 5. Allergic Effects After assessing your information and maybe conducting additional research, it's now time to translate your results. As you translate your investigation, remember which you can't ever establish a theory true. Instead, it's possible to just don't reject the hypothesis, meaning no matter how much information you collect, opportunity could always hinder your own results. As you translate the outcome of your information, inquire these critical questions. Can the information answer your initial question? How? Can the information enable you to defend against any conscience? How? Can there be some limit in your decisions, any angles that you have not considered? If the interpretation of this information holds up under all these questions and concerns, then you probably have come into a successful decision. The only remaining step is to utilize the outcomes of your data evaluation procedure to determine your very best strategy. By following these five measures on your information analysis procedure, you create better choices for your business, enterprise, or government service, as your decisions are backed by information that's been robustly accumulated and examined. With training, your information analysis gets quicker and more precise meaning that you get better, more educated decisions to conduct your business effectively. Chapter 1. What are Data Analysis and Machine Learning? What's Data Analysis? Data evaluation is described as a procedure for cleaning, altering, and modeling information to find helpful information for company decision-making. The objective of data evaluation will be to extract useful information out of data and accepting the choice depending upon the information analysis. Whenever we choose any choice in our daily life is by considering exactly what happened last time or what's going to occur by selecting that specific choice. This is only assessing our future or past and making conclusions in it. For that, we collect memories of the past or fantasies of the future. So that's nothing but information evaluation. The exact same matter analyst does for company functions is known as data evaluation. Why data evaluation? To increase your company, even to increase your own life, 
Sometimes all you want to do is evaluation. If your company isn't growing, then you've got to return and admit your errors and make a strategy again without repeating those errors. And if your organization is increasing, then you need to appear ahead to creating the company to grow larger. All you have to do is examine your business data and business procedures. Data Analysis Tools Data evaluation programs make it easier for consumers to process and control information, assess the connections and correlations between data collections, and in addition, it can help to identify patterns and tendencies such as interpretation. Here's a whole collection of resources. Kinds of information analysis, approaches and methods. There are lots of kinds of data analysis methods that exist according to company and technology. The significant kinds of data evaluation include text diagnosis, statistical analysis, diagnostic analysis, predictive analysis, prescriptive analysis, text analysis. Text evaluation can also be known as data mining. It's a procedure to find a pattern in massive data collections utilizing databases and data exploration gear. It was used to convert raw information into business details. Business intelligence applications are found on the marketplace that is utilized to take tactical business choices. Overall, it provides a means to extract and analyze information and deriving routines and ultimately interpretation of their information. Statistical Analysis Statistical analysis reveals what happened by using previous information in the kind of dashboards. Statistical analysis contains set, evaluation, interpretation, demonstration, and modeling of information. It analyzes a group of information or a sample of information. There are two classes of the kind of evaluation, descriptive evaluation and inferential analysis. Descriptive Analysis Analysis complete information or even a sample of outlined numerical data. It reveals mean and deviation for constant data, whereas frequency and percentage for info data. Inferential Analysis Investigations sample from comprehensive data. Inside this kind of analysis, it is possible to discover unique conclusions from the very same information by choosing different samples. Diagnostic analysis. Diagnostic analysis reveals why did it occur by discovering the origin in the penetration located in statistical analysis. This evaluation is beneficial to spot behavior patterns of information. When a new issue arrives on your organizational process, then you're able to start looking into this investigation to locate similar patterns of the issue. Plus, it might have opportunities to utilize similar prescriptions to your new issues. Predictive Analysis Predictive analysis reveals what's very likely to occur using previous information. The easiest example is similar to, if past year I purchased two dresses based in my savings, and when this season my wages is growing twice, then I can purchase four dresses. However, of course, it is not simple like this, since you need to consider other conditions, like Odds of costs of clothing has been raised this season, or perhaps rather than dresses that you wish to obtain a new bicycle, or you have to get a home. So this evaluation makes predictions regarding potential effects based on present or previous data. Forecasting is merely an estimate. 
Its precision is dependent on how much comprehensive information you've got and how much you really dig inside. Prescriptive Analysis Prescriptive analysis combines the penetration from all previous analysis to find out which actions to take at a present problem or conclusion. Most data-driven businesses are using prescriptive evaluation because descriptive and predictive analysis aren't sufficient to improve data functionality. According to present circumstances and issues, they examine the information and make conclusions. Data Analysis Procedure Data analysis procedure is nothing but collecting info by employing good tool or application which lets you learn more about the information and find a pattern within it. According to this, you may take conclusions or you'll be able to acquire ultimate decisions. Data evaluation consists of the following stages. Data requirement gathering, information collection, data cleanup, data evaluation, information interpretation, data visualization. Data requirement gathering. First of all, you need to consider why do you want to perform the data analysis? All you have to learn the purpose or goal of accomplishing the diagnosis. You need to select which kind of information analysis you wished to perform. Within this stage, you need to make a decision as to what to examine and how to quantify it. You need to comprehend why you're exploring and what steps you'll need to use to perform this evaluation. Data collection. After requirement collecting, you'll get a clear thought about what you need to quantify and what ought to be your own findings. Now it's time to gather your information based on prerequisites. As soon as you gather your information, do not forget that the accumulated data have to be processed or arranged for evaluation. As you accumulated information from several resources, you should have to maintain a log using a set date and origin of the information. Data cleanup. Today, whatever information is gathered might not be helpful or irrelevant to your own aim of investigation. Therefore, it ought to be cleaned. The information that is gathered may include multiple duplicate documents, white distances, or mistakes. The information must be washed and mistake-free. This stage has to be done prior to analysis because according to data cleanup, your output analysis will be nearer to your anticipated result. Data Analysis After the information is gathered, cleaned, processed, it's prepared for analysis. As you control information, you might find you've got the precise information you require, or you could have to accumulate more information. In this period, you may use data analysis tools and applications that can allow you to comprehend, interpret, and derive conclusions depending on the requirements. Data Interpretation After assessing your information, it's now time to translate your results. You'll be able to pick the best way to express or convey your own information analysis. Either you'll be able to use only in phrases or possibly a table or graph. Then apply the outcomes of your data evaluation procedure to determine your very best strategy.
data visualization. Data visualization is quite common in daily to day lifetime. They frequently show up in the kind of graphs and charts. To put it differently, data displayed graphically so it will be simpler for your brain to comprehend and procedure. Data visualization frequently utilized to find unfamiliar facts and tendencies. By detecting connections and assessing data sets, it is possible to get a means to learn meaningful into. Data Evaluation Procedure Data Requirements Specification The information required for evaluation relies on a query or an experimentation. Depending on the needs of these directing the investigation, the information required as inputs into the investigation is closely identified, e.g. population of individuals. Particular factors regarding a people e.g. age and income, could be defined and got. Information might be either numerical or categorical. Data collection. Information collection is the process of collecting info on targeted factors identified as information demands. The emphasis will be on ensuring honest and accurate selection of information. Information collection ensures data gathered is true, like the associated choices are legitimate. Information collection supplies a baseline to quantify along with the goal to improve. Data is gathered from various sources that range from organizational databases into the info in web pages. The information so obtained might not be ordered and might contain irrelevant info. Therefore, the accumulated data is needed to be exposed to data processing and data cleaning. Data processing. The information that is gathered has to be processed or organized for investigation including structuring the information as needed for the appropriate diagnosis tools. By way of instance, the information may need to be set into columns and rows in a table in a spreadsheet or statistical program. A data model may need to be generated. Data cleanup. The organized and processed data can be faulty, contain copies, or include mistakes. Data cleaning is the practice of preventing and fixing these mistakes. There are lots of sorts of data cleaning which rely on the sort of information. By way of instance, while cleaning off the fiscal information, specific tools may be compared against trusted printed amounts or defined thresholds. Similarly, Qualitative data systems may be used for outlier detection, which would be then excluded in diagnosis. Data analysis. Data which is processed, cleaned, and organized would be all set for the analysis. Different data analysis methods are readily available to comprehend, interpret, and derive conclusions depending on the requirements. Data visualization might also be utilized to inspect the information in graphic format to acquire additional insight concerning the messages inside the information. Statistical data designs like correlation, regression analysis may be employed to spot the connections among the information variables. These models, which are descriptive of this information, are useful in simplifying investigation and convey results. The procedure might require further data cleanup or added info collection, and these actions are pragmatic in nature.
communication. The outcome of the data evaluation is to be noted in a format as needed by the consumers to encourage their conclusions and additional actions. The comments from the consumers may lead to further investigation. The information analysts can select data visualization techniques, like tables and graphs, which assist in conveying the content clearly and economically to the consumers. The study tools offer facilities to emphasize the mandatory data with color filters and codes in tables and graphs. Data science versus data analytics versus machine learning, professional chat. Information science, analytics, and machine learning have been growing at an astronomical pace, and businesses are currently searching for professionals that will sift through the gold mine of information and let them push fast business decisions economically. What's data science? People have attempted to specify information science for over a decade, and also the very best method to answer the issue is through a Venn diagram. Made by Hugh Conway in 2010, this Venn diagram includes three groups, mathematics and data, subjective experience, knowledge concerning the domain into abstract and compute, and hacking abilities. Basically, in the event that you can do all three, then you're already exceptionally educated in the discipline of information science. Information science is a theory used to handle huge data and contains data cleanup, prep, and evaluation. A information scientist collects information from several sources and employs machine learning, predictive analytics, and opinion analysis to extract crucial data from the accumulated data collections. They know data in the company perspective and can offer precise predictions and insights which may be employed to power crucial business decisions. Skills necessary to turn into an information scientist. Anyone interested in creating a solid career in this domain ought to get significant skills in three sections, analytics, programming, and domain understanding. Transferring one level deeper, these skills can help you carve out a market for a information scientist. Strong understanding of Python, SAS, R, Scala. Hands-on knowledge in SQL database programming. Capability to utilize unstructured information from various resources such as video and societal websites. No multiple analytical capabilities. Understanding of machine learning how. What's a data evaluation? An information analyst is usually whoever can do basic descriptive data, gather data, and convey information points for decisions. They have to have basic knowledge of data, an ideal feeling of databases, and also the capability to make new perspectives, and also the understanding to visualize the information. Data analytics could be known as the essential degree of information science. Skills necessary to turn into a data analyst.
A data analyst ought to be able to take a certain question or subject, discuss exactly what the information looks like, and signify that information into important stakeholders in the provider. If you are looking to step into the use of a data analysis, then you have to acquire these four important skills. Knowledge of mathematical figures, fluent comprehension of R and Python, data wrangling, no pig hive, which will be the skills necessary to turn into a data analyst, data science versus data analytics. Information science is the umbrella term which encompasses data analytics, data mining, machine learning, data, and a lot of other associated disciplines. Though an information scientist is predicted to predict the future based on previous patterns, information analysts extract significant insights from several information sources. An information scientist generates questions, whereas a data analyst discovers replies to the present set of queries. What is machine learning? Machine learning may be described as the practice of both using algorithms to extract information, learn from it, then forecast future trends for that subject. Classic machine learning applications consists of statistical research and predictive evaluation that's used to identify patterns and capture concealed insights based on sensed data. A fantastic example of machine learning execution is Facebook. Facebook's machine learning algorithms collect behavioral advice for every single user on the societal platform. According to the previous conduct, the algorithm calls for pursuits and urges posts and alarms on the information feed. Likewise, when Amazon urges goods, or if Netflix recommends films based on previous behaviors, machine learning is currently in work. Skills necessary to be machine learning expert. Which will be the skills necessary to be a machine learning expert? Machine learning is only a different perspective on statistics. Listed below are crucial skills which can help you jumpstart your career within this vast domain. Experience in computer principles. In-depth understanding of programming abilities. Understanding of probability and data. Data modeling and analysis abilities. Data science versus machine learning. Because info science is a broad term for several areas, machine learning matches within information science. Machine learning utilizes various methods, including regression and supervised clustering. On the flip side, the information in data science might or might not evolve out of a system or a mechanical procedure. The principal difference between both is that information science, as a wider expression, not merely concentrates on calculations and data, but also handles the full data processing strategy. Data science can be multidisciplinary. Data science could be regarded as the incorporation of multiple parental areas, including information analytics, software engineering, information technology, machine learning, predictive analytics, data analytics, and much more. It has recovery, collection, intake, and conversion of considerable quantities of information, collectively called large data. Information science is liable for bringing construction to large data, trying to find persuasive patterns, and counseling decision-makers 
to make the changes efficiently to match the company requirements. Information analytics and system learning are a couple of many tools and procedures that information science utilizes. Machine learning. Machine learning is a brand new trending subject nowadays and may be an application of artificial intelligence. It uses specific statistical calculations to make computers function in a given way with no specifically programmed. The boosters have an input signal and predict an output for this by utilizing specific statistical processes. The main purpose of machine learning is to generate intelligent machines, which may believe and function, for example, human beings. Prerequisites for generating sound system learning methods, thus what is required for producing these wise systems? Following are the products required in producing these machine learning approaches. Statistics. Input info is essential for calling the output. Algorithms. Machine learning is decided by particular statistical calculations to determine data patterns. Automation. It has the capacity to make systems operate automatically. Iteration. The in-depth process is an iterative, i.e. replicate of the process. Scalability. The energy of the program can be increased or diminished scale and proportion. Modeling. All of these variations are made in accordance with the requirement in the process for simulating. Strategies of machine learning the applications are categorized into specific classes. These are Supervised learning. This method, input and output are provided to the PC together with comments during the education. The validity of predictions in the PC during schooling can be analyzed. The main aim of this training will be to make machines know how to map the input to the output signal. Unsupervised learning. In such a scenario, no such instruction is provided, which makes computers to emerge upon the output alone. Unsupervised learning is mostly applied to information which is unstructured. It is utilized in more complex jobs. It uses another approach of iteration called deep learning to arrive at a few conclusions. Reinforcement learning. This type of learning uses three components, namely representative, surroundings, and action. A realtor will be your one that perceives its environment, and a situation is where a broker interacts and acts within this environment. The chief aim of reinforcement learning is to find the best possible policy. How do machine learning work? Machine learning utilizes processes similar to this data mining. The calculations are clarified regarding target purpose, id, that maps the input signal x to a result variable y. This is sometimes represented as y equals f of x. There is likewise a mistake e that's the person of this input x. Therefore, the generalized form of this equation is y equals f of x plus e. The most typical sort of machine learning is to learn regarding the mapping of x to y to acquire forecasts. This manner is known as predictive modeling to create the most exact predictions. There are many assumptions for this specific function. Programs of machine learning listed below are some of the apps. Cognitive services, medical services, language processing, business management, 
photograph thumbnails, face detection, video games, benefits of machine learning. Everything is dependent on these systems. Learn what would be the benefits of the decision making is faster. This gives the very best potential outcomes by obeying the routine conclusion processes. Adaptability. This gives the capacity to adapt new changing surroundings instantly. The problem varies quickly because information was updated frequently. Construction. This uses advanced algorithms which improve the complete decision-making capacity. This assists in developing innovative small business solutions and models. Insight. That aids in knowing specific data patterns and based on which specific actions could be gotten. Basic business growth. Applying machine learning, whole business process, and workflow will most likely be faster, and so this could contribute to internal small business growth and acceleration. The outcome will be nice. With this, the grade of this outcome will be made with lesser chances of malfunction. Deep learning, deep learning is a part of this broader subject system studying and is based on data representation learning. It's based on the translation of an artificial neural system. Deep learning algorithm uses several layers of processing. Each layer uses the results of the previous coding within an input. The algorithm employed may be redeemed algorithm or perhaps unsupervised algorithm. Deep tissue network, deep neural network is a sort of artificial neural network using many layers which are hidden between the input signal and the output signal. This notion is known as a feature hierarchy and it's a propensity to elevate the elegance and abstraction of information. This gives the community the capacity to manage enormous, high-dimensional data sets utilizing innumerable parameters. What is meant by machine learning? Machine learning could be described as a subset which drops under the category of artificial intelligence. It largely throws light on the comprehension of machines in accordance with their experience and forecasting impacts and actions on its expertise. What is the technique of machine learning? Machine learning is currently possible for the computers and machines to create choices that are data besides being programmed, particularly for following through with a specific endeavor. Such algorithms, along with software, are created in this way the machines and computers learn independently and therefore can improve independently when they are introduced to data that is unique and fresh to them entirely. The plan of program learning gets the use of coaching info which may be utilized for the creation of a model. Whenever information particular to the machine is entered into the machine learning algorithm, then we can get forecasts based on this particular version. Thus, machines are trained to be able to foretell independently. These predictions are then considered and examined due to their accuracy. If the capacity is supplied a favorable response, then the strategy of machine learning is educated and repeatedly with the assistance of an optimized group for advice coaching. The tasks involved in machine learning have been distinguished into various broad categories. In the case of supervised learning, 
the algorithm creates a model that is mathematic of a data collection containing both of these inputs along with the outputs that are desired. Take as an example when the project consists of figuring out if a picture comprises a specific thing. In case of a supervised learning algorithm, then the data training is composed of images which contain a product or do not. And every version has a label, that's the output, referring to the truth, whether it is the intention or not. In certain exceptional conditions, the published input is only available partially, or it is restricted to positive individual remarks. In case of calculations of semi-supervised learning, they then create mathematical models from the info training, which is faulty. In this, components of sample inputs are usually found to miss the expected output that is wanted. Regression algorithms, along with classification calculations, encounter under the types of learning which is supervised. In the illustration of classification algorithms, then they are implemented in the event the sparks are diminished to a restricted value sets. In the illustration of regression calculations, they are famous on account of their continuous outputs, which usually means that they have some significance in a scope of a variety. Examples of these continuous values are price, length, and temperature of this merchandise. A classification algorithm may be used to filter emails. In such a scenario, the input could be viewed as the incoming email. Alongside the output will be the name of the folder in which the email is enrolled. Machine learning served as APIs. Machine learning isn't only for geeks. Nowadays, any programmer can predict several APIs and insert it inside the project. Along with Amazon Cloud, jointly with Google Cloud Platforms, GCP, and a lot more such applications, in the forthcoming years and years, we could easily find this system learning variant will then be supplied for you in API kinds. Thus, all you have got to do is concentrate in your data, wash it, and then create it into a structure that could become fed into a machine learning algorithm that is nothing more than the API. For that reason, it turns into a plug and play with. You plug into the data into an API call. The API yield right to the computing machines. It includes the predictive added benefits and then you do it according to this. Machine education, a couple of use cases. Things such as facial recognition, language recognition, differentiating a record becoming a virus, or perhaps to predict what's going to be the weather today and tomorrow. All those programs are all possible in this specific mechanism. But obviously, there is someone that has completed a fantastic deal of effort to be sure these APIs are available. If individuals, as an instance, take face recognition, there has been plenty of work in the area of image processing that wherein you opt for a photo, train your variant on the image, then finally having the capability to come up with an incredibly generalized version which will operate on a few new kind of information, which can come later on, and you also have not employed for training your own addition. And that generally is your manner system learning models are wholly constructed. The occasion of antivirus application, all your antivirus software generally case of identifying a record to be great or malicious, benign or shielded documents available on the current market, and the vast majority of the antiviruses have transferred from a static, signature-based identification of viruses 
into a electric apparatus learning based detection to identify viruses. Therefore, progressively, as soon as you use antivirus programs, you see that most of the antivirus software supplies you updates. And these updates in the earlier days used to become on the usage of those viruses. But now these tails are converted into machine learning variations. And when there is an update to get a brand new virus, you then wish to retrain completely the model that you had. You need to reevaluate your strategy to find out this is a brand new virus on the current market and your own personal machine. The manner machine learning can do so is that each virus or malware record has particular traits associated with this. For example, a Trojan might pay a visit to your apparatus. The very first thing which really does is create a folder that is hidden. The next thing which really does is repeat a couple dolls. The moment a malicious software starts to take some tasks on your device, it leaves its traces which assists in accessing them. A machine learning company might well function as very best opportunity as a IT professional. That's because this unique area of this computer is one that needs a great deal of technical capability to navigate while in the specific same time getting an significant part much client monitor actions. To put it otherwise, it's vital. Nevertheless, there are so many women and men who will execute it. Unsurprisingly, it's possible to observe just how being in a position to bridge the gap and allowing organizations to utilize machine learning, how to push their business may make your decisions tremendously beneficial. That's the reason why if you're working to start an online internet company and you have got the vital knowledge, then machine learning could be the perfect place for you. So what exactly is machine learning and why is it beneficial in the online business world? Put, it is a process of data analysis that utilizes algorithms which learn from data and make particular effects without especially made to achieve that. These calculations can examine data, calculate how frequently certain elements of it is used, and make responses based on these kinds of calculations to interact with customers mechanically. Machine learning is used in several capacities in the present world, from producing these additional things that you may be interested in responses at websites including Amazon, to providing fraud detection for generating search results and filtering crap from electronic mail servers. These are just a few of the ordinary applications of this process, all that can be exceedingly vital for companies for driving business. By using machine learning, companies may customize their customers' expertise, make sure the perfect products are being put in the front of them at the perfect time, and make sure their company is coming from internet searches to accomplish the utmost enormous potential audience of potential customers. With your own machine learning firm, you might intervene and help them to achieve those ends. The sole common element in all of the applications of machine learning is that while the hyperlink A to point B may seem obvious, Actually, getting there may be like analyzing ancient Greek. In the event you don't realize what you're thinking about, you won't have the capability to receive very much better. So companies will be glad to employ someone who will make their way through this thorny path and get the results they need. By enjoying how you can use machine learning the way to assist their small business, 
and positioning yourself as the best possible alternate for handling this completion of business development, you're likely to be creating a enormous money-making potential all on your own. And nothing can keep that business moving better than the normal plethora of happy customers ready to spread the word in your tier services. Gaining a foothold in the ever-expanding IT field may be daunting, but it may be attained if you go on it the perfect manner, a significant element in choosing the most suitable areas to concentrate on. If you've obtained the skills and knowledge to handle that, then launch a system learning company may be your best choice for guaranteed success. Chapter 2 Machine Learning and Broad Prevention The moment the beginning of the Millennium PC software was used to detect fraud, however, a brave brand new world is coming to the financial trade. It's referred to as artificial machine or intelligence learning, and also the PC applications will revolutionize the way banking institutions find and cure fraud. Everybody knows that fraud is a significant problem in banking and financial services. It has been for a lengthy moment. Now, however, the effort of banks alongside other financial institutions to understand and safeguard against fraud now is set by a centralized method of regulations known as that Anti-Money Laundering AML database. AML identifies individuals who participate in financial transactions that are on sanctions lists, or individuals or businesses who were flagged as offenders or people of elevated threat. How AML works, therefore, let's assume that the condition of Cuba is all about the sanction lists, and actress Cuba Gooding Jr. might love to initiate a checking account at a bank. Instantly, due to his name, the accounts will be hailed as deceptive. As you can see, finding actual fraud is a truly complicated and time-consuming endeavor, and could result in false positives, which causes a lot of problems for the person falsely identified, and also for the lender that produced the wrong identification. This is the place where system learning artificial intelligence comes in. Machine learning may prevent this unfortunate false positive identification banks and currencies alongside other financial institutions save hundreds of tens of thousands of bucks work needed to fix the issue as well as consequent penalties. The machine learning can prevent false positives. The problem for banks and other financial institutions is that deceptive concessions have more attributes than legitimate transactions. Machine learning empowers the software of a PC to earn algorithms based on ancient commerce data along with data from actual client trades. The calculations subsequently discover tendencies and patterns that are also sophisticated for a person, fraud analyst, or a different type of automated technology to spot. Four different models are used that assist the cognitive process in creating the proper algorithm for a specific endeavor. For example, logistic regression is a statistical design which looks at a retailer's fantastic trades and contrasts with its chargebacks. The final result is that the creation of an algorithm that might predict if a new structure is quite likely to grow to a chargeback. A decision tree is a variant which utilizes principles to do courses. Random forest is a variant which uses numerous trees. It prevents mistakes which may happen if only one decision tree is used. A neural network is a model which tries to mimic how the human brain learns and also the manner it sees patterns. Why machine learning could be the perfect way to manage fraud analyzing large data collections is 
presently a frequent method to locate fraud. Software that applies machine learning would be that the only procedure to describe the great number of information satisfactorily. The capability to disclose as much information, to see deep to it, and to be sure predictions for big amounts of transactions is the reason why machine learning is now a principal method of preventing and detecting fraud. The process contributes to faster determinations, allow for better strategy when utilizing wider data sets, and furnish algorithms to execute all the jobs. Banks or other financial institutions can't vie when fraud is included. Be prepared for your brave new world of AI and discover apart from work fusion, your primary source on what connected with AI and host learning. Immediately learning by data. Logistic regression Logistic regression can be employed for forex classification problems, where you've got some instances that are on along with other versions which are off, you get as input a training group that contains several instances of each class together with a label stating if every case is on or off, the intent is to find out a model from the practice advice so that you may forecast the label of fresh examples that you haven't noticed before and do not know the title of. For a single example, assume you have information describing a great deal of earthquakes in buildings, e.g. annually the building was assembled, type of substance used, electricity of shock, etc. And also, you also know whether every construction collapsed on or not off in each past accident. Using this information, you would really like to produce forecasts about whether a given construction will fall into a future earthquake. Among the very first versions that might be worth striving is logistic regression. Up it, I was not working with this particular problem, but I was working on something close. Being you to practice exactly what I believe, I started looking for a dead simple Python logistic regression program. The sole requirement is I wanted it to promote I2 regularization. Much more about this later. I'm also sharing this code using a great deal of different individuals on many platforms, and so I desired as few dependencies on external libraries as you can. I couldn't find just exactly what I wanted, so I chose to have a stroll down memory lane and then use it myself. I've written in C++ and MATLAB earlier, but maybe not in Python. I won't carry out the derivation. However, there are loads of great explanations on the market to follow along in the event you're not fearful of a little calculus. Just do a little Googling for logistic regression derivation the major idea is to write the chance of this info given a set of internal parameters, then to select the derivative, then which will describe to how you're able to alter the national settings to generate the info more inclined. Got it? Great. For all those of you out there that know logistic regression inside and outside, have a peek at how short the railing procedure is. I enjoy how simple it's to do at Python. Regularization I seized a small indirect flack during March insanity period for speaking about how that I regularized the latent vectors in my personal matrix factorization version of team defensive and offensive strengths when predicting results in NCAA basketball. People believed I was talking crap, crazy, right? But seriously, guys, regularization is a fantastic idea. Permit me to push home this point. Have a peek at the consequences of running the code connected at the bottom. Have a peek at the very top. On the other hand, you've got a training group. There are 25 examples laid out across the x-axis, 
along with the y-axis lets you know if the circumstance is on to one or off zero. For each of these cases, there is a vector describing its attributes that I'm not showing. After training the model, I request the version to discount the famous training group's labels and to gauge the likelihood that every title is onto based on the example's description vectors and also just what the variant has found. Ideally, matters such as more powerful earthquakes and mature buildings raise the likelihood of collapse. The probabilities are exhibited from the red X. In the top left, the red X is right in addition to the blue dots. Therefore, it is quite certain about the labels of those examples, and it is always accurate. On the ideal side, we've got some fresh examples which the version has not seen previously. This is known as the test set. This is basically the same as the flip side but the variant knows nothing about the evaluation set course tags, yellow dots. What you see is it does a good job of calling the names, but there are a couple troubling instances where it is very confident and rather erroneous. This can be known as overfitting. That is where regularization is sold in. As you move down the rows, there is more powerful I2 regularization, or equivalently, strain on the inner parameters to be zero. It's the effect of diminishing the product's certainty. Simply because it could perfectly rebuild the education group does not imply that it is all about learned. It's possible to imagine that if you're relying upon this particular version to make critical decisions, then it may be desired to get at least a tiny regularization inside there, and here is the code. It appears lengthy, but the vast majority of it's to make the information and plot the outcome. Nearly all the work is finished from the railroad procedure, which is just three compact lines. It involves NumPy, SciPy, and PyLab. For complete disclosure, I must confess that I created my arbitrary information in ways such it's exposed to overfitting, possibly making logistic regression without regularization look worse than it is. The Python code from SciPy Optimize Optimize Publish FMIN CG FMIN BFGS FMIN Import NumPy as NP Def Sigmoid X Return 1.0 divided by 1.0 plus NP EXP minus LRB minus minus X minus RRB minus class synthetic classifier data def init self NP produce N illustrations of dimensional input vectors alongside a 1D course tag minus 1 or 1 means equal 0 0.5 times NP random random 2D self X train equals NP zeros ND self Y train equals NP zeros N. For that in range N, if NP random random P.5 Y equals 1, Y equals 0, self X train I equals NP random random ID plus suggests Y. Self train I equal 2.0 times Y minus 1. Self X evaluation equals NP zeros ND. Self Y evaluation equals NP zeros N for that in range N. If NP random random P.5 Y equals 1, Y equals 0. Self X evaluation I equals NP random random ID plus signifies Y self Y test I. 2.0 times y minus 1 class logistic regression. A simple logistic regression model with I2 regularization. Zero mean Gaussian priors on parameters. Def init self train not y train maybe not x test maybe not y test not alpha 1 synthetic false. Place I2 regularization power self alpha equal alpha number place the information. Self set information X train Y train X test Y test initialize parameters to zero for want of a better choice. Self betas equal NP zeros self train 
X train shape def negative lick self explanatory betas return minus one times self lick betas def lick self explanatory betas likelihood of those data below the current settings statistics likelihood ID equals zero for J in range self n ID plus equals log sigmoid self y train I times NP dot betas self x train I'm Ahead chances for y in range 1, 2, self x, train shape 1, id minus equals self alpha divided by 2.0, times self betas k, times times 2, return def train self, define the gradient, and hands it off to a scipy gradient-based optimizer. Limit the derivative of this likelihood concerning beta k want to multiply negative 1 because we're decreasing dbk equals lambda bk np sum minus self alpha times bk plus self y train i times self x train i y times sigmoid minus self y train i times np dot b self x train i for j in range self n times minus 1. The complete gradient is merely a range of component-wise derivatives. db equals lambda b, np array dbk by for k in range, self x train shape 1. Optimize self betas equals f min bfgs self negative lick self betas f prime db. Def set data self x train y train x test y test required data which has been generated self x train equal x train self y train equals y train self x analysis equals x test self y test equals y test self n equals y train twist zero def training reconstruction self p y one equals n p zero self n for i in range self n p y 1 i equals sigmoid n p dot self betas self x train i yield p y 1 def test predictions self p y 1 equals n p 0 self n for i in range self n p y i equals sigmoid n p dot self betas self x evaluation i return p y 1 Def plot training reconstruction self. Plot NP arrange self N5 plus 0.5 plus self Y train bow. The results subplot len alphas 2, 2 times J plus 1, LR plot training reconstruction, Y label alpha percent S percent A, if J equal equals 0, name training class reconstructions, subplot len alphas 2, 2 times j plus 2, LR plot test predictions, if j equal equal 0, title, evaluation, set predictions, string. Chapter 3. What's the Python? And the relationship with data analysis and machine learning. Python for data science and data analysis. Its manufacturers specify the Python language as an interpreted and object-oriented high-tech programming language with dynamic semantics. It has high-level built-in information structures combined with dynamic typing and dynamic binding make it very appealing for quick app development, in addition to for use as a scripting or glue language to connect present components. Python is an object-oriented programming language. Significance it may be utilized in the growth of the desktop and web software. Additionally, it's beneficial in the evolution of complicated numerical and technological applications. With this kind of flexibility, it's no surprise that Python is among those most popular programming languages on the planet. Just how can Python jibe with information evaluation? 
we'll take a detailed look as to why this programming language is essential for anybody who would like a career in data evaluation today or is searching for a few probable paths of upskilling. When you're finished, you'll get a better idea as to the reason you need to choose Python for information analysis. Data Evaluation – A Summary What exactly does a data analyst do, anyhow? A little refresher on the function of an automation analyst might make it a lot easier to answer the question concerning why Python's a fantastic fit. The better you know work, the better decisions you'll make in the resources required to perform the job. Information analysts are responsible for distributing data and assessing the outcomes using statistical strategies and supplying ongoing reports. They create and execute information analyses, data collection programs, and other approaches that maximize statistical efficacy and quality. They're also responsible for obtaining information from primary or secondary information sources and keeping databases. Anyway, they recognize, examine, and translate trends or patterns within complex data collections. Information analysts examine monitor reports, printouts, and performance indexes to find and fix code issues. As a result, they could clean and filter information. Data analysts run complete lifecycle investigations to contain requirements, actions, and layout, in addition to developing reporting and analysis capabilities. They also track performance and excellent management strategies to identify developments. Ultimately, they utilize the exact results of the aforementioned responsibilities and responsibilities to work with management to market business and data requirements. One needs just to briefly glimpse on this record of data-heavy activities to observe that using a tool which could handle mass amounts of information quickly and easily is an absolute necessity. Taking into consideration the proliferation of big data, and it is still on the growth, it's essential to have the ability to manage huge quantity of data, clean up it, and procedure to use. Python matches the bill because it's easy, and simplicity of doing repetitive jobs implies less time has to be dedicated to attempting to work out how the instrument functions. Data Evaluation versus Data Science Before wading in too heavy on why Python is indeed essential to information analysis, it's important first to set that the association between information analysis and information science, because the latter tends to gain greatly in your programming language. To put it differently, lots of the motives Python is helpful for information science also wind up being grounds why it is appropriate for data evaluation. The two areas have substantial overlap and are also quite distinctive, every in their own right. The most important difference between an information analyst and also an information scientist is the former curates significant insights from known information, although the latter deals with all the hypotheticals the what-ifs. Information analysts manage the daily, using information to answer queries presented to them, while information scientists attempt to forecast the long term and framework those predictions in brand new questions. Or, put it yet another way, information analysts concentrate on the here and now while information scientists extrapolate what could be. There are often instances in which the lines get blurred between both specialties, 
and that is why the benefits that Python bestows on information science has the potential to be the very same ones appreciated by statistics analysis. For example, both careers need knowledge of software technology, capable communication skills, basic mathematics knowledge, along with an understanding of calculations. Additionally, the two professions require understanding of programming languages like R, SQL, and also clearly Python. On the other hand, an information scientist must ideally have strong business acumen, whereas the information analyst does not have to need the need to fret about controlling that specific talent. But data analysts must rather be adept with spreadsheet tools like Excel. As far as wages proceed, an entry-level statistics analyst could pull an yearly $60,000 salary generally, although the information scientist median salary is $122,000 from the United States and Canada, together with information science supervisors making $176,000 on average. What's Python critical for information analysis? It is adaptive. If you would like to attempt something creative that has never achieved before, afterward, Python is ideal for you. It's perfect for programmers that wish to script websites and applications. It's simple to know. Due to Python's concentrate on ease and readability, it's a slow and comparative low learning curve. This simplicity of studying makes Python an perfect instrument for beginning developers. Python provides programmers the benefit of using fewer lines of code to achieve jobs than one desires when using languages that are older. To put it differently, you invest more time playing it and less time managing code. It is open source. Python is open-minded, so it is free and utilizes a community-based version for growth. Python is designed to operate on Windows and Linux environments. In addition, it can easily be ported to numerous platforms. There are lots of open source Python libraries, for example, information manipulation, data visualization, statistics, mathematics, machine learning, and natural language processing, to mention only a couple, though see below to learn much more about this. It is well supported. Anything that could go wrong will fail, and if you're using something which you did not need to cover, obtaining help can be a significant challenge. Luckily, Python has a sizable following and is greatly utilized in academic and industrial circles, which implies that there are lots of helpful analytics libraries out there. Python users needing assistance can always turn into Stack Overflow, mailing lists, along with user-contributed documentation and code. Along with also the much more popular Python becomes, the more customers will contribute information in their consumer experience, which means more service material can be found free of price. This creates a self-perpetuating spiral of approval by an increasing quantity of information analysts and data scientists. Regardless of Python's fame is rising. Therefore, to sum up these factors, Python is not too complicated to work with, the cost is right, free, and there's enough help out there to ensure you'll not be attracted to a screeching halt in case a problem arises. That usually means this is only one of the rare instances where you get what you pay for most surely doesn't apply.
Python is an invaluable portion of the information analyst toolbox because it is tailor-made for executing repetitive tasks and information manipulation, and also, whoever has worked with considerable quantities of data understands precisely how frequently copying enters to it. Using a tool which manages the grunt work, the more information analysts will be free to deal with the more intriguing and fulfilling areas of the project. Information analysts must also remember the broad number of other Python libraries available on the market. These libraries, for example, Numby, Pandas, and Matplotlib, assist the information analyst execute his or her purposes and ought to be considered as soon as you own Python's principles bogged down. Discover Python for Data Science. Perhaps you're ready for a career shift and information evaluation is calling for you. Or maybe you're a data analyst. However, you desire to do a little bit of upskilling to boost your marketability and value. No matter the reason, Simple Earn gets you covered. Python for Data Science Certification Coaching Course will set your own command of information analytics and science methods using Python. Employing this program, you'll learn the vital theories of Python programming and earn detailed, invaluable information in data analytics, machine learning, information visualization, web scraping, and natural language processing. As we've noticed, Python is an increasingly essential ability for most data science places, so improve your profession for this interactive, hands-free route. Whether you opt for the online FlexiPass or even business training solutions, you may acquire entry to 44 hours of instructor-led training delivered via a dozen classes, 24 hours of self-placed studying movies, and four real-life, industry-based jobs to operate on. As soon as you pass the examination and fulfill the other conditions, you'll be certified and prepared to handle new challenges. The requirement for both information scientists and information evaluation increases by over a thousand percent during the upcoming few years. It's time to create your relocation. Whether or not you wish to develop into an information analyst or create the huge leap to information scientist, studying and assessing Python is an absolute necessity. If you're considering becoming an information science expert, then we've got only the ideal manual for you. The Data Science Career Guide can provide you insights to the very trending technology, the leading businesses which are hiring, the abilities necessary to jumpstart your career in the booming area of data science also provides you a personalized roadmap for becoming a de successful data scientist specialist. Difference between data science, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. What's data science? Information science is a broad area of research pertaining to information systems and procedures targeted at keeping data collections and data significance from these. Data scientists utilize a combo of resources, software, algorithms, and principles to make sense of arbitrary information clusters. Since virtually all types of associations today are generating large amounts of information around the Earth, it will become hard to track and save this information. Data science concentrates on information visualization and data warehousing to monitor the ever-growing data collection. The data extracted through information science program are utilized to direct business procedures and achieve organizational targets. Scope of Data Science Among those domains that science affects straight is firm intelligence. That being said, there are acts that are particular to each one of those functions. Data scientists mostly take care of enormous chunks of information to analyze how the patterns, trends, and much more. These analysis programs invent reports that are eventually beneficial in drawing inferences. 
a company intelligence specialist selects in which a data scientist renders. Utilizing information science reports to comprehend the information tendencies in any specific business discipline and showcasing company predictions and plan of action based on these inferences. Interestingly, there is also a related discipline which utilizes both information science and business intelligence software industry analyst. A business advisor profile combines a small amount of help. Businesses take data-driven solutions. Data scientists examine historical information according to several requirements by employing different formats, specifically predictive causal data. Data scientists utilize this version to derive company predictions. The predictive model stimulates the results of various small business activities in quantifiable terms. This may be a great tool for companies hoping to comprehend the potential of any new small business move. Prescriptive Evaluation This type of analysis helps companies set their aims by minding the activities which are likely to be successful. Prescriptive analysis employs the inferences on the productive design and assists companies by indicating the most effective approaches to attain these aims. Data science employs a wide selection of data-oriented technologies such as SQL, Python, R, and Hadoop, etc. But in addition, it makes extensive use of statistical analysis, information visualization, distributed structure, and much more to extract meaning from sets of information. Data scientists are skilled professionals whose experience lets them quickly change jobs at any stage in the life cycle of all data science endeavors. They could utilize AI and machine learning with equal simplicity. In reality, data scientists want machine learning abilities for certain requirements, such as machine learning to predictive reporting. Data scientists utilize machine learning algorithms to further research and code data to make predictions that are valuable. Also called supervised learning, this version may be used to indicate the best courses of actions for virtually any provider. Machine learning to pattern discovery. Design discovery is very important to companies to put parameters in a variety of data reports as well as the means to do this by way of machine learning. This is fundamentally unsupervised learning in which there aren't any predecided parameters. The very popular algorithm employed for routine discovery is clustering. See also, artificial intelligence and the human brain, where can they meet? What is artificial intelligence? AI, a somewhat hackneyed tech term that's used often in our culture, has become associated solely with futuristic looking robots along with the machine dominated world. Nonetheless, in fact, Artificial intelligence is far away from this. Simply set, artificial intelligence targets allowing machines to do reasoning by copying human intellect. Since the principal objective of AI procedures would be always to teach machines from expertise, feeding the perfect info and self-correction is vital. AI specialists rely on profound learning and natural language processing systems that will help machines identify routines and inferences. Scope of Artificial Intelligence Automation is simple with AI. AI lets you automate repetitive, higher volume jobs by establishing dependable systems that operate regular applications. Intelligence Products AI may turn traditional products into clever commodities. AI software, when paired together with conversational systems, robots, and other intelligent machines may result in advanced technologies. Progressive learning. AI calculations can instruct machines to carry out any functions that are desirable. The algorithms operate as predictors along with classifiers. Analyzing data. As machines understand from the information, we nourish them. Assessing and identifying the ideal set of information becomes extremely significant. Social media makes it simpler to train machines. 
What's machine learning? Machine learning is a subsection of artificial wisdom that apparatus means by which methods may automatically understand and improve in expertise. This specific wing of AI targets equipping machines using separate learning methods so they don't need to be programmed to perform so. Machine learning entails observing and analyzing experiences or data to spot patterns and establish a reasoning system based on the findings. The several elements of machine learning comprise supervised machine learning. This model uses historical information to understand behavior and invent future predictions. This type of learning algorithm examines some training data set to draw inferences that may be employed to output values. Supervised learning parameters are all critical in distributing the input-output setup. Unsupervised machine learning. This kind of ML algorithm doesn't utilize any branded or classified parameters. It concentrates on finding hidden constructions from unlabeled information to assist systems guarantee a function correctly. Algorithms with unsupervised learning may utilize both generative learning versions along with retrieval-based strategy. Semi-supervised machine learning. This version combines components of supervised and unsupervised learning, nevertheless is not both of them. It operates by utilizing both branded and unlabeled data to improve learning precision. Semi-supervised learning may be a cost-effective alternative when labeling information proves to be costly. Reinforcement machine studying. This sort of learning does not utilize any response key to steer the implementation of any purpose. The dearth of training data contributes to learning from experience. The practice of trial and error eventually contributes to long-term benefits. Machine learning provides precise results derived via the evaluation of massive data collections. Implementing AI cognitive technology to ML systems could lead to the successful processing of information and data. Link between data science, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. Artificial intelligence, similar to information service, is a broad area of systems, applications, and more that goal in replicating human intelligence via machines. Artificial intelligence signifies an action intended feedback of understanding. Perception, planning, action, proximity of perception data science utilizes different sections of the loop or pattern to address certain issues. For example, at the very first measure, i.e., perception data scientists attempt to spot patterns with the assistance of this information. Likewise, at another step, i.e., preparation, there are just two facets, locating all probable answers, locating the best solution one of the options. Data science produces a system that interrelates both the above points and enables companies to proceed. Even though it's possible to describe machine learning by carrying it as a standalone topic, it may be understood from the context of its own surroundings, i.e., the method it is used inside. Simply place machine learning would be the connection that joins data science and AI. That's since it is the practice of learning from information as time passes. Thus, AI is the instrument which aids data science get outcomes, as well as also the answers for certain issues. But machine learning is the thing that assists in attaining that objective. A real-life instance of this is Google's search engine. Google's search engine is now a commodity of information science. It utilizes predictive evaluation a method utilized by artificial intelligence to provide smart effects to the consumers. For example, if somebody types greatest coats in NY on Google's search engine, 
then the AI gathers this information via system learning. Today, the moment the individual writes both of these phrases from the search instrument, ideal location to purchase, that the AI falls in, as well as predictive evaluation completes the sentence, just as ideal spot to purchase coats in NY. That is very likely suffix into the question the user had in mind. To be exact, data science covers AI, that includes machine learning, but machine learning covers a different sub-technology, deep learning. Deep learning is a kind of machine learning, however differs from using neural networks in which we excite the purpose of a mind to a particular extent and utilize a 3D ladder in data to spot patterns which are a lot more beneficial. Data science, artificial intelligence, and machine learning jobs. Data science, artificial intelligence, and machine learning are rewarding livelihood choices, but truth is of those areas are mutually exclusive. There's often an overlap, as it has to do with the skill set necessary for tasks within these domain names. Data science functions, for example, information analyst, data science engineer, and also data scientist is trending for quite a while. These occupations not only offer you fantastic wages, but also a great deal of chance for growth. Some conditions of data science related orbits, programming knowledge, data visualization and reporting, statistical evaluation and mathematics, risk evaluation, machine learning methods, data warehousing and construction. Whether it's report making or breaking these reports to different stakeholders, a project within this domain isn't confined to programming or data exploration. Each part within this discipline behave as a bridging element between the technical and technical section. It's vital for them to possess excellent interpersonal abilities aside from the specialized know-how. Likewise, artificial intelligence and machine learning Tasks are absorbing a massive chunk of gift off the marketplace. Roles like machine learning engineer, artificial intelligence architect, AI research specialist, and related tasks fall into the domain name. Technical skills necessary for AI ML functions. Understanding of programming languages such as Python, C++, Java. Data modeling and analysis. Probability and data. Distributed computing. Machine learning calculations. As you can see, that the skill set needs of both the domains stinks. Typically, classes on information science and AI ML comprise fundamental knowledge on the two besides the concentrate on the various specializations. Although the areas of information science, artificial intelligence, and machine learning how overlap, their particular functionalities disagree and have various regions of program. The information science marketplace has opened several services and merchandise businesses, generating opportunities for specialists within this domain name. How do the system learning capacities be improved? There is an assortment of methods available for machine learning, such as supervised algorithms, semi-supervised calculations, and unsupervised calculations, that a. Supervised algorithms utilize what's been learned along with the advice, and use well-illustrated and labeled diagrams to analyze and predict the future. B. Semi-supervised algorithms demand labeled in addition to unlabeled instruction, which involves the use of this tiny quantity of data, nevertheless also a large quantity of unlabeled data. It is favored when the access labeled data require extra funds, 
but the unlabeled data does not require unique tools or skills. C. Unsupervised algorithms are often employed if the data obtained is unlabeled or unclassified. This application is used to detect the concealed choices from the unlabeled or even unclassified data collections. The apparatus learning can devour the tremendous collections of data timely and also economically. The device learning exerts the recent customer's actions as well as the links in assessing and adjusting your personal messages. It might pinpoint applicable variables by assembling data analysis models from several sources. The apparatus learning assists in more effective and suitable test and interpretation of data. It's the best tool to be used if your company falls short of these professionals who are required with the desired skills and knowledge foundation to look after the data sets. Using technology to acquire notice. You're invisible. You've got years of experience and abundance of skills and credentials, for example, no other. You submit restart after restart, and then you're given a telephone to get a meeting. How can it be? Why isn't anyone interested? The easy truth is there are companies that are contemplating you, and based on your own credentials, they'd employ you immediately. The problem is they can't locate you. You are invisible. But this doesn't make any sense, you say. You registered your resume. You recorded your own skills and experiences. You highlighted all of your best credentials. The restart virtually speaks for this. That's great. Or is it? Unfortunately, no. Hiring processes aren't as simple or private since they had been. Once in a time, you'd print a resume, and it goes directly to a hiring manager who would examine it. Even if interested, could select one for a meeting. This is seldom true in the contemporary technology-driven hiring processes. Presently, typically, if you print your own resume, then it immediately goes into your corporate database. In the event you use online, this normally happens automatically. Even once you email into a newspaper copy, your resume will be scanned in, converted to text poorly, and placed in the database. From that point on, nobody may see your resume unless it's recovered in the database. That is the main reason businesses never find you. Following your resume expands the muddy depths of the particular database, then it still surfaces. This may happen for a few of reasons. In the event your font or document format is tricky to interpret and convert into text, then the results in the database may be a scrambled mess of words and letters. What's more, if you don't use the suitable important phrases and words, then your own resume may never show up in search results. In any circumstance, your resume is virtually dropped to not be viewed again. Consider as a robot automated application induce many business procedures, and the key to getting your resume noticed is to consider just like these systems. Think as a method, like a robot that is tasked to analyze, scanned, interpreted, and searched. Make no assumptions it will touch person palms. Think of what might fail. Can there be anything that might confuse this machine? If you are submitting a formatted document file or printout, then take under account how a text-only system will interpret it. Don't use stylistic fonts which are hard to scan. Furthermore, maintain a linear flow to the text. Columns and tables may be visually appealing to individual subscribers. Nevertheless, they will simply confuse a text interpreter. Considering the interpreter won't understand the concept of tables and columns, it's only going to read the text sequence, left and top to base. This may mangle, publish, and paragraphs words departing your resume completely ineffectual. Furthermore, it's vital to take into consideration the way the database search engine may see your resume. Ordinarily, a database will supply a simple key term research to its own clients. If someone enters a specific word, then database may search for this term, and only that term. 
Regrettably, this approach will discount many related words. For example, a hunt for your expression telecom may completely miss the resumes such as the words telecommunications and telecom. Because of this, the searcher can overlook a lot of competent applicants. Quantify at front of this goal databases and search engines are not very likely to adapt to some writing style, which usually means you've got to switch to them instead. Employers are thinking about particular important phrases and terms, and it's best to step right ahead of the objective. Update your resume with all of the exact famous buzzwords for your individual company and skill collection. Include a few variations if you're in doubt that phrases are frequent. In the event you have particular expertise, include the most normal description. Searching for the database will probably detect you. But how do you find the greatest keywords? The very normal method is to tailor your resume to a certain job posting. Identify numerous basic skills listed in the assignment and include them in your resume. This works well if you're aiming for a particular job, but nonetheless, it radically limits the broader searchability of your resume. Another decision would be to scan multiple job postings. Look for picking trends and layouts to identify the most ordinary conditions. Regrettably, this strategy may be tedious since it may require countless assignments to encounter any significant patterns. The best choice is to get a technological approach and use an automated tool to analyze the latest hiring trends. If you're a software developer, you might write a program to have this done. But for all those people without the vision or skills to continue this sort of task, you can rely on another source. KnowNovice.com provides two exceptional qualities to help specialized job seekers find no more than the perfect buzzwords to maximize their visibility. These two characteristics are based on test technology that continuously monitors the newest technological hiring trends. One highlight is the Business Buzzwords page, which delivers an interactive assortment of high important terms and technical requirements for various technical facets. The following feature makes things a whole lot more comfortable. Five significant facts about powerful servers along with the Internet of Matters. In regards to a situation in which satellites, people, or creatures are given particular identifiers, allowing them to transmit data in a network free of interaction with someone else or a PC. During the use of wireless engineering and rugged servers, the Internet of Items, IoT, has come to be a complicated network with infinite possibilities. One, the Internet of Things is concerning in the event that you talk about the Web of Things. There are almost no limit to what sort of things may be considered. An item may be a person using a wireless heart monitor, livestock with biochip transponders, or a car that can alert a motorist when the tire pressure is indeed reduced. In other words, a thing may be anything that might be measured with a sensor, provided a specific IP address, additionally delivered through cable or wirelessly.
to machine to machine transmission most regular nearly all the internet of items today is comprised of machines speaking with different devices frequently that is referred to as m2m for short for example many machines used in the manufacturing power generation and oil and gas utilities transmit data between one another to provide time-sensitive information that is vital for their functionality. For example, a rocky server beneath a weather station may record and transmit data into some meteorological set on the ground. Three, advancements out of IP address technology to get to or be accessed by the net and its customers. You need a particular IP address assigned to get their personal computer or website. In years past, that was a simple numerical address. However, IP addresses have improved so far that there may be a particular IP address assigned to every atom in the world, and there may still be plenty of addresses left for many more planets. Four, traffic increases lead to security concerns for a result of the advancement from the IP technology and the advantage of the total amount of data nodes that are actively grabbing data and transmitting it directly into a server somewhere. Although this traffic warms up along with an increasing number of individuals start transmitting and transmitting data to their reasons, issues like data privacy and security has become of critical importance since the IoT proceeds to grow up. The IoT is not new, though the expression the web of matters was not coined until around the start of the century. It has been an ineffective practice for several decades. Developers can connect into the device using a method to inspect the status of the apparatus when their favorite beverage was hauled out of the device before they left the excursion over. Chapter 4 Installing Python Python 3 Installation and Setup Guide To begin working with Python 3, then you'll want to get access to this Python interpreter. There are many common techniques to achieve this. Python could be gotten in the Python Software Foundation site at python.org. Commonly, that entails downloading the proper installer to the operating system and operating it on your device. Some operating systems, especially Linux, supply a bundle manager which may be run to set up Python. On Mac OS, the very best approach to set up Python 3 entails installing a package manager named Homebrew. You'll find out how to perform this at the appropriate section from the tutorial. On cellular operating systems, such as Android, along with iOS, it is possible to install programs that offer a Python programming environment. This may be an excellent way to control your programming abilities on the move. Alternately, there are many websites which permit you to get a Python interpreter online without installing anything on your PC in any respect. Notice, 
There's a possibility that Python could have been sent along with your operating system, also can be currently installed. Even if this is the situation, it might be that the installed version is obsolete, in the event you might want to acquire the most recent version anyway. Inside this Python installation manual, you'll notice measure by step how to establish a functioning Python 3 supply to Windows, Mac OS, Linux, iOS, and Android. So, let's begin. Windows It's highly unlikely your Windows system sent with Python installed. Windows systems normally do not. Luckily, installing doesn't demand a whole lot greater than simply downloading the Python installer in the python.org site and operating it. Let's look at how to set up Python 3 to Windows. Step 1. Download the Python 3 installer. Open a browser window and browse into the download web page for Windows in Python.org. Beneath the heading in the top that states Python releases for Windows, click the link to your newest Python 3 release, Python 3.x.x. As of the writing, the newest is Python 3.6.5. Scroll towards the bottom and choose Windows x86-64 executable installer to get 64-bit or Windows x86 executable installer to get 32-bit. See below. Sidebar. 32-bit or 64-bit Python. For Windows, you can select both 32-bit or 64-bit installer. Here's what the distinction between the two boils down to. If the machine has a 32-bit chip, then you need to decide on the 32-bit installer. On a 64-bit method, both installers will really get the job done for many functions. The 32-bit variant will normally work with much less memory, but also the 64-bit variant performs better for software with intensive computation. If you're unsure which model to select, proceed with all the 64-bit edition. Notice, recall that in the event that you get this option incorrect and would love to change some other edition of Python, then you may simply uninstall Python, then reinstall it by downloading a different installer out of python.org. Step 2. Run the installer. As soon as you've selected a downloaded from an installer, only run it from double-clicking over the download document. A dialog should appear that looks something like that. Then simply click Install Currently. That ought to be all there is to it. A couple of minutes after you ought to have a functioning Python 3 setup in your machine. Windows Subsystem for Linux, WSL. If you're running Windows 10 Creators or Anniversary Update, you actually have another option for installing Python. These versions of Windows 10 include a feature called the Windows Subsystem for Linux, which allows you to run a Linux environment directly in Windows, unmodified, and without the overhead of a virtual machine. For more information, see the Windows subsystem for Linux documentation on the Microsoft website. 
for instructions on how to enable this subsystem in Windows 10 and install a Linux distribution, see the Windows 10 installation guide. You can also check out this presentation on YouTube by Sarah Cooley, one of the members of the WSL development team. Once you've installed the Linux distribution of your choice, you can install Python 3 from a Bash console window, just as you would if you were running that Linux distribution natively. See below. Linux. There is a very good chance your Linux distribution has Python installed already, but it probably won't be the latest version, and it may be Python 2 instead of Python 3. To find out what versions you have, open a terminal window and try the following commands. Python version, Python 2 version, Python 3 version. One or more of these commands should respond with the version, as below. Python 3 version, Python 3.6.5. If the version shown is Python 2.x.x, or a version of Python 3 that is not the latest, 3.6.5 as of this writing, then you'll want to install the latest version. The procedure for doing this will depend on the Linux distribution you're running. Note that it is frequently easier to use a tool called pyenv to manage multiple Python versions to Linux. To learn more about it, see our article here. Ubuntu. Depending on the version of the Ubuntu distribution you run, the Python install instructions vary. You can determine your local Ubuntu version by running the following command. LSB release dash A. No LSB modules are available. Distributor ID Ubuntu. Description Ubuntu 16.04.4 LTS. Release 16.04. Codename Xenial. Depending on the version number you see under Release in the console output, follow the instructions below. Ubuntu 17.10, Ubuntu 18.04 and above come with Python 3.6 by default. You should be able to invoke it with the command Python 3. Ubuntu 16.10 and 17.04 do not come with Python 3.6 by default, but it is in the Universe repository. You should be able to install it with the following commands. sudo apt-get update sudo apt-get install python 3.6 You can then invoke it with the command python 3.6. If you're using Ubuntu 14.04 or 16.04, Python 3.6 is not in the Universe repository, and you need to get it from a personal package archive. For example, to install Python from the Dead Snakes PPA, do the following. sudo add apt repository ppa dead snakes ppa sudo apt-get update, sudo apt-get install python 3.6. As above, invoke with the command python 
Linux Mint. Mint and Ubuntu use the same package management system, which frequently makes life easier. You can follow the instructions above for Ubuntu 14.04. The Dead Snakes PPA works with Mint. Debian? We found sources that indicated that the Ubuntu 16.10 method would work for Debian, but we never found a path to get it to work on Debian 9. Instead, we ended up making Python from source, as listed below. One issue with Debian, however, is that it generally does not install the sudo command by default. To install it, you need to do the following before you carry out the compiling Python from source instructions below. su apt-get install sudo vi etsy sudoers After that, open the etsy sudoers file using the sudo vim command or your favorite text editor. Add the following line of text to the end of the file, replacing your username with your actual username. Your username all equals all all. Open SUSE. We found several sites describing how to get Zipper to install the latest version of Python, but they seemed problematic or outdated. We did not manage to get any of them to work successfully, so we fell back to building Python from source. To do that, you need to install the development tools, which can be done in Yast via the menus or by using Zipper. sudo zipper install t pattern devel c c++ This step took a while and involved the installation of 154 packages, but once it was completed, we were able to build the source as shown in the compiling Python from source section above. CentOS The IUS community does a nice job of providing newer versions of software for enterprise Linux distros, i.e. Red Hat Enterprise and CentOS. You can use their work to help you install Python 3. To install you should first update your system with the yum package manager. sudo yum update sudo yum install yum utils You can then install the CentOS IUS package which will get you up to date with their site. sudo yum install https centos 7 iuscommunity.org iusrelease.rpm Finally, you can then install Python and pip sudo yum install python 36u sudo yum install python 36u pip thanks to Janny Kerhunen for his excellent write up for centos 7 
Fedora. Fedora has a roadmap to switch to Python 3, as the default Python published here. It indicates that the current version and the next few versions will all ship with Python 2 as the default, but Python 3 will be installed. If the Python 3 installed on your version is not 3.6, you can use the following command to install it. sudo dnf install python 3.6 arch linux arch linux is fairly aggressive about keeping up with python releases it's likely you already have the latest version if not you can use this command Pac-Man S Python Compiling Python from Source Sometimes your Linux distribution will not have the latest version of Python, or maybe you just want to be able to build the latest greatest version yourself. Here are the steps you need to take to build Python from source. Step 1. Download the source code. To start, you need to get the Python source code. Python.org makes this fairly easy. If you go to the Downloads page, you'll see the latest source for Python 3 at the top. Make sure you don't grab Legacy Python, Python 2. When you select the version, at the bottom of the page there's a Files section. Select the gzipped source tarball and download it to your machine. If you prefer a command line method, you can easily use wget to download it to your current directory. wget https www.python.org, FTP, Python 3.6.5, Python 3.6.5.tgz. Step 2. Prepare your system. There are a few distro-specific steps involved in building Python from scratch. The goal of each step is the same on all distros, but you might need to translate to your distribution if it does not use apt-get. One, the first step you should take when doing an operation like this is to update the system packages on your machine before you start. On Debian, this is what that looks like. sudo apt-get update sudo apt-get upgrade Next, we want to make sure the system has the tools needed to build Python. There are a bunch of them, and you might already have some, but that's fine. I've listed them all in one command line, but you can break the list into shorter commands by just repeating the sudo apt-get install y portion. For apt-based systems like Debian, Ubuntu, and Mint, sudo apt-get install y make build essential lib ssl dev, zlib1 dev, lib bz2 dev, lib readline dev, lib sql lite 3 dev, wget curl llvm, lib and curses 5 dev, lib and curses w5 dev, xz utils tk dev.
for YUM-based systems like CentOS, sudo yum y group install development, sudo yum y install zlib devel. Step 3. Build Python. Once you have the prerequisites and the tar file, you can unpack the source into a directory. Note that the following command will create a new directory called Python 3.6.5 under the one you're in. tar xvf python 3.6.5.tgz cd python 3.6.5 Now you need to run the configure tool to prepare the build. Configure, enable optimizations with ensure pip equals install. Six, next you build the Python programs using make. The J option simply tells make to split the building into parallel steps to speed up the compilation. Even with the parallel builds, this step can take several minutes. Make J8. Then you'll want to install your new version of Python. You're using the Alt install target here in order to not overwrite the system's version of Python. Since you're installing Python into user bin, you'll need to run as root. sudo make alt install. Warning, please only use the alt install target on make. Using the install target will overwrite the Python library. While this seems like it would be cool, there are big portions of the system that rely on the pre-installed version of Python. Step 4. Verify your Python install. Finally, you can test out your new Python version. Python 3.6 v. Python 3.6.5. Mac OS, Mac OS X, while current versions of Mac OS, previously known as Mac OS X, include a version of Python 2, it's likely out of date by a few months. Also, this tutorial series uses Python 3, so let's get you upgraded to that. The best way we found to install Python 3 on Mac OS is through the Homebrew Package Manager. This approach is also recommended by the community guides like the Hitchhiker's Guide to Python. Step 1. Install Homebrew Part 1. To get started, first you want to install Homebrew. Open a browser and navigate to http brew.sh. After the page has finished loading, select the Homebrew bootstrap code under Install Homebrew. Then hit Command C to copy it to the clipboard. Make sure you've captured the text of the complete command line, because otherwise the installation will fail. Now you need to open a terminal app window, paste the homebrew bootstrap code, and then hit enter. This will begin the homebrew installation. If you're doing this on a fresh install of Mac OS, 
you may get a pop-up alert asking you to install Apple's command line developer tools. You'll need to install those to continue with the installation, so please confirm the dialog box by clicking on Install. At this point, you're likely waiting for the command line developer tools to finish installing, and that's going to take a few minutes. Time to grab a coffee or tea. Step 2. Install Homebrew Part 2. You can continue installing Homebrew and then Python after the command line developer tools installation is complete. One, confirm the the software was installed dialog from the developer's tool installer. Two, back in the terminal, hit enter to continue with the homebrew installation. Three, homebrew asks you to enter your password so it can finalize the installation. Enter your user account password and hit enter to continue. Depending on your internet connection, Homebrew will take a few minutes to download its required files. Once the installation is complete, you'll end up back at the command prompt in your terminal window. Woo! Now that the Homebrew Package Manager is set up, let's continue on with installing Python 3 on your system. Step 3. Install Python. Once Homebrew has finished installing, return to your terminal and run the following command. Brew install Python 3. Note, when you copy this command, be sure you don't include the dollar sign character at the beginning. That's just an indicator that this is a console command. This will download and install the latest version of Python. After the homebrew brew install command finishes, Python 3 should be installed on your system. You can make sure everything went correctly by testing if Python can be accessed from the terminal. One, open the terminal by launching Terminal App. Type pip3 and hit enter. You should see the help text from the Python's pip package manager. If you get an error message running pip3, go through the Python install steps again and make sure you have a working Python installation. Assuming everything went well and you saw the output from pip in your command with prompt window, congratulations. You just installed Python on your machine and you're all set to continue with the next section in this tutorial. iOS, iPhone, iPad. The Pythonista app for iOS is a full-fledged Python development environment that you can run on your iPhone or iPad. It's basically a combination of a Python editor, documentation, and interpreter rolled into one single app. Pythonista is surprisingly fun to use. It's a great little tool when you're stuck without a laptop and want to work on your Python skills on the go. 
It comes with the complete Python 3 standard library and even includes full documentation you can browse offline. To install and set up Pythonista, you need to download it from the iOS App Store. Android, phones and tablets. If you have an Android tablet or phone and want to practice Python on the go, there are several options available. The one that we found most reliably supports Python 3.6 is PyDroid 3. PyDroid 3 features an interpreter you can use for REPL sessions and it also provides the ability to edit, save, and execute Python code. You can download and install PyDroid 3 from the Google Play Store. This is a free version and also a paid premium support version, which supports code prediction and code analysis. Online Python Interpreters If you'd like to try out the cases from this tutorial without even installing Python on your own device, there are numerous sites available where it's possible to socialize using a Python interpreter internet. Python.org Online Console www.python.org shell Python Fiddle PythonFiddle.com REPL IT REPL.IT Trinket Trinket.io Python Anywhere www.pythonanywhere.com These cloud-based Python interpreters might not be able to perform a few of the more complicated examples of this tutorial. However, they'll be sufficient for conducting the majority of the easier ones and might be a wonderful way to get you started. More info on these websites is introduced in another section. Installing Packages Prerequisites for installing packages. This section explains the steps necessary to follow along with installing additional Python packages. Make sure it's possible for you to run Python from the command line. Before you proceed any further, ensure you have Python and the anticipated version can be found in the command line. You can check this by running Python variant. You should find some output including Python 3.6.3. .3. If you don't have Python, then please install the newest 3.x version from python.org or consult with this installing Python part of this Hitchhiker's Guide to Python. Notice, if you're a beginner and you get an error like this, Python variant, traceback, most recent call last, document line 1 at name error name Python isn't defined, it is because this control, along with other implied controls within this tutorial, are all meant to be conducted within an shell, also referred to as a terminal or even games console. Watch the Python for Beginners Getting Started tutorial to get an introduction into using the operating system's casing and interacting with Python. Notice, if you're using an improved shell, such as IPython or the Jupyter Laptop, it is possible to run system commands, such as people in this tutorial, from prefacing them with a personality in one import sys undefined variant Python 3.6.3. .3. It's suggested to compose undefined instead than plain Python 
so as to make sure that the controls are conducted in the Python setup fitting and now running laptop, which might not be exactly the exact same Python setup the command Python describes. Notice. Because of how many Linux distributions are tackling the Python 3 stroke, Linux users with the machine Python, without developing a virtual environment, should substitute the Python command with this tutorial together with Python 3 along with the pip control with pip3 consumer. Cannot run some of those orders in this tutorial together with sudo. Should you have a permissions error, return into the section on making virtual environments, place up one, then continue using the tutorial as written. Make sure you're able to conduct pip in the control line. Moreover, you're going to have to be certain you've got pip accessible. You can check it by running pip variant. When you installed Python in source, using an installer out of python.org or through Homebrew, you need to have pip. If you're on Linux and set up together with your OS program manager, you might need to set up pip individually. Visit installing pip setup tools wheel using Linux package managers. If pip is not already set up, then try to bootstrap it in the normal library. Python M ensure pip default pip. If that still does not permit you to conduct pip, securely download get pip.py1. Run Python get pip.py. This too may install or update pip. Furthermore, it's going to set up setup tools along with wheel if they're not installed. Caution. Be careful if you're using a Python setup that is handled by your operating system or a different program manager. Get pip.py doesn't coordinate with these resources and might leave your system in an inconsistent state. You're able to use python get pip.py prefix user local to set up user local that is created for locally installed applications. Even though pip alone is not enough to set up from pre-built binary archives up-to-date copies of this setup tools and wheel jobs are helpful to guarantee you are able to also install from source archives. Python M pip setup update pip setup tools wheel. Optionally Create a digital surroundings. Watch segment under for information, but here is the fundamental VEMV3 control to work with on a normal Linux platform. Python 3 M VEMV tutorial env. Origin, origin tutorial env bin activate. This will create a fresh virtual environment in the tutorial env subdirectory and then configure the present shell to utilize it since the default Python atmosphere. Creating virtual reality. Python virtual reality let Python packs to be set up with an isolated place for a specific program instead of being installed worldwide. If you're seeking to safely set up international command line programs, visit installing standalone command line programs. Imagine you have an application which requires version 1 libfoo. However, the following program demands version 2. How do you use these two programs? When you install everything to user lib Python 3.6 site packages or whatever your normal system location is, 
then it's easy to wind up in a circumstance where you accidentally upgrade a program which shouldn't be updated, or more commonly, what should you would like to put in an program and make it. When an application functions, any shift in its own libraries or the variations of these libraries may break the program. Additionally, suppose that you cannot install packs to the worldwide sites packages directory, for example, in a shared server. In these cases, virtual surroundings might help you. They have their particular setup directories and they do not discuss libraries with other digital environments. Now, there are two typical tools for producing Python virtual surroundings. Venv can be found by default in Python 3.3 and afterwards, also supports pip and setup tools into established virtual surroundings from Python 3.4 and after. Virtual env is to be installed individually, however supports Python 2.7 plus and Python 3.3 plus. Also pip, setup tools, along with wheel are installed into generated virtual surroundings by default, no matter Python variant. The basic use is like this, employing venv, Python 3m venv. Origin. Bin activate. Employing virtual env. Virtual env. Origin. Bin activate. The usage of origin beneath Unix shells guarantees the digital environment's factors are put within the shell rather than at a sub-process, which subsequently fades with no helpful effect. In the aforementioned cases, Windows users must not utilize the origin control, but if preferably operate the trigger script directly from the control shell, just like this. Scripts trigger. Handling multiple virtual surroundings right can become dull, so the addiction management tutorial presents a greater level instrument, pipenv, which automatically manages a different digital environment for every undertaking and program which you operate on. Utilize pip for installing. PIP is your recommended installer. Below, we'll cover the most frequent use situations. Installing out of PyPy. The most frequent use of PIP would be to set up in the Python package index by means of a necessity specifier. Broadly, a necessity specifier is made up of a job title followed by an optional variant specifier. PEP 440 includes a complete specification of those presently supported specifiers. Following are a few examples. To install the most recent version of some project, pip install some project to set up a particular version pip install some project equal equal 1.4 to put in larger than or equivalent to a variant and less than the other pip set up some project greater than 1 less than 2 To put in a version that is harmonious using a particular variation, pip install some project tilde 
1.4.2. In cases like this, this implies to put in any version equal equal 1.4, version that is also greater than 1.4.2. Resource distribution versus wheels. PIP will set up from either source distributions, sdist, or wheels. However, if both exist on PyPy, then PIP may prefer a compatible wheel. Wheels really are a pre built supply format, which provides quicker installation in comparison with source distributions, sdist, particularly when a project comprises extensions that are compiled. In case pip doesn't find a wheel to set up, it will independently construct a wheel and then cache it for future installs rather than rebuilding the supply source in the future. Upgrading packs. Update and previously installed some project to the newest from PyPy. Pip install update some project. Installing into the website. To put in packs which can be isolated into the present user, use the user flag. PIP setup consumer some project. Notice that the user flag has no effect when indoors a digital environment. All of setup commands will impact the digital environment. In case some project defines any command line scripts or even console entrance points, consumer will make them be set up with the user foundation's binary directly, which might or may not be present on your shell's path. Beginning in version 10, pip shows a warning if installing some scripts into a directory out path. When the scripts aren't available on your casing after installation, you will want to include the directory to your path. On Steam and Mac OS, you're able to come across the user base directory from running Python M website user base and incorporating bin to the finish. By way of instance, this may print local having enlarged to the complete path for a home directory, which means you want to add local bin on your path. You're able to put your own path externally by alternating profile. About Windows, you can discover the consumer base binary directory from conducting PyM website user site and substituting site packages with scripts. By way of example, this may yield C consumers username app data roaming Python 3.6 site packages, so that you would have to place your path to add C clients username app data roaming Python 3.6 scripts. You can set your consumer path permanently from the control panel. You might want to log out to the path modifications to take effect. Prerequisites documents. Put in a listing of prerequisites specified at a prerequisites document. PIP setup indicator requirements.txt. Installing out of VCS. Put in a job from VCS from editable fashion. For a complete breakdown of the syntax, visit PIP's segment on VCS service. PIP 
set up cellular git https git repo some package git egg equals some project in git pip set up cellular hg https hg repo some package egg equals some project from mercurial pip set up cellular svn plus svn svn dot repo some package trunk egg equals some project in svn pip set up cellular git plus https git repo some package git feature egg equals some project out of some branch Installing from different indexes. Install from another index. Pip setup index URL HTTP my package repo simple some project. Search an extra indicator during setup, in addition to PyPy. Pip setup extra index URL HTTP my package repo simple some project. Installing a neighborhood source tree. Installing from neighborhood source from development mode, i.e., in this manner in which the job seems to be set up, but nevertheless remains editable in the source tree. Pip setup cellular. You may also install normally in source. Pip installs. Installing from neighborhood archives. Install a specific source archive. Pip install. Downloads. Some project 1.0.4.tar.gz. Install in a local directory featuring archives and do not check PyPy. Setup. No index. Find links. File. Local. Dir. Some project. Pip. Put in. No index. Find links. Local. Dir. Some project. Pip. Put in. No index. Find links. Relative dir some project. Installing from different resources. To set up from additional information sources, such as Amazon S3 storage, you're able to make a helper program that presents the information with a PEP 503 compliant indicator format and then apply the extra index URL flag to guide PIP to use this indicator. S3 helper, port equals 7777. PIP put in, extra index URL, HTTP, localhost 7777, some project. Installing pre-releases. Locate pre-release and development variations in addition to secure versions. By default, PIP simply finds stable variations. PIP set up free some project.
installing setup tools extras. Install setup tools extras. Pip install some package PDF. Pip setup some package PDF equal equal 3.0. Set up cellular.pdf equal equal 3.0 equal equal job in present directory. One, safe in this context implies with the contemporary a tool such as curl that supports SSL certifications when downloading out of HTTPS URLs. Two, based upon your stage, this will require root or administrator access. PIP is presently contemplating changing this by producing user matches the default behavior. Three, starting with Python 3.4, Venv, a standard lib option to virtual end, will produce virtual end surroundings with PIP pre-installed thus rendering it an equivalent alternate to virtual env. 4. The harmonious release specifier was approved in PEP 4.4.0 and service premiered in Setup Tools v8.0 along with PIP v6.0. 5. How to install Python on Windows Python does not come back with Windows. However, that really does not mean Windows users will not locate the Elastic Programming Language helpful. It's not quite as easy as installing the most recent model, however, so let's make certain that you receive the ideal tools to the job at hand. First published in 1991, Python is a favorite high-level programming language utilized for general-purpose programming language. As a result of a design philosophy which emphasizes readability, it's long been a favorite of hobby coders and serious developers alike. Not only can it be a simple language, relatively speaking, that is, to select up, however, you will come across tens of thousands of jobs on the Internet that need you have Python installed to utilize the app. Which version do you want? Regrettably, there was a substantial upgrade to Python many years back that created a large divide between Python versions. This will make things somewhat confusing to novices, but do not worry. We'll walk you through installing the two major versions. When you see the Python for Windows download web page, you will instantly find the division. Right on top, square and center, the repository inquires in the event that you would like the most recent release of Python 2 or Python 3, 2.7.13 or 3.6.1 respectively as of the tutorial. Newer is better, right? Maybe so, maybe not. The version you need is dependent upon your final goal. Let us say, by way of instance, that you just read our post about enlarging your Minecraft entire world with Dungeon and are eager to add cool things for your worlds. That job is coded in Python and needs Python 2.7. You cannot conduct the McDungeon job with Python 3.6. Actually, if you are exploring hobby jobs like McDungeon, then you might discover that almost all of them utilize 2.7. If your target is to receive some job, that ends in a .py extension ready to go, then there is a really, really great chance you will need 2.7 for this. On the other hand, if you're looking to really learn Python, we recommend installing the two versions side by side that you can do without risk and just a very small bit of installation hassle. This permits you to utilize the most recent edition of the terminology However, also run old Python scripts 
and examine backward compatibility for newer jobs. Comparing both versions is a post unto itself, however, so we'll enhance the Python job wiki where you're able to read their own well-written review of the gaps. You can download only Python 2 or Python 3 in case you are certain you merely require a specific edition. We're going the distance now, and we'll probably be installing the two of these. Thus, we advise that you download the two versions and also do the exact same. Under the primary entrance for both versions, you'll notice an x8664 installer as noticed below. The installer will set up the proper 32-bit or 64-bit variant in your computer mechanically. Here is a few further studying it if you would like to understand more about the gaps between the two. The way to install Python 2. Installing Python 2 is a breeze, also unlike in years ago. The installer may set the path factor for you, something we're going to be getting to a little later. Download and then run the installer, choose Install for All Customers, then click Next. About the directory selection screen, make the directory as Python 2.7 and click Next. About the personalization screen, Scroll down, click Insert Python XC to Root, then choose Will be installed on local hard disk. When you're done, click on Next. You do not need to make any more choices after this stage. Click here through the wizard to finish the setup. After the setup is completed, you're able to confirm the setup by opening Command Prompt and typing the following command, Python V. Success. If everything you want is Python 2.7 for a few job or another, it is possible to stop right here. It is set up, the path factor is installed, and you're off to the races. The way to install Python 3. If you would like to learn the newest version of Python, then you'll want to set up Python 3. You're able to install it together with Python 2.7 without any troubles, so proceed and download and then execute the installer now. On the initial screen, let the Insert Python 3.6 to Path choice and click Install Now. Next, you have a choice to make. Clicking the Disable Root Length Limitation option eliminates the limit on the max path factor. This shift will not violate anything, but enables Python to utilize long path names. Since most Python developers are working at Linux and other Nix systems where root name length is not a problem, turning this in advance might help smooth over any path-related problems you've got while operating in Windows. Proceed and picking this choice. If you understand you do not wish to disable the root length limitation, it is possible to simply click on Close to complete the setup. And if you would like to read more regarding the issue prior to committing to this shift, read here. If you are just installing Python 3, then you can use the same command line suggestion of assessing Python V we employed above to check if it is installed properly and the path variable is placed. If you're installing the two variants, but you have to make the fast tweak located in the subsequent section. Fix system variables so you may access both Python versions in the control line. This part of the tutorial is totally optional, but we'll let you rapidly get the two versions of Python from the command line. 
after installing the two versions of Python, then you might have discovered a tiny quirk. So we allowed the system root for the two Python setups, typing Python in the command prompt just points one to Python 2.7. The cause of this is straightforward. The factor, whether mechanically adjusted by means of an installer or renamed, only points in a directory, and also each executable in that directory becomes a command line control. Whether there are two methods recorded and have a python.exe document inside these whichever directories is significantly greater in the list of factors gets utilized. And, in case there is a variable place for your machine and the consumer, the machine root takes precedence over the user root. The latter is precisely what is occurring in this instance. The Python 2 installer assessed the system-wide factor, as well as the Python 3 installer included an individual level factor. And we can confirm it by taking a look at the Windows environmental factors. Hit Start, Kind Innovative System Configurations, then pick the View Innovative System Settings alternative. From the System Properties window that opens on the Advanced tab, then click on the Environment Variables button. Here, it's possible to view Python 3 recorded in the User Factors segment and Python 2 recorded in the System Variables section. There are some approaches in which you may cure this circumstance. The easiest, albeit the one using the least performance, would be to simply get rid of the entry for your version of Python you intend on utilizing the very least. While that is easy, it is also not too much fun. Rather, we could make yet another change, which can offer us entry to Python to get Python 2, and also Python 3 to get Python 3. To do this, fire up File Manager, and mind into the folder in which you installed Python 3. See User Accounts App Data Local Programs Python, Python 3.6 by default. Create a duplicate of this python.exe document and rename this backup, not the first, into python3.exe. Open a new command prompt. The ecological factors refresh with every new command prompt one start and kind python3 variant. Boom. Now you can use the Python command in the command prompt if you would like to utilize Python 2.7, along with also the Python 3 control if you wish to utilize Python 3. If, for whatever reason, you do not find this type of satisfactory solution, you always have the option to reorder the ecological factors. Make sure you brush with our guide first, in case you are uncomfortable editing these factors. Please be aware, however, that no matter that way you use it's crucial to leave the first python.exe complete, as the software from the scripts subdirectory for the two variations of Python rely on such a file name and will fail if it's missing. Chapter 5. How Python works and how it's different from languages like Java or C Sharp. Comparing Python to other languages. Python can be compared to other translated languages like Java, JavaScript, Perl, TCL or even small talk. Comparisons to C++, Common Lisp, and Scheme 
are also enlightening. Within this section, I shall briefly compare Python to every one of those languages. These comparisons focus on language problems only, but the option of a programming language can be dictated by additional real-world limitations like cost, accessibility, training, and previous investment, as well as psychological attachment. Considering these aspects are tremendously variable, it appears a waste of time to think about them considerably for this contrast. Java Python programs are usually expected to operate quicker than Java apps, but in addition, they require much less time to grow. Python programs are typically three to five times shorter than equivalent Java applications. This gap could be attributed to Python's built-in high-tech information types and its own dynamic typing. By way of instance, a Python developer wastes no time announcing the kinds of arguments of factors, and Python's strong polymorphic dictionary and list types, which wealthy syntactic support is constructed directly into the speech, find a use in virtually every Python application. Due to the runtime typing, Python's conduct time has to work more difficult than Java's. By way of instance, when assessing the expression A plus B, then it has to first inspect the items A and B to discover their kind, which isn't known at compile time. Then, it invokes the proper improvement functionality which might be an overloaded user-defined method. Java, on the other hand, can execute an efficient integer or floating point ascension, but necessitates variable declarations for A and B, and doesn't permit overloading of the operator for most cases of user-defined courses. For all these reasons, Python is far better suited as a glue language, whereas Java is much better characterized as a non-invasive execution language. In reality, the two together make a superb combination. Components could be developed in Java and united to form programs in Python. Python may also be able to mimic parts till their layout could be hardened at a Java implementation. To encourage this kind of advancement, a Python implementation written in Java is under development. That lets calling Python code in Java and vice versa. Within this execution, Python source code can be translated into Java bytecode with assistance from a runtime library to confirm Python's dynamic semantics. JavaScript Python's object-based subset is approximately equal to JavaScript. Much like JavaScript, and unlike Java, Python supports a programming style which uses easy functions and factors without participating in category definitions. But for JavaScript, that is all there really is. Python, on the other hand, supports composing considerably bigger apps and much better code reuse through an actual object-oriented programming fashion in which inheritance and classes play a significant duty. Perl Python and Perl come from a similar history, Unix scripting, which have outgrown, and also game many similar characteristics, however have a different doctrine. Perl highlights support for shared application-oriented jobs, e.g. by having built-in regular expressions, document scanning, and document generating characteristics. Python highlights support for programming methods such as information structure layout and object-oriented programming language, 
which motivates developers to write readable and so maintainable code by giving a tasteful but not too mysterious notation. As a result, Python comes near Perl, but seldom defeats it into its first application domain. Nonetheless, Python has an applicability well past Perl's market. TCL Much like Python, TCL is usable as an application expansion language, in addition to a standalone programming language. But TCL, that stores all data as strings, which is weak about information structures, and implements typical code considerably slower than Python. TCL also lacks features required for writing large applications, for example, modular namespaces. Therefore, writing an average large program using TCL generally comprises TCL extensions written in C or C, C++, which are particular to this program. An equal Python program may frequently be written in pure Python. Obviously, pure Python growth is a lot faster than having to write and debug an C or C++ element. It's been stated that TCL's one redeeming characteristic is that the TK Toolkit Python has embraced an interface into TK because it's regular component library. TCL handles the rate issues by providing a bytecode compiler with restricted data type service and provides namespaces. But it's still a far more awkward programming language. Small talk. Perhaps the biggest gap between Python and Smalltalk is now Python's much more mainstream syntax, making it a leg up on developer training. Much like Smalltalk, Python has dynamic binding and typing, and everything in Python is an object. But Python distinguishes built-in thing forms from user-defined courses and now does not allow inheritance from built-in kinds. Smalltalk's normal library of collection information types is much more elegant, whereas Python's library includes facilities for handling Internet and WWW realities like email, HTML, and FTP. Python comes with a different philosophy about the development environment and supply of code. Where Smalltalk normally includes a monolithic system image, which includes both the surroundings and the consumer's application, Python stores equally regular modules and consumer modules in respective files that can readily be arranged or dispersed away from the computer system. One outcome is that there's more than one alternative for attaching a graphical user interface, GUI, into a Python application because the GUI isn't assembled into the computer system. C++ Nearly everything stated for Java also implements for C++, only more so. In which Python code is generally three to five times shorter than equivalent Java code, so it's often five to ten times shorter than equal C++ code. 
Anecdotal evidence indicates that one Python developer can complete in two weeks what two C++ developers cannot finish annually. Python excels as a glue language used to mix elements composed in C++. Common Lisp and Scheme These languages are near Python with their dynamic semantics, but different from their way of syntax, a contrast gets practically a religious debate. Why is Lisp's absence of syntax a benefit or a drawback? It ought to be mentioned that Python has introspective capacities, much like those of Lisp, and Python applications can assemble and implement application items on the fly. Normally, real-world properties are critical. Common Lisp is large in every way, along with the scheme planet is fragmented between several incompatible versions, in which Python has one free streamlined execution. C Sharp versus Python. C Sharp and Python both are one of popular programming languages of 2020. Both are predicated on OOP concepts, simple to understand and code, and extend rapid development and decent functionality. Before we dive into the gaps, let's get a fast summary of each so we can enjoy the gaps better. Review of C Sharp C Sharp is a powerful speech which closely follows the conventional C and C++ constructs. However, it's more modern and easier to understand. Produced by Microsoft, this object-oriented programming language also includes a great deal in common with Java. C-sharp code could be compiled on different programs and comes with a host of powerful features like integration with .NET Frame. Component-oriented. High-level ordered language. Modern syntax. Simple to understand. Loaded regular library. Automated garbage collection. The fundamental arrangement of a C Sharp app is comparable to that of C and Java. A namespace declaration, category definition, variables and methods, chief method, that's it. Here's a very simple application that prints the title of an individual. Here's the explanation for your code. Think about utilizing keyword, like the import or add statement. So if we would like to utilize system namespace from the program, we incorporate it with the using statement. There may be lots of focusing statements within a program. Namespace includes an assortment of classes. When there's more than one course with the identical name, every category could be uniquely identified using the namespace. Course includes the procedure, in this instance, the primary system. As soon as we run the app, the major technique is implemented. Main approach is the entrance point for virtually any c -sharp program. Within this program, we capture user input and exhibit exactly the exact same using a message. Since we're getting it from games, 
we're utilizing some simple I.O. techniques like read line and write line. Advantages of C-sharp C-sharp integrates the highly effective .NET frame. In any case, if you know Java and need to proceed to .NET, studying C-sharp may provide you the essential boost. Some advantages of C-sharp include easy, powerful, scalable, type safe code, does not allow dangerous casts, quick compilation, and implementation time. Structured programming language supports language interoperability. Review of Python Exactly like C Sharp, Python is a general purpose programming language. It follows C and Java at the majority of its attributes. It's portable and simple to find out the terminology, which has high-level programming abilities. Have you been wondering why? Why do we have yet another programming language whenever there are a lot of already? Well, because Python is based from a number of different languages. It's the best characteristics of all. For starters, we could say that it is a dynamically typed language, i.e. form checking is performed at runtime. Second, if you would like to make modifications to a present legacy program, Python is the vocabulary to really go for. Last, if you're a newcomer to programming, then Python is the place you must begin your programming trip. Some attributes of Python. Simplifies both object-oriented programming in addition to operational and organized programming. Simple to read, code, preserve, and interface. A wealthy standard library that's portable and harmonious on several different platforms such as Windows, Mac, or Unix. Supports automatic garbage collection. Let's write the identical print name app in Python to acquire the texture of this code. Print title. Title equals input, input your title. Print, your name is title. What we reached in about 10 lines of C-sharp, we've done in only two lines of Python. The code is similar to typing a paragraph in English. Be aware, there are not any semicolons in the conclusion of every line. The comments are included with pound sign instead of greater than sign at C-sharp. There are no type declarations. Have not written string title, Everywhere in the code, there are no imports. Well, that is the degree of simplicity we're talking about. Few additional advantages of Python. Python can interact with the majority of the different platforms and languages with the Python package index, PyPy. PyPy includes a set of third-party modules to attain this. Tremendous standard library, which contains OS ports, web services programs, and a whole lot more.
free to use and distribute. Python has been created under open source license. Apt for community programs which use a number of protocols. C Sharp versus Python. Head to mind replies. Now that we have a basic comprehension of both languages, let's now compare the deeper differences on your side by side way. C Sharp, Python. Produced by Microsoft, comes with all the permit. Open source distribution and development, even for industrial use. Supports multi paradigm programming, OOP procedural. Statically typed, the compiler will provide mistakes for incorrect typecasting. Dynamic typecasting. No demand for variable declarations. Supports operate on .NET frame. Could be incorporated with Java, JVM. .NET C, C, and JavaScript. Dependency shot acts as a charm. No idea of die like nevertheless. It is possible to add customized tags into something at runtime or perform fighter patching to point to some various third party code for analyzing. more coordinated and persistent syntax and structure. Easy. Easy to code and read. Does not contain a lot of symbols or formats. More inactive language. Everything must be constructed, compiled, then run. Reduces an entire step in the evolution cycle because everything is lively, chosen at runtime. No interpreter. Interactive interpreter to compose apps readily. Due to the frequent language infrastructure, CLI frame, C sharp is quicker and provides better functionality. The development work is quicker, but in comparison to C Sharp, the functionality is somewhat lacking. Library service is great and has its own foundation from the .NET frame. There's no beating Python in its own enormous set of prepackaged libraries. A good deal of code could be reused, making the job simple for programmers. Multi-threading is rather easy with the .NET frame. Due to the global interpreter lock, GIL, Multi-threading needs numerous processes. There's no denying that even C Sharp includes a more coordinated structure, such as an OOP terminology has. This implies there are no inconsistencies in the syntax and formatting principles. On the other hand, the code in Python could be written easily due to the massive collection of conventional libraries. C Sharp can perform all of the things that Python can perform and provides better performance. Python puts you to coding quickly 
and neat. There are not fantastic built-in information types. There are not any confusions of numerous braces undefined as we now have in C Sharp. Python has some fantastic built-in information types. If you would like to work on both the Python and C Sharp, select Iron Python. That has been created for people who wish to write in Python using .NET Frame. It's a Microsoft implementation of Python written in C Sharp. This way, you may learn more about the advantages of the languages and utilize them as deemed healthy. Last two pennies. Believe about C Sharp on both Windows and Python on Linux. Python versus Java at 2020. Programming languages are an essential part of computer science. They're basic tools at a developer's toolbox and critical to virtually every programming task. Selecting between programming languages can be perplexing, let alone picking between the very well-known ones. Python and Java are fighting for the best spot on the very popular programming languages on the market, together with Python making excellent progress in the past couple of years, and Java holding on its place. It often appears that these languages are equally ideal, and in reality, they're capable of performing the majority of the jobs on the market, but there are crucial differences which might help you invent your choice. We're going to begin with describing each terminology and key features and compare them in various fields in computer engineering to offer additional clarity in your own choices. Java Java is a statically typed general purpose programming language. It's an object oriented and concurrent terminology. Java was intended to function as WARA, write once, run everywhere, speech. It was created to operate on almost any platform and with just as few dependencies as you can with the assistance of this Java virtual machine, JVM. Python. Python is really a dynamically typed general purpose programming language. Python's early growth started at a research institute in the Netherlands. The initial motive behind this was to make a higher level speech to bridge the difference between C and also the casing, since the writer says making system management utilities using sensory back in the time was fairly complex. The syntax was motivated by several languages such as Algol 68, Pascal, along with ABC, and has been supposed to be clean and readable. You may read more about the background of Python about the Python's writer blog. Now let us take a look at vital gap between Python and Java. Python versus Java, crucial differences. Performance. Languages do not have speed. They have just semantics. If you would like to compare rate, you need to choose certain implementations to compare with one another. You may get a comprehensive Python versus Java functionality comparison on this endeavor known as the benchmarks game screenshot below, in which different languages have been benchmarked in various programs. Python versus Java functionality cost. 
Remember that performance is not just a purpose of this speech's execution rate. The application's execution, as well as the next party library's functionality, is normally the number one variable from the equation. Popularity Popularity has always been a match between these two languages, since they have been a close competition in the top three rankings of celebrity, together with JavaScript. Ahead of the JavaScript revolution, the Java has been the number one most popular vocabulary. When JavaScript initially came from, the creators choose a title near Java to allow it to gain traction. According to GitHub's Octoverse, Java has been the second most used speech on GitHub, followed by Python. In Stack Overflow's 2018 programmer survey, Python has resisted the fastest growing programming language, later shooting over C Sharp place this year, and exceeding PHP this past calendar year. Java remains rated above Python, becoming popular with 45% of programmers, although Python is currently at 39%. Nevertheless, that gap is now closing. It's safe to state that languages live around the exact same place in popularity. Syntax Python is dynamically typed language. Even when you compose Python, you do not have to ascertain variable kinds, since the interpreter will recognize these kinds and the tests will be produced at runtime, which leads to a simpler syntax that's rather like the English language. Additionally, Python does not use the enclosing braces, also follows indentation principles, like how many folks write pseudocode. Making the code very simple to read and beneficial to novices. During this simple class definition, I've created a simple class known as fruit using a constructor. That's the code which will be implemented once I create an instance of this item and described two simple acts also, every printing among the item's attributes. Java, on the other hand, follows rigorous syntax principles. It's a statically typed language in which you want to specifically declare your variable types and should not an anomaly be seen. The code won't compile to start with. As soon as it's not the easiest thing for newbies, a few programmers find relaxation together with all the clarity of statically typed languages. So many programmers do not feel comfortable after indentation principles, particularly with large code bases. That is the equal to the fruit course we've defined in Python using the specific same functionalities. Jobs and salary. There appears to be no purpose gap or contrast between Python versus Java tasks or wages. Both are extremely popular, so in the event that you obtain a nice experience in, you should begin working as an application programmer or intern to begin your own career. Benefits of job or salary shouldn't be your standard for picking both of the programming language, so pick the one which you might relate to improved. Python versus Java, uses, applications in a variety of areas. Game development. 
We're not going to discuss overall PC game development, since neither Python nor Java really can compete with C++ or C Sharp in this region with their massive ecosystem. Additionally, game development is a discipline which needs the greatest possible performance to supply seamless experience to those consumers. Also, while Java and Python are very slow, so they do not support the very best functionality for sport development. JMonkey Engine is a favorite open source sport development motor with Java. Although it is not on level with Unreal and Unity, it is surely a potent engine which can allow you to produce some wonderful games. If you would like to experiment with computer images from scratch, or build your search engine, OpenGL also provides bindings for the Java language. While Python isn't a strong option by itself for game production, there's Cocos, Panda 3D, Pygame, and also some different engines or frameworks for constructing matches with Python. But Python is not totally ruled out for professional sport development. It's an important instrument to get a game programmer, since Python is a favorite scripting language alternative for many programmers, such as game programmers. Testing packages, such as Maya, additionally use Python as a scripting language. Web development. Both languages have been employed in back-end web development. Back-end net development is that the division of internet development involved with producing the applications which can run on the host. It is the hottest development field based on Stack Overflow's programmer survey. Composing your own back-end technologies from scratch will not just be challenging, but it is extremely difficult to pay all design requirements in safety to reliability and efficacy. That is the reason why programmers have established frameworks that's an abstraction in application, which permits you to construct your back-end technologies without reinventing the wheel. The most popular frameworks for Python have been Django and Flask. Flask is a micro-net platform. It offers you the fundamental functionalities you would need, such as routing requests, without a lot of overhead. Django is a much more featured alternative and will be able to help you construct a strong back-end when capitalizing on efficacy and safety. Django has a highly effective ORM coding, which eases coping databases and performing various operations on the information. In terms of Java, Spring is possibly the very well-known Java backend frame with a huge ecosystem and a massive community about it. Spring is utilized by both Orange, Dell, GE, and several different businesses and while it is much less observable as Django today, it's a potent choice for construction enterprise-level software. Machine Learning Because Python is syntactically quite simple, yet a fully-fledged object-oriented programming terminology it turned into a favorite solution for people from various fields who wish to experiment using machine learning and deliver the ability of AI in their various fields. That is the reason why lots of the advancement in AI and machine learning has been completed using Python with a massive ecosystem and libraries. There's TensorFlow, Keras, Scikit-Learn, and Facebook's PyTorch also it is definitely the most popular language within the specialty. Java can also be regarded as a fantastic choice when it comes to machine learning. It's simple to use and use, 
plus it is already used for large-scale and enterprise-level software. One of the libraries that you can use in the region are Weka, Mallet, Deep Learning 4, and MOA. Java and Python are equally popular and capable languages. Therefore, there will not be a deficiency of funds as soon as you select you and embark upon your travels. If you're new to programming, then it'd be wise to stay with Python just since it is really simple and utilizes English-like syntax. It's used in several computer science introductory classes around the globe. But if your objective is to construct enterprise-level software coming out of an C, C++ entire world, then Java would likely feel quite comfortable to you. Everything goes down to which you intend to construct and in which you truly feel like journeying along with your new ability. Python versus additional programming languages, differences. Back in 1991, a new programming language named Python was invented. Decades later, with overtaken all its competitors, the innovation is already widely employed by technology firms around the world. When some languages have been stagnating or in decline, Python's fame is moving up. Additionally, that the programming community indicator shows today that Python retains the maximum position as the onset of the indicator in 2001. People seek out information relating to this on Google increasingly more frequently, and they really figure out how to discover the truth that present advantages of Python over other languages. Thus, what pushes its own success? What's your Python programming language? Python is among the hottest and translation languages that are programming. Inherently, it's interpreted, high-level, general-purpose, and object-oriented language, which signifies the following. Interpreted. An interpreter processes the source file. It reads the lines of code 1 and plays what's stated. Likewise to Perl and PHP, Python will not need you to compile your app before implementing it, so you don't need to invoke a compiler. Rather than conducting the compiler that helps flip source documents into compiled class files, you just run a .py file. Python bytecode compilation is both automatic and completely implicit. Elevated Language Python depends on simple to peruse structures that are later converted into a low-level language. The first code that is run on a PC's focal preparing unit, CPU. An elevated level language is planned to be utilized by a software engineer, and the composed code is further deciphered into a low-level language like C++ or Java before running, Python must be prepared. This empowers Python's convenience. It can run on various types of PCs with almost no alterations. Universally useful. Python can be utilized for almost everything. It is pertinent to pretty much every field for an assortment of undertakings. Be it the execution of such transient undertakings as programming testing or long-haul item advancement that includes guide arranging, Python functions admirably for them all. It is pertinent everywhere. Its jobs are boundless. It's well known among programming engineers, yet in addition among pros in different fields. Arithmetic, information examination, science, bookkeeping, and system designing. In like manner, Python factions with youngsters 
since it's a very learner cordial scripting language. Book arranged. This programming worldview gives a general direction towards scripting and groundbreaking code organizing. This book situated methodology permits considering issues as far as classes and items. At that point, objects are created in such an approach to make up complex PC programs. Next to the book situated programming, Python additionally bolters a procedural worldview. With OOP being just one of the choices, you can make Python programming further developed by going for an item situated programming approach. Engineers can make reusable examples of code in this manner, shortening repetition being developed ventures. Where Python language is utilized, there's a tremendous assortment of Python use cases across ventures. Obviously, the primary thing that surfaces when one ponders the most widely recognized manners by which Python is utilized is for building web, portable, and work area applications, just as for testing them. Be that as it may, Python is a language that fills a variety of needs. Essentially, these are the territories of utilization Python is ideal for. One, web application advancement. Two, data science. Three, scripting. Four, database programming. Five, quick prototyping. Python is useful for all types of programming, which makes its client base develop quickly. Cross-stage shell scripting, fast mechanization, basic web advancement. Information examination and representation, AI and ML, are a portion of the models. Frequently, masters use Python to more readily play out an assortment of undertakings in various controls. Better execution, among others, might be accomplished with the assistance of mechanization. Account, protection, and showcasing are the essential fields, wherein individuals face the need to do undertakings that are dull and exhausting. Seeing duplicating, renaming, and transferring records to a server, downloading sites, or parsing information. Rather, a software engineer can compose a content in Python and robotize it all. In addition, you ought not really be a product designer to utilize Python. The language permits encouraging information investigation and representation. It has a rich biological system involving productive libraries for information handling and, in this manner, helping information researchers in performing complex numeric registering tasks. Focal Points of the Python Programming Language Not in vain, the greatest organizations on the planet use Python. It's exploited by Pixar to create films, by Google to slither pages, by Netflix to convey content, and by Spotify to prescribe melodies. 
The language is brimming with advantages, and there are some valid justifications to adore it. Simplicity Python's clear and basic sentence structure is something that makes novices need to become familiar with this scripting language. From some viewpoint, it might appear to be common and pre-established that Python can transform into the most widely used language of coding, showing the remainder of its rivals old. Its code is anything but difficult to fathom, share, and keep up. There is no verbosity, and the language is anything but difficult to learn. A Amazing Toolkit Naturally, Python programs are content documents containing guidelines for the translator and are written in a word processor, or IDE. IDEs are full, highlighted, and offer in-constructed instruments like punctuation checkers, debuggers, and code programs. Content managers don't regularly incorporate IDE includes, however, they can be modified. Python additionally hosts an enormous cluster of third get-together bundles, libraries, and structures that encourage the advancement procedure. These enhancement capabilities, hence, make Python extraordinary for huge scope ventures. Development speed. We mean business speed here, and an opportunity to showcase metric. Python is a dynamic scripting language so it isn't planned for composing applications without any preparation, yet it's fundamentally expected for stopping together parts. Parts are intended to be reusable, while the interfaces among segments and contents are very much characterized. Everything quickens the speed of programming advancement with Python, making the language exceptionally compact and beneficial. Flexibility Despite the fact that Python puts accentuation on code effortlessness and coherence instead of adaptability, the language, despite everything, has it. Python is usable across various activities. It permits engineers to pick between object-arranged and procedural programming modes. Python is adaptable in information type as well. There are five of them. Number, string, list, tuple, and dictionary. And each sub-information type relates to one of these root types. Therefore, the exploratory information examination gets simpler to lead because of Python's adaptability. Portability Python is intended to be convenient. Its projects are upheld on any cutting-edge PC OS. Attributable to the elevated level nature of the language, Python content is deciphered, so it very well may be composed for additional understanding, similarly well on Linux, Windows, Mac OX, and Unix, without requesting for changes. Python programs likewise permit executing versatile GUIs. A solid network Python has a quickly developing client base and really is illustrative of what a solid network is. There are a great many supporters of Python's amazing toolkit, Pythonistas.
There are, as of now, very nearly 200,000 exceptionally assembled programming bundles client transferred to an online vault. All it suggests that the extraordinary steady network is both the explanation behind and the result of the languages being sought after. Python and other programming dialects. The way that Python has a notoriety of a software engineer neighborly language that is supported by designers is undoubted, yet once in a while, Python is contrasted with other programming dialects, including Java, c -sharp, PHP, and Ruby on Rails. This examination is substantial, in any case, when execution, usefulness, and all other sufficient measurements of the pair being talked about are considered. Python versus Java. On the said TOB record, Java positions the most elevated. It has set up itself as the most normally utilized language for building web applications. Java engineers can pick the bundle they need from a wide assortment of libraries, yet Python can even score over Java as far as designers help. Be that as it may, the two dialects are notable as a universally useful language. Python and Java fill similarly extraordinary the need of finishing basically unique programming improvement undertakings. This is the thing that they share. While their shared characteristics are uniform, their disparities are a range. In the first place, Python is deciphered and Java is aggregated, implying that the potential blunders happen at runtime and gather time individually. Java is an official language for building Android applications. On the other hand, for Python, portable application advancement isn't a need, most definitely. A library called Kivi warrants that yet the procedure of improvement stays problematic. Because of its interpretability, Python is a more gainful programming language than Java, in which everything must be expressly proclaimed. Superfluous verbosity is natural in Java, and for playing out a similar assignment, there will be consistently less lines of code in Python than in Java. At last, Python gives a progressively natural learning experience. In any case, it doesn't drive off novices who decided to learn Java with its additional coding at any rate. Python versus c -sharp, Execution and Usefulness Correlation First thing, we will begin with the mutual attributes. Python and c -sharp are tantamount dialects as they give straightforwardness and other extraordinary enough advantages. The two of them are object-situated center-level programming dialects and dissimilar to other people. These two offer full help for this kind of programming with the goal that the code is very much organized. The two of them are broadly used so they can be utilized to make work area, portable, and cloud-based applications, venture programming, and obviously web applications. The two of them are a decent decision for web improvement. C Sharp, anyway, is generally cantered around Windows work area application and web improvement. The language made by Microsoft is typically best fit for creating Windows items utilizing its .NET structure, and it is relied upon to be ceaselessly given consideration and saved significant for the cutting-edge world. Probably the greatest difference lies in the way 
that code written in C sharp is is in steps accumulated to local code. What's more, the accumulation is troublesome. Thus, Python is first arranged to bytecode and afterward deciphered by the translator of the particular OS. This is a particular component of Python as a scripting language. An express assemblage organize is skipped while adaptability and simplicity of transportability are obtained. The expectation to absorb information for C Sharp and Python is additionally marginally unique. For C Sharp, it is moderately low, yet not contrasted with Python, which is considerably easier to learn, particularly for the individuals who are fresh out of the box, new to the field. C Sharp is a superior decision for those with moderate to cutting edge involvement recorded as a hard copy code. Python versus PHP. The method this pair of dialects is based upon is server-side scripting. This implies they're best prepared for the back-end advancement of web applications. We've referenced before the Python's incredible tool compartment. PHP likewise has some very much structured web improvement systems to offer, as Laveral and Symfony. In any case, Python's libraries are progressively bound together and better created. Both are elevated level, deciphered, and object-oriented. In this manner, PHP can be deciphered into local code following Python's example. However, there is a distinction in how object arranged programming functions for the two as a general rule. PHP's OOP is increasingly turbulent. However, plans to turn out to be better organized after some time. Another bumbling point is language structure. Its effortlessness is Python's most elevated need. PHP's punctuation is fairly like C-type dialects, so it is increasingly mind-boggling and confusing. Thus, a higher expectation to learn and adapt of PHP makes it less charming for tenderfoots. Acting, nuts and bolts, oop with PHP, structure examples, and systems is the fundamental least to begin, yet the troubles one may experience particularly when learning structures, tell against PHP. Additionally, there's an inclination today for changing from PHP, which is in a stagnation, to Python. The developing number of software engineers surrender PHP for Python because of the persuading benefits regarding the last mentioned. Contrasts among Python and Ruby Programming designers frequently favor Ruby, thinking of it as rather a showstopper and even a delight. For example, OOP with Ruby implies that they can call techniques on objects, characterize their own strategies, and revise strategies however they see fit, that is, the intensity of the language. In any case, Indeed, Python is progressively well known. It only can make a software engineer progressively employable in 2019. There are more Python clients and more Python engineers at this moment. The two dialects can gloat having a perfect punctuation. However, Python as a language is substantially more unsurprising. Everything works and looks the manner in which they should. Furthermore, when they don't, it is effectively observable where and what has turned out badly. Ruby's sentence structure is laxer, yet the mediator pulls in the leeway 
each time you miswrite a line and conveys the normal outcome. Anyway, these two dialects have numerous likenesses and are both simple to learn. However, Ruby has less boundless reception outside of the Rails people group. And it is encouraged to turn out to be modestly acceptable at another dialect first and afterward attempt Ruby. Then again, there are a ton of instructional materials based around Python, the language that is extensively received in a more extensive assortment of fields. Therefore, data analytics for building machine learning models, for instance, is something that is impossible without Python. Python Disservices All programming dialects remain flawed. In spite of all the decency that Python as a programming language offers, there are inadequacies to manage. Speed, starting at a deciphered language. Fortunately, this disadvantage is fixable with the ascent of PyPy promising the exhibition help. Python's dynamism forestalls getting semantic mistakes forthright. Yet, apparatuses like Checker can check for blunders that a compiler in dialects like C or Java would do. Threading is less performant in Python than in different dialects. The multi-threading can get conceivable with Jython, however, Changelessness isn't excessively significant in Python, so single-string simultaneousness works fine. Dependence on outsider libraries and structures There are a lot of generally utilized outsider assets that are not basically Pythonic. This really repudiates the Python witticism. why Python is famous. Each language is structured in such a manner to offer something exceptional that its clients will have the option to profit by. This worldview characterizes what programming with Python is. Somehow, Python won't replace low-level dialects permitting clients to obtain better authority over a CPU like C or C++. Nor will it assume control over Java that is popular in light of its accessibility for building complex applications or JavaScript remaining behind most website pages. Be that as it may, its correlation with C Sharp, PHP, and Ruby is more attractive. Thusly, we attempt an immediate one next to the other examination of comparing parameters. What's more, the benefits of Python that we call attention to breaking down the alternatives feature what is the purpose behind Python's notoriety. We urge you to encounter it yourself. Chapter 6. Several Examples of Python 25 Plus Python Programming Examples Of course, at this point, perhaps, you realize that Python is a too well-known programming language utilized by everybody, from web engineers to information researchers to monetary wizards, implying that once you learn Python, the entryways are fully open similarly as your professional alternatives in tech. But you may in any case be thinking about what precisely Python resembles and how it functions. 
until you get a glance at a programming language in real life. It's difficult to comprehend what it's everything about. We've gathered together more than 25 Python code guides to show precisely how Python works in nature. Every one of these Python programming models incorporates a connect to the source code, so you can test and change them however much you might want, and perhaps attempt to compose your own models dependent on what you see here. Also, remember to join to hear when Skill Crush's new Python course is open for enlistment. One, expel duplicates function. Mechanization is a huge part of Python's playbook and a similarly large piece of why software engineers love the language to such an extent. With regards to programming and web improvement or information science or AI, or any of different fields Python is utilized for, having the option to computerize forms that would some way or another take always to finish by hand is crucial. 2. Enhancement 8-Ball Am I dating myself by saying I cherished magic 8-Balls as a child? All things considered, in the event that you never again have yours, possibly on the grounds that, similar to me, you crushed it to perceive what that dinky fluid was inside, you can reproduce the 8-ball rationale with this great Python content model. Also, if magic 8-balls aren't your thing, you'll, despite everything, have an unparalleled view to how Python is utilized to produce arbitrary reactions. P.S. You can likewise change this base code to make it serve explicit reactions to explicit sources of info. Three, Pig Latin translator, do uye pixe igpe Atenle? No. Python programming examples. Pig Latin translator. Not an issue. With this Python Pig Latin translator script, you'll be conversant in no time. Once more, Python programming models like this one are fun indication at what's conceivable when you realize Python. Robotized Pig Latin interpretations may appear to be senseless, yet you can stretch out this sort of scripting to any example that requires programmed reaction to explicit sources of info. 4. Use Python to send email. As you begin working with scripting dialects like Python or JavaScript, you'll understand what a significant job they do play in a great deal of web capacities we underestimate. Messages are an ideal model. Business messages depend on mechanization. At the point when a client pursues an item on your site, for example, you need to get them an affirmation email. Yet, you don't have any desire to timetable and sending every one of those messages by hand. Engineers use scripting dialects like Python to make that robotization occur. Python code models like this Python content show how Python can consequently plan and send those messages so you won't need to. Five. Temperature Conversion Program Is there much else humiliating than somebody in Europe revealing to you it's 32 degrees out and not realizing that it's hot, not cold? All things considered, 
there most likely is, yet at the same time. Fortunately, we live in the web age, where web applications let us convert these sorts of numbers at the dash of a catch. Python programming models, similar to this temperature change program, tell the best way to content and essential transformation content from Celsius to Fahrenheit and the other way around, something you can reproduce for mechanizing any sort of framework transformation program. Convert KMH to MPH converter. This Python content model follows a similar reason as the temperature change program above, yet right now, a Python content utilized for changing over kilometers every hour to miles every hour. Analyze the two projects so you can get a feeling of how to utilize various strategies and contributions to accomplish a comparable outcome. 7. Most Prominent Common Divisor Script we frequently state that the tech business isn't so math substantial as outcasts will in general think it seems to be. Some portion of that is on the grounds that the majority of the substantial computational lifting is accomplished for you by machines. In any case, you do need to guide machines and how to do before allowing them to free. This seems like the beginning of an exemplary Robots Assume Control Over the World film. Python contents like this most noteworthy normal divisor content are ideal instances of how, when you use Python to give machines an away from of guidelines, they'll let out the computational information you're searching for till the finish of time. 8. Request a computer for specific files. In case you're searching for a specific document or kind of record on a PC, the exact opposite thing you need to do is chase and peck your way there. What's more, that implies, on the off chance that you end up chipping away at an application or programming program that should have the option to discover records, you'll need an approach to robotize the procedure. So, how would you that? This Python content model will give you a few pieces of information about the stuff to assemble a component for looking through individual documents and records of a particular kind. 9. Check your external IP address. Having to recognize what your outer IP address is a unique little something that doesn't come up ordinarily, until it does. Here's a Python content model that shows that it is so natural to utilize Python for these, in any case, repetitive sort of assignments. 10. Irregular Password Generator Attempting to make a site or a versatile application that is equipped for creating irregular client passwords? At that point, this is the Python content for you. Dive into this code and perceive how to produce passwords and how you can change the standards to accommodate your own particular prerequisites. 11. Username Prompt Straightforward, however compelling Python code models, like this content for a username brief, are a decent beginning stage for working up to increasingly muddled contents and capacities. 12. Staple Calculator Here's a Python content model that shows precisely how helpful Python can be for regular assignments. Attempting to monitor your basic food item spending plan? There's a Python content for that. This staple mini-computer utilizes Python code to track and count the expenses 
of entered nourishment things. 13. Tweet search. Ever had a go at searching for an individual tweet from a Twitter account you follow? Looking over, and looking over, and looking over, and whoops. Accidentally winding up back at the highest point of the page? Not cool. Let this Python content model makes things simpler for you via mechanizing that search work. 14. Convert to seconds. Proceeding in the vein of Python programming models that robotize estimation changes, this Python content proselytes hours into seconds. Once more, you can surely do by hand, yet for what reason would you when you realize how to content with Python? Skill Crush needs the contact data you give to us to get in touch with you about our items and administrations. You may withdraw from these interchanges at whenever. For data on the most proficient method to withdraw, just as our security practices and responsibility to ensuring your protection, look at our privacy policy. 15. Bones Roller Regardless of whether it's prepackaged game or club, night at home, and you're hard and fast of shakers, or you simply need an irregular number created between 1 and 6, or any range you'd like in the event that you can change the code, this Python content model has virtual bones moving on lockdown. 16. Vowel Remover Document this one under Python programming models that show how smooth Python is for secluding explicit information. This content distinguishes all vowels in a field of content and expels them. 17. Spellbinder Generation You are getting very sleepy. Actually, no. Not on the grounds that you're 17 sections somewhere down right now, since you simply looked at this Python content model. A trance-like influence generator. No doubt it seems like a joke, but on the off chance that you investigate this code, you'll perceive how to utilize Python information and produce various outcomes from a similar date pool contingent upon your parameters. 18. Speculating Game There are other gamified Python code models on this rundown. However, this Python content includes an additional component. Certainly, it produces an irregular number that the client is approached to figure, yet it likewise incorporates a circle that makes the content recurrent itself until the client really inputs the number. 19. Bubble Buzz Solution Also, here we have your standard bubble buzz arrangement. Pause. You don't have a clue what that implies? Neither do I. However, that's not so much the purpose of this Python content model. This content prints the numbers 1 to 100, Yet, for products of 3, prints bubble rather than the number, and for products of 5, prints buzz. And that purpose of that is another exercise in Python's forces of information confinement and change. 20. Shading Gradients and Intermediaries this helpful Python content model tells the best way to utilize Python to figure that tricky shading data, like inclinations and delegates. 21. 
Get All Website Links function. Ever been entrusted with discovering all the connections on a particular site and begun seeing things as you poured over the screen, ensuring you weren't feeling the loss of any? The excellence of scripting with Python is that you could have quite recently run this Python content model, rather, and separated each connection consequently from the ocean of information. 22. Normal Score Calculator This too straightforward Python content model requests that clients input three scores and afterward expeditiously delivers the normal. Obviously, you can include more numbers by changing the code, just as increasingly convoluted numerical capacities, yet this gives a feeling of Python's computational forces. 23. Executioner's Game Goodness, Hangman, a game played on the rear of numerous a napkin and child's menu during dinners out in my childhood. This Python content model separates the mechanics of the hangman game and transforms it into an advanced meeting of speculating factors. 24. Number Reverser We proceed with our rundown with Python programming models that feature enjoyment with numbers. This Python number reverser content will switch any given number. Thus, 1, 2, 3, 4 gets 4, 3, 2, 1. 25. Print odd numbers in a given range. This is another straightforward instance of utilizing Python to robotize an assignment that would be dull and tedious whenever done physically. Searching for a rundown of odd numbers in a given range? Basically, execute this Python content model and boom. Crucial. Python Examples The most ideal approach to learn Python is by rehearsing models. The page contains models on essential ideas of Python. You are encouraged to take the references from these models and give them a shot of your own. All the projects on this page are tried and should chip away at all stages. 1. Python program to print Hello World. 2. Python program to add two numbers. 3. Python program to find the square root. 4. Python program to calculate the area of a triangle. 5. Python program to solve quadratic equation. 6. Python program to swap two variables. 7. Python program to generate a random number. 8. Python program to convert kilometers to miles. 9. Python program to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit. 10. Python program to check if a number is positive, negative, or zero. 11. Python program to check if a number is odd or even. 12. Python program to check leap year. 13. Python program to find the largest among three numbers. 14. Python program to check prime number. 15. Python program to print every single prime number in an interval. 16. Python program to find the factorial of a number. 
17. Python program to display the increase table. 18. Python program to check Armstrong number. Eighteen Python program to print the Fibonacci arrangement. Nineteen Python program to check Armstrong number. Twenty Python program to find Armstrong number in an interval. Twenty one Python program to find the sum of natural numbers. 22. Python program to display powers of 2 using anonymous function. 23. Python program to find numbers divisible by another number. 24. Python program to convert decimal to binary, octal, and hexadecimal. 25. Python program to find ASCII value of character. 26. Python program to find HCF or GCD. 27. Python program to find LCM. 28. Python program to find the factors of a number. 29. Python program to make a simple of calculator. 30. Python program to shuffle a deck of cards. 31. Python program to display calendar. 32. Python program to display Fibonacci sequence using recursion. 33. Python program to find sum of natural numbers using recursion. 34. Python program to find factorial of number using recursion. 35. Python program to convert decimal to binary using recursion. 36. Python program to add two matrices. 37. Python program to transpose a matrix. 38. Python program to multiply two matrices. 39. Python program to check whether a string is palindrome or not. 40. Python program to remove punctuations from a string. 41. Python program to sort words in alphabetical order. 42. Python program to illustrate different set operations. 43. Python program to count the number of each vowel. 44. Python program to merge males. 45. Python program to find the size resolution of an image. 46. Python programming to find hash of file. 7. Python text processing. Python text processing. Python programming can be utilized to process content information for the prerequisites in different printed information investigation. A significant zone of use of such content preparing capacity of Python is for NLP, Natural Language Processing, 
NLP is utilized in web crawlers, paper feed examination, and all the more as of late for voice-based applications like Siri and Alexa. Python's Natural Language Toolkit, NLTK, is a gathering of libraries that can be utilized for making such text processing frameworks. Crowd. This is intended for computer science graduates, just as software professionals who were eager to learn text processing in straightforward and simple advances utilizing Python as a programming language. Requirements. Prior to continuing with this instructional exercise, you ought to have a fundamental information on composing code in Python programming language, utilizing any Python IDE and execution of Python programs. In the event that you're totally new to Python, at that point, please elude our Python instructional exercise to get a sound comprehension of the language. Content pre-processing in Python, steps, tools, and examples. Convert content to lowercase. Model 1, convert content to lowercase. Python code. Input string equals the five greatest nations by populace in 2017 are China, India, United States, Indonesia, and Brazil. Input string equals input string lower. Print input string. Yield. The five greatest nations by populace in 2017 are China, India, U.S., Indonesia, and Brazil. Eliminate numbers. Eliminate numbers if they're not pertinent to your investigations. Normally, regular expressions have been utilized to eliminate amounts. Hint 2. Numbers eliminating. Python code. Input re. Input string equals a box contains three red and five white balls, although box B includes four red and two blue balls. Result equals re sub r d e input string. Print result. Output box A contains white and red chunks, although box B includes blue and red balls. Remove punctuation. This code removes this collection of symbols. Exclamation point. Tilde. Hint 3. Punctuation elimination. Python code. Import string. Input string equals that is an example. Undefined string with punctuation, sample series. Result equals input string, translate, string make trans, string punctuation, print result. Output, that is an example of series with punctuation. Remove white spaces. To eliminate finish and leading distances, you can utilize the strip work. Example 4. White spaces elimination. Python code. Input string equals a series instance. Input string equals input string strip. Input string. Output a series example. Tokenization. Tokenization is the process of dividing the specified text into smaller bits, called tokens. Words, numbers, punctuation marks, along with many others, could be regarded as tokens. Inside this table, tokenization sheet, many tools for executing tokenization are clarified. Remove stop words. 
cease words would be the most frequent phrases in a language, such as the, a, onto, is, all of. These words don't take significant meaning and are often removed out of texts. It's possible to eliminate stop words employing Natural Language Toolkit, NLTK, a package of programs and libraries for symbolic and statistical all-natural language processing. Example 7. Stop Words Elimination Code Input string equals NLTK is a top platform for building Python apps to operate with individual language information. Stop words equals put stop words words English. Out of NLTK tokenize import word tokenize. Tokens equals word tokenize input string. Response I for I in tokens or even in stop words. Print result. Output NLTK top stage construction Python apps function individual speech information. A scikit learn instrument also provides a stop words listing. Out of SK Learn feature extraction stop words, import English stop words. It's also likely to utilize Spacey, a free open source library. Out of Spacey, Lang, Ing, stop words, import stop words. Eliminate sparse phrases and special words. Sometimes it's necessary to eliminate sparse phrases or special phrases. This task may be achieved together with stop words removal methods, considering any type of words may be selected as words. Stemming Stemming is also a process of reducing words into their own word stem, root, or base type. By way of instance, novels, publication, appeared, seem. The most important two calculations would be quarter stemming algorithm, eliminates common morphological and inflectional endings from words, along with Lancaster coming algorithm, a more competitive coming algorithm. At the stemming sheet of this table, a few stemmers are clarified. Example 8. Stemming with NLTK. Code. Out of NLTK stem, import quarter stemmer. Out of NLTK tokenize, import word tokenize. Stemmer equals quarter stemmer. Input string equals there are plenty of kinds of originating algorithms. Input string equal word tokenize input string. For term in input string, publish stemmer stem phrase. Output, there are type of stem algorithm. Lemmatization. The goal of lemmatization, such as coming, will be to reduce inflectional forms into a frequent foundation form. Rather than coming, Lemmatization does not merely cut inflections. Rather, it utilizes lexical knowledge bases to acquire the suitable base types of words. Lemmatization tools have been introduced libraries described previously. NLTK, WordNet Lemmatizer, Spacey, Text Blob, Pattern, GenSim, Stanford, or NLP, Memory-Based Shallow Parsessor, MBSP, Apache.
Open NLP. Apache Lucene. General Architecture for Text Engineering. Gate. Illinois Lematizer, along with DK Pro Core. Example 9. Lemmatization with NLTK. Code. Out of NLTK stem, import WordNet Lemmatizer. Out of NLTK tokenize, import Word tokenize. Lemmatizer equals WordNet Lemmatizer. Input string equals Ben Dunn Languages Towns Mice. Input string equals word tokenize input string. For term in input string, publish lemmatizer lemmatize phrase. Output be consumed do terminology city mouse. Part of speech tagging. Pause. Part of speech tagging intends to assign elements of address to every word of a certain text. For instance, nouns, verb, adjectives, as well as many others, according to its definition and its own circumstance. There are many tools, including pause taggers, such as NLTK, Spacey, Text Blob, Pattern, Stanford Core NLP, Memory-Based Shallow Parser, MBSP, Apache Open NLP, Apache Lucene, General Architecture for Text Engineering, Gate, Freeling, Illinois Part of Speech Tagger, along with DK Pro Core. Example 10. Part of Speech Tagging with Text Blob. Code. Input String equals Elements of Speech Illustrations and Guide to Write, Intriguing, Readily, and Instead of. Out of Text Blob Import text blob. Outcome equals text blob input string. Publish result tags. Output components of address illustrations and post into composed fascinating readily and of. Chunking. Shallow parsing. Chunking is a natural speech procedure that identifies constituent elements of paragraphs, nouns, verb, adjectives, etc., and connects to higher-order units which have distinct grammatical meanings, noun classes or phrases, verb classes, etc. Chunking applications, NLTK, tree tagger, chunkier. Apache Open NLP. General Architecture for Text Engineering. Gate. Freely. Example 11. Chunking with NLTK. Step 1 is to find out the part of address for every term. Code. Input string equals a dark TV along with a white cooker, were purchased to your newest flat of John. Out of text blob, import text blob. Outcome equals text blob, input string. Publish result tags. Output, a black TV and a white cooker were purchased for the fresh flat of John. The second step is chunking. Code. RegX equals NP undefined. RP equals NLTK RegX parser RegX. Outcome equals RP parse result tags. Print result. It's also likely to draw on the sentence shrub construction 
utilizing code result draw. Named entity recognition. Named entity recognition, NER, intends to locate named entities in text and categorize them to predefined groups. Names of individuals, places, associations, occasions, etc. Named Entity Recognition Tools, NLTK, SPACI, General Architecture for Text Engineering, GATE, ANI, Apache, Open NLP, Stanford Core NLP, DK Pro Core, MIDI, Watson Natural Language Understanding, Text Razor, Freeling, are clarified at the NER sheet of this table. NER Tools, Example 12, Named Entity Recognition with NLTK. Code, out of NLTK, import word tokenize, pause tag, NE chunk, input string equals bill functions for Apple so that he traveled to Boston for a seminar, print NE chunk, pause tag, word tokenizer, input string, output, For reference resolution, anaphora resolution. Pronouns and other referring expressions ought to be attached to the proper individuals. Co-reference resolution locates that the cities in a text which refer to precisely the exact same real-world thing. By way of instance, from the paragraph, Andrew stated he'd purchase a vehicle, that the pronoun he refers to exactly the identical individual, specifically to Andrew. Co-reference resolution gears. Stanford Core NLP. Spacey. Open Calais. Apache Open NLP are explained from the co-reference resolution sheet of this table. Chapter 8. Python Strengths Strengths and Weaknesses of Python Python is the language that's used by large brands in the entire world. Its demand is rising day by day. Python can be employed by Google, Yahoo, Intel, IBM, Cisco, HP, NASA, and a lot bigger names from the listing. Here, We'll go over several advantages and flaws of Python. Strength of Python 1. Simple to understand Python is quite easy to learn and it doesn't have any intricate syntax and principles as followed with a different language. You're able to find out Python very easily in the event that you don't have some coding experience. It's possible to say it's extremely user-friendly. 2. Free to use Python is free to use and accessible to get from its own official site. You may download Python by clicking the link provided here, Download Python. The source code of Python can be obtained for the general public under GPL, General Purpose License, from which you're able to download it, change it, exploit it, spread it. You're entirely free to do anything you would like to do using Python. 3. Mobile Portability is your primary strength of Python. User may run Python apps on several different platforms. Suppose you wrote an app in Windows and you would like to run this app on Linux or Mac running system, you can readily run your apps on Windows, Mac, Linux, Raspberry Pi, etc. You'll be able to state Python is a platform-independent programming language. 
4. Interpreted. Python is translated language, so it doesn't call for any sort of compiler to conduct the app. Python transforms its code to bytecode that gives immediate results. Python is translated signifies that the code is executed line by line that makes it simpler to debug. 5. Extensible This is a really important strength of Python. To begin with, know the difference of extensible in Python, which it's developed in a means which lets the inclusion of new capacities and performance. It will allow you to port Python with libraries written in different languages, mostly C or C++. However, with C for a bridge, you are able to predict different languages also that offer C ports. 6. Extensive Libraries Once you put in Python, it has a high number of libraries that may be utilized for a particular function. You're able to download extra libraries in accordance with your requirement or job requirements. With the support of these libraries, so you do not need to compose the comprehensive code, just apply these libraries and occupation performed using a few directions. Python offers libraries for internet browsers, picture manipulation, databases, email, and also for a number of different functions. 7. Embeddable Among the best features of Python is it is also embeddable. As an instance, you may embed YouTube video code to your HTML code. In the same way, it's possible to embed Python code from another programming language such as C++. With this attribute, Python provides you the capability to incorporate its code just like a script on your code in another language. 8. Object-Oriented Python could be applied as an object-oriented language where information structure and functions have been combined in one unit. Python supports both genders and procedure-oriented strategy from the evolution. The object-oriented approach addresses the interaction between the items on the opposite hand procedure-oriented strategy deals with purposes only. 9. GUI Programming Python provides lots of options to create a graphical user interface, GUI. Python delivered using a toolkit called Tkinter that's widely employed for GUI progress. By utilizing Python using Tkinter, you're able to make GUI applications very quickly and simple. 10. Database Connectivity Python supports each of the document necessary for the maturation of different projects. Developers can select the very best suitable database to get their own projects. A few examples of database that's encouraged by Python include MySQL, PostgreSQL, Microsoft SQL, Server, Informix, Interbase, Oracle, and so forth. Weaknesses of Python Each language has its limitations. Developers must understand these before beginning any new job. We've clarified all of the excellent things offered in Python. Now the time will be to go over the flaws of Python. 1. Speed Python is translated and implement code line by line that keeps it slower when compared with C++. If rate isn't the significant concern from the job, then you're advised to utilize Python. 2. Bad for mobile development Python is the top terminology for server-side programming. 
However, as soon as we speak with respect to cellular development, Python isn't too great. Here is the significant reason you'll seldom find mobile applications developed with Python. 3. Performance Consumption Python has a very elastic structure for information. In case you've got a memory limit on your endeavor, then Python might not be a fantastic idea to utilize. Performance intake is, on the other hand. 4. Database Access Layer Issues Python has problems with database access layers that limits it to utilize in a significant business. 5. Runtime Errors Python can provide you operate time errors that cause disappointment in the ending. Python is dynamically typed language, and also you also do not have to mention information type in applications that might wind up with runtime errors. Benefits and pitfalls of Python, the way it's controlling programming world. Python advantages and disadvantages along with disadvantages of Python. Let's first talk about what benefits Python supplies to its customers. However, before I trust you are conscious of what attributes Python supplies us. Otherwise, first be familiar with all the vital characteristics of Python. Following that, it's going to be simpler that you understand the benefits and pitfalls of Python. Benefits of Python Let us find out how Python dominates above other additional languages. 1. Broad Cabinets Python downloads using a comprehensive library, and it include code for a variety of functions such as regular expressions, documentation generation, unit testing, browsers, threading, databases, CGI, email, picture manipulation, and much more. Thus, we do not need to write the entire code for this manually. 2. Extensible As we've seen previously, Python could be extended to other languages. You're able to write a few of the code in languages, such as C++, or even C. It comes in useful, particularly in jobs. 3. Embeddable Free to extensibility, Python will be embeddable also. You're able to place your own Python code into your source code of another language, such as C++. This allows us add scripting capabilities to our code from another language. 4. Improved Productivity The language ease and extensive libraries render developers more effective than languages such as Java and also C++ do. Additionally, the simple fact you have to compose less and get more stuff done. 5. IoT Opportunities Since Python creates the cornerstone of new platforms such as Raspberry Pi, it locates that the near future bright for your web of things. This can be a means to join the language together with the true world. 6. Straightforward and Simple When dealing with Java, you might have to create a course to publish Hello World. However, in Python, only a print statement is going to do. It's also rather simple to learn, comprehend, and also code. This is the reason if folks pick up Python, they have difficulty adjusting to additional, more rigorous languages such as Java. 7. Readable because it isn't such a verbose vocabulary, studying Python is similar to studying English. This is why it is really simple to learn, comprehend, and code. Additionally, it doesn't require curly braces to specify cubes, and indentation is required. 
This further assists the readability of this code. 8. Object Oriented This language supports both procedural and object oriented programming paradigms. While serves help people with code reusability, objects and classes lets model the actual world. A course permits the encapsulation of data and functions to a single. 9. Free and open source. Like we mentioned before, Python is publicly offered. However, not only are you able to download Python free of charge, but you could also download its source code but make modifications on it, and also distribute it. It downloads using a broad assortment of libraries that will aid you with your endeavors. 10. Mobile If you code your job in a speech such as C++, you might want to generate some alterations to it should you like to run it on a different stage. Nonetheless, it's not exactly the same using Python. Here, you have to code just after, and you may run it everywhere. This can be named Write Once, Run Anywhere, Wara. But you have to be cautious enough to not incorporate some system-dependent capabilities. 11. Interpreted Last, we'll state that it's an interpreted language. As announcements are executed one by one, debugging is simpler than previously languages. Any doubts until today in the benefits of Python? Mention in the remarks section. Benefits of Python on other languages. 1. Less coding. Almost all the tasks performed in Python requires less coding if the exact same task is completed in different languages. Python also offers a wonderful standard library service, and that means you don't need to hunt for any third-party libraries to get your task done. That's actually the reason that lots of men and women propose learning Python to novices. 2. Cheap Python is free, so people, small businesses, or large organizations can leverage the free, accessible tools to construct programs. Python is very popular and widely used. Therefore, it provides you greater community service. 3. Python is for everybody. Python code could run on any device, if it's Linux, Macs, or Windows. Developers will need to learn unique languages for various tasks, but using Python, you may professionally build web programs, play data analysis and machine learning, and automate items, do internet scratching, and build games and strong visualization. It's an all-rounder programming language. Benefits of Python Thus far, we've noticed why Python is a fantastic selection for your undertaking. But should you choose it, then you ought to know about its effects, too. Let us see the drawbacks of picking Python over the following language. 1. Speed Limitations We've noticed that Python code has been implemented by line, but because Python is translated, often it leads to slow implementation. This, nevertheless, is not an issue unless rate is a focus for your undertaking. To put it differently, unless large speed is a necessity, the advantages provided by Python are sufficient to distract us by its rate limits. 2 terrible in mobile computing and browsers. While it functions as a superb server-side speech, Python is rarely seen about the client side. Apart from that, it's scarcely ever utilized to execute smartphone-based software. One such program is named Carbon Nell. The reason it's not so famous regardless of the presence of Python is it isn't that stable. 3. Design Limits As everyone probably knows, Python is dynamically typed. This means you don't have to declare the kind of factor whilst composing the code. It utilizes duck typing. But wait, what's that? Well, 
It merely means that when it looks like a duck, then it has to be a duck. Though this is simple on the developers during communicating, it may raise runtime mistakes. 4. Underdeveloped Database Access Layers In comparison to much more widely used technologies such as JDBC, Java Database Connectivity, and ODBC, Open Database Connectivity, Python's database entry layers are a little underdeveloped. As a result, it is not as often implemented in enormous businesses. 5. Straightforward No, we're not kidding. Python's simplicity may really be a issue. This was about the benefits and pitfalls of all Python programming language. This has been Learn Python. Get started now with our beginner's guide to coding, programming, and understanding artificial intelligence in the fastest growing machine learning language. Written by Anthony Adams, narrated by Russell Newton. Copyright 2020 by Anthony Adams. Production copyright by Anthony Adams. Deep Learning, a comprehensive guide to Python coding and programming machine learning and neural networks for data analysis. Written by Anthony Adams, narrated by Russell Newton. Chapter 1, Deep Learning. What is Deep Learning? Deep Learning is a subset of AI and machine learning that uses multi-layered artificial neural networks to deliver state-of-the-art accuracy in tasks such as object detection, speech recognition, language translation, and others. Deep learning differs from traditional machine learning techniques in that they can automatically learn representations from data such as images, video, or text without introducing hand-coded rules or human domain knowledge. Their highly flexible architectures can learn directly from raw data and can increase their predictive accuracy when provided with more data. Deep Learning Applications 1. Google DeepMinds AlphaGo 2. Self-Driving Car Robot Car 3. Voice Assistant Technology Virtual Assistant. How Deep Learning Gets Better Results Deep Learning uses layers of neural network algorithms to decipher higher-level information at other layers based on raw input data. For example, in an image recognition application, one layer could identify features such as sharp edges or contrasts in light, while another could identify how different distinct shapes appear. Further, a third layer could decipher what the image is showing. This is all achieved by learning the different ways information from previous layers are pieced together to form distinguishable objects. Neural network algorithms are designed to recognize data patterns based on an early understanding of how the human brain functions. Neural networks can help cluster points within a large sample of data based on the similarities of its features, classify data based on labels from previous data, and extract distinct features from data. The numerical patterns these networks recognize are stored in vectors that depict real-world inputs. Deep neural networks can be thought of as components of larger machine learning applications involving Algorithms for Reinforcement Learning, Classification, and Regression. Deep Learning uses self-taught learning and algorithm constructs with many hidden layers, big data, and powerful computational resources. The algorithmic framework is called the neural network, while the hidden layers in the network give it the moniker of Deep Learning. The Google Brain Team project and deep learning software like TensorFlow 
have given further traction to the development of deep learning techniques. Such techniques are based on mathematical functions and parameters for achieving the desired output. Deep Learning Architecture Deep learning architecture is applied to social network filtering, fraud detection, image and speech recognition, audio recognition, computer vision, medical image processing, bioinformatics, customer relationship management, and many more fields. Deep learning models are everywhere, and the teams capable of training neural networks to deliver impressive results are among the most sought-after professionals today. Big Data Analytics as a field has slowly evolved to include deep learning expertise as not only a valuable addition, but also a core and necessary skill set. The Artificial Neural Network AN. The concept of deep learning is modeled on behavioral patterns in the layers of neurons in the neocortex of the human brain. Generally, the more layers that exist, the deeper the model is, and the higher the performance. A neural network is a composition of perceptrons that are connected in different ways and that operate on different activation functions. A perceptron is an algorithm used in supervised learning of binary classifiers. A binary classifier is a function that decides whether an input, represented as a vector of numbers, belongs in one of two classes. A network of perceptrons is called a multilayer perceptron, which is also referred to as an artificial neural network, AN. The deep learning architecture used today is primarily based on ANs that utilize multiple layers of nonlinear processing for feature extraction and transformation. Deep Learning Algorithms While deep learning algorithms feature self-learning representations, they depend upon ANDs that mirror the way the brain computes information. During the training process, algorithms also use unknown elements in the input distribution to extract features, group objects, and discover useful data patterns. Much like training machines for self-learning, this occurs at multiple levels using the algorithms to build the models. Deep learning models make use of several algorithms. While no one network is considered perfect, some algorithms are better suited to perform specific tasks. To choose the right ones, it's good to gain a solid understanding of all primary algorithms. Here are some important ones used in deep learning architectures. One. Multilayer Perceptron Neural Network, MLPNN. What it is? The multilayer perceptron serves as a solid introduction to deep learning. It uses a feed forward supervised learning algorithm with up to two hidden layers to generate a set of outputs from a given set of inputs. As the name suggests, it is composed of more than one perceptron. How it works? The network connects multiple layers of neurons in a directed graph so that the signal passes through the nodes in one direction. The output vector is computed, given the inputs and a random selection of weights in the feedforward computational flow. The model is trained to learn the correlation or dependencies between the input and output from a training data set. The error quality between what should be the output for a given input is computed, and training involves tuning the weights and biases to reduce error at the output layer. The process is repeated for hidden layers going backward. Backpropagation is used to make the weight and bias adjustments relative to the error. The error itself can be measured in a variety of ways, including by root mean squared error. RMSE. Benefits MLPNNs can classify non-linearly separable data points, 
solve complex problems involving several parameters, and handle data sets with a large number of features, especially nonlinear ones. Use Cases MLPNN is used to solve problems that require supervised learning and parallel distributed processing, as in the following instances. Image verification and reconstruction. Speech recognition. Machine translation. Data classification. E-commerce, where many parameters are involved. 2. Backpropagation What it is The backpropagation algorithm is the foundation of neural network training. The supervised learning algorithm computes a gradient descent with the weights updated backward from output toward input, or backpropagation. How it works Initially, a neural network consists of weights and biases that are poorly calibrated to read data. A neural network's interpretation of data and the physical world is done through the values of its weights and biases. Therefore, a poorly calibrated neural network implies a poor model. Whatever errors exist at the final prediction layer are sent back through the network to adjust the weights and biases so that future predictions have lower error values. The algorithm calculates each neuron's error contribution using a technique called the delta rule, or gradient descent optimization. The weight of neurons is adjusted to reduce the error at the output layer. Gradient descent implies a rate of change of a target marked as y for change in a parameter marked as x. In this problem, y would be the error produced in the neural network prediction, and x would represent various parameters in the data. Because there's more than one parameter, partial derivatives are used for each parameter. Also, because the layers of neural networks operate sequentially, finding the derivatives at each layer establishes a relation of the change of error at each layer for parameters in comparison to its previous and next layers. This is similar to the chain rule of derivatives in calculus. Benefits Backpropagation lets developers know how the points of error contribute to weights and can be trained so that a network can map while simultaneously adjusting all weights. It works well in error-prone projects and can be used to train deep neural networks. Use cases Backpropagation can be used in image and speech recognition to improve the accuracy of predictions in data mining and machine learning, and in projects where derivatives must be calculated quickly. 3. Convolutional Neural Network What it is? The Convolutional Neural Network, CNN, is a multi-layer, feed-forward neural network that uses perceptrons for supervised learning and to analyze data. It's used mainly with visual data, such as image classification. The massive advancements in deep learning are due in part to an exciting application of CNNs in a competition held in 2012. The success of a deep convolutional architecture called AlexNet, which was the basis for the ImageNet large-scale visual recognition competition, ILSVRC, was the primary reason for significantly accelerated research in the field of deep learning over the past several years. However, CNNs are not limited to image recognition. They've been applied directly to text analytics and can be applied to sound when it is represented visually as a spectrogram and graph data using graph convolutional networks. How it works? CNN architecture is different from other neural networks. To better understand this distinction, consider images as data. Typically with computer vision, images are treated 
as two-dimensional matrices of numbers. However, in CNNs, an image is treated as a tensor, or matrix of numbers, with additional dimensions. The image below helps illustrate this concept. Tensors are formed by nesting arrays within arrays, with nesting potentially occurring infinitely. Images, in particular, are treated as four-dimensional tensors. If a scalar is a zero-dimensional object, a vector is one-dimensional, a matrix or collection of vectors is two-dimensional, and a stack of such matrices, pictured as a cube, is three-dimensional. Then, a four-dimensional tensor consists of multiple such three-dimensional objects, where each element in the cube has a stack of feature maps attached to it. The hidden layers in CNNs contain convolutional layers, normalization layers, pooling layers, and a fully connected layer. It takes an input image, assigns significant weights and biases to various aspects of the image to enable differentiation, and applies filters with minimum preprocessing. While the first convolution layer captures low-level features, the next layers extract higher-level features, creating a network with a sophisticated analysis of the images in the data set. Benefits The CNN algorithm is efficient at recognition and highly adaptable. It's also easy to train because there are fewer training parameters and is scalable when coupled with backpropagation. Use Cases The CNN algorithm can be used with image processing, recognition and classification, video recognition, natural language processing tasks, pattern recognition, recommendation engines, medical image analysis. 4. Recurrent Neural Network, RNN What it is? The Recurrent Neural Network, RNN, is designed to recognize a data set's sequential attribute and use patterns to predict the next likely scenario. It's a powerful approach to processing sequential data like sound, time series data, and written natural language. The Stochastic Gradient Descent, SGD, is used to train the network along with a backpropagation algorithm. How it works? Unlike traditional networks, where inputs and outputs are independent of each other, in an RNN, the hidden layer preserves sequential information from previous steps. This means the output from an earlier step is fed as the input to a current step, using the same weights and bias repeatedly for prediction purposes. The layers are then joined to create a single recurrent layer. These feedback loops process sequential data, allowing information to persist, as in memory, and inform the final output. If an RNN is tasked with guessing the next layer of a previous input letter, it can be trained by feeding letters of known words letter by letter, so it determines relevant patterns. RNNs are layered to process information in two directions, feed forward, to process data from initial input to final output, and feedback loops using backpropagation, looping information back into the network. RNNs are different from feed-forward networks because feed-forward networks accept one input and give one output at a time. This one-to-one -one constraint does not exist with RNNs, which can refer to previous examples to form predictions based on their built-in memory. Benefits CNNs can learn the context in sequence prediction problems, as well as process sequential and temporal data. They also can be used in a range of applications. Use Cases CNNs are useful for sentiment classification, image captioning, speech recognition, natural language processing, machine translation, 
search prediction video classification. 5. Long Short Term Memory LSTM What it is? The Long Short Term Memory LSTM algorithm is a type of RNN that allows deep recurrent networks to be trained without making the gradients that update weights become unstable. Patterns can be stored in memory for more extended periods with the ability to selective re recall or delete data. How it works? It uses backpropagation, but is trained to learn sequence data using memory blocks connected into layers instead of neurons. As the information is processed through the layers, the architecture can add, remove, or modify data as needed. Benefits This algorithm is best suited for classification and prediction based on time series data, offering sophisticated results for diverse problems. These enable data scientists to create deep models using large stacked networks and handle complex sequence problems in machine learning more efficiently. Use Cases LSTM is ideal for captioning of images and videos, language translation and modeling, sentiment analysis, stock market predictions. 6. Generative Adversarial Network GAN what it is? The Generative Adversarial Network, GAN, is a robust algorithm used for unsupervised learning. Given a training set, the network automatically discovers and learns regularities and patterns in input data, so it can self-learn to generate new data. It can essentially mimic any data set with small variations. GANs are deep neural net architectures comprised of two nets, pitting one against the other, thus the term adversarial. How it works. The GAN uses two submodels, generator and discriminator. The generator creates new examples of data, while the discriminator distinguishes between real domain data and fake generated samples. They run repeatedly, making them more and more robust with each repetition. Generative and discriminative algorithms differ in a few fundamental ways. Discriminative algorithms try to separate a data set into distinct classes based on similarities in their features, like classifying emails into spam and not spam. In terms of conditional probability, you could say the likelihood of a data point being class YI given features XI minus PY taken as X. Generative algorithms try to determine the likelihood of a set of features in a data point that is already classified. For example, an email classified as not spam would be analyzed by the generative algorithm to find out how likely the actual words present in the email are to be present in a non-spam type message. In terms of conditional probability, the probability of features XI existing for a data point already classified as yi minus p of x taken as y, zero. Benefits GANs can capture and copy variations within a given data set, generate images from a given data set of images, create high-quality data, and manipulate data. Use Cases GANs are useful for cybersecurity health diagnostics, natural language processing, speech processing. 7. Restricted Boltzmann Machine, RBM Feature Mapping of the RBM Model What it is? The Restricted Boltzmann Machine, RBM, is a probabilistic graphical model or a type of stochastic neural network. It is a robust architecture for collaborative filtering and performs a binary factor analysis with restricted communication
between layers for efficient learning. It's worth noting that RBMs have more or less been replaced by GANs or variational autoencoders by most machine learning practitioners. How it works? The network has one layer of visible units, one layer of hidden units, and a bias unit connected to all visible and hidden units. Hidden units are independent as a way to give unbiased samples. The neurons in the bipartite graph have a symmetric connection. However, there are no connections between the nodes within a group. Benefits RBM offers the advantages of energy-based learning, like design flexibility, is useful for both probabilistic and non-probabilistic statistical models, restricts connectivity for easy learning, and is used with classification, regression, and generative models. Use Cases RBM is useful for recommender systems, filtering, feature learning, Dimensionality Reduction, Topic Modeling. 8. Deep Belief Network, DBN What it is? A Deep Belief Network, DBN, is an unsupervised, probabilistic deep learning algorithm where the network has a generative learning model. It's a mix of directed and undirected graphical networks with the top layer an undirected RBM and the lower layers directed downward. This enables a pre-training stage and a feed-forward network for the fine-tuning stage. How it works? The DBN has multiple layers of hidden units which are connected, and the learning algorithm is greedy from the stacked RBMs, meaning there is one layer at a time, sequentially, from the bottom observed layer. Benefits DBNs offer energy-based learning and can benefit from unlabeled data. Use cases DBNs are useful for image and face recognition, video sequence recognition, motion capture data, classifying high-resolution satellite image data, Why is deep learning important? Smartphones and chips are the essence of a connected network. The relevance of images, videos, and audio in social media, streaming analytics, and web searches has created a new ecosystem where these features are being monetized. The computation of such complex features requires knowledge of deep learning networks, as well as the ability to develop complex hierarchies of concepts using sophisticated algorithms. Excellent working knowledge of deep learning techniques, types of deep learning, and deep learning applications can help users execute it for various purposes. In the case of unsupervised data, machine learning may not always be feasible because manual labeling of data is expensive and time-consuming. Deep learning networks are designed to help overcome these issues. Python Relationship with Deep Learning Deep Structured Learning, or Hierarchical Learning, or Deep Learning in short, is part of the family of machine learning methods which are themselves a subset of the broader field of artificial intelligence. Deep Learning is a class of machine learning algorithms that use several layers of nonlinear processing units for feature extraction and transformation. Each successive layer uses the output from the previous layer as input. Deep neural networks, deep belief networks, and recurrent neural networks have been applied to fields such as computer vision, speech recognition, natural language processing, audio recognition, social network filtering, machine translation, and bioinformatics, where they produce results comparable to and, in some cases, better than human experts have. Deep learning algorithms and networks are based on the unsupervised learning of multiple levels of features, 
are representations of the data. Higher level features are derived from lower level features to form a hierarchical representation. Use some form of gradient descent for training. We have to install the following software for making deep learning algorithms. Python 2.7 plus, SciPy with NumPy, Matplotlib, Theano, Keras, TensorFlow. It is strongly recommended that Python, NumPy, SciPy, and Matplotlib are installed through the Anaconda distribution. It comes with all of those packages. We need to ensure that the different types of software are installed properly. Let's go to our command line program and type in the following command. Python. Python 3.6.3. .3, Anaconda Custom. 32-bit. Default. October 13, 2017. 14, 21, 34. GCC 7.2.0 on Linux. Next, we can import the required libraries and print their versions. Import NumPy. Print NumPy version. Output 1.14.2 Installation of Theano, TensorFlow, and Keras Before we begin with installation of the packages, Theano, TensorFlow, and Keras, we need to confirm if the pip is installed. The package management system in Anaconda is called the pip. To confirm the installation of pip, type the following in the command line. Once the installation of pip is confirmed, we can install TensorFlow and Keras by executing the following command. pip install Theano. pip install TensorFlow. pip install Keras. Confirm the installation of Theano by executing the following line of code. Python-c import Theano. Print Theano version. Output 1.0.1 Confirm the installation of TensorFlow by executing the following line of code. Python-c import TensorFlow print TensorFlow version output 1.70 Confirm the installation of Keras by executing the following line of code. Python-c import Keras print Keras version using TensorFlow backend output 2.1.5 Artificial intelligence AI is any code, algorithm or technique that enables a computer to mimic human cognitive behavior or intelligence. Machine learning ML is a subset of AI that uses statistical methods to enable machines to learn and improve with experience. Deep learning is a subset of machine learning, which makes the computation of multi-layer neural networks feasible. Machine learning is seen as shallow learning, while deep learning is seen as hierarchical learning with abstraction. Machine learning deals with a wide range of concepts. The concepts are listed below. Supervised, unsupervised, Reinforcement learning, linear regression, cost functions, overfitting, underfitting, hyperparameter, etc. In supervised learning, we learn to predict values from labeled data. One ML technique that helps here is classification, where target values are discrete values, for example, cats and dogs. Another technique in machine learning that could come of help is regression. Regression works on the target values. The target values are continuous values. For example, the stock market data can be analyzed using regression. In unsupervised learning, we make inferences from the input data that is not labeled or structured. If we have a million medical records and we have to make sense of it, find the underlying structure, outliers, or detect anomalies, we use clustering technique to divide data into broad clusters. Data sets are divided into training sets, testing sets, validation sets, and so on. A breakthrough in 2012 
brought the concept of deep learning into prominence. An algorithm classified 1 million images into 1,000 categories successfully using two GPUs and latest technologies like big data. Relating Deep Learning and Traditional Machine Learning One of the major challenges encountered in traditional machine learning models is a process called feature extraction. The programmer needs to be specific and tell the computer the features to be looked out for. These features will help in making decisions. Entering raw data into the algorithm rarely works, so feature extraction is a critical part of the traditional machine learning workflow. This places a huge responsibility on the programmer, and the algorithm's efficiency relies heavily on how inventive the programmer is. For complex problems such as object recognition or handwriting recognition, this is a huge issue. Deep learning, with the ability to learn multiple layers of representation, is one of the few methods that has helped us with automatic feature extraction. The lower layers can be assumed to be performing automatic feature extraction, requiring little or no guidance from the programmer. The artificial neural network, or just neural network for short, is not a new idea. It's been around for about 80 years. It was not until 2011 when deep neural networks became popular with the use of new techniques, huge dataset availability, and powerful computers. The circles are neurons or nodes with their functions on the data and the lines or edges connecting them are the weights or information being passed along. Each column is a layer. The first layer of your data is the input layer. Then, all the layers between the input layer and the output layer are the hidden layers. If you have one or a few hidden layers, then you have a shallow neural network. If you have many hidden layers, then you have a deep neural network. In this model, you have input data, you weight it, and pass it through the function in the neuron that is called threshold function or activation function. Basically, it's the sum of all the values after comparing it with a certain value. If you fire a signal, then the result is one out or nothing is fired out, then zero. That is then weighted and passed along to the next neuron, and the same sort of function is run. We can have a sigmoid S-shaped function as the activation function. As for the weights, they're just random to start, and they're unique per input into the node or neuron. In a typical feed-forward, the most basic type of neural network, you have your information pass straight through the network you created, and you compare the output to what you hoped the output would have been using your sample data. From here, you need to adjust the weights to help you get your output to match your desired output. The act of sending data straight through a neural network is called a feedforward neural network. Our data goes from input to the layers in order, then to the output. When we go backwards and begin adjusting weights to minimize loss or cost, this is called backpropagation. This is an optimization problem. With the neural network, in real practice, we have to deal with hundreds of thousands of variables, or millions, or more. The first solution was to use stochastic gradient descent as optimization method. Now, there are options like Adagrad, Atom Optimizer, and so on. Either way, this is a massive computational operation. That is why neural networks were mostly left on the shelf for over half a century. It was only very recently that we even had the power and architecture in our machines to even consider doing these operations and the properly sized data sets to match. For simple classification tasks, the neural network is relatively close in performance to other simple algorithms like k-nearest neighbors. The real utility of neural networks is realized when we have much larger data, 
and much more complex questions, both of which outperform other machine learning models. A deep neural network, DNN, is an AN with multiple hidden layers between the input and output layers. Similar to shallow ANs, DNNs can model complex, nonlinear relationships. The main purpose of a neural network is to receive a set of inputs, perform progressively complex calculations on them, and give output to solve real-world problems like classification. We restrict ourselves to feed-forward neural networks. We have an input, an output, and a flow of sequential data in a deep network. Neural networks are widely used in supervised learning and reinforcement learning problems. These networks are based on a set of layers connected to each other. In deep learning, the number of hidden layers, mostly nonlinear, can be large, say about a thousand layers. DL models produce much better results than normal ML networks. We mostly use the gradient descent method for optimizing the network and minimizing the loss function. We can use the ImageNet, a repository of millions of digital images to classify a dataset into categories like cats and dogs. DLNets are increasingly used for dynamic images apart from static ones and for time series and text analysis. Training the datasets forms an important part of deep learning models. In addition, backpropagation is the main algorithm in training DL models. DL deals with large training neural networks with complex input-output transformations. One example of DL is the mapping of a photo to the name of the person in photo as they do on social networks, and describing a picture with a phrase is another recent application of DL. Neural networks are functions that have inputs like x1, x2, x3 that are transformed to outputs like z1, z2, z3, and so on in two shallow networks or several intermediate operations, also called layers, deep networks. The weights and biases change from layer to layer. W and V are the weights or synapses of layers of the neural networks. The best use case of deep learning is the supervised learning problem. Here, we have large set of data inputs with a desired set of outputs. Here, we apply backpropagation algorithm to get correct output prediction. The most basic data set of deep learning is the MNIST, a data set of handwritten digits. We can train deep a convolutional neural network with Keras to classify images of handwritten digits in this data set. The firing or activation of a neural net classifier produces a score. For example, to classify patients as sick and healthy, we consider parameters such as height, weight, and body temperature blood pressure, etc. A high score means patient is sick, and a low score means he is healthy. Each node in output and hidden layers has its own classifiers. The input layer takes inputs and passes on its scores to the next hidden layer for further activation, and this goes on till the output is reached. This progress from input to output, from left to right in the forward direction, is called forward propagation. Credit assignment path, CAP in a neural network, is the series of transformations starting from the input to the output. CAPs are elaborate, probable causal connections between the input and the output. CAP depth for a given feedforward neural network, or the CAP depth, is the number of hidden layers plus one as the output layer is included. For recurrent neural networks where a signal may propagate through a layer several times, the cap depth can be potentially limitless. Deep Nets and Shallow Nets There is no clear threshold of depth 
that divides shallow learning from deep learning. But it is mostly agreed that for deep learning, which has multiple nonlinear layers, cap must be greater than 2. Basic node in a neural net is a perception mimicking a neuron in a biological neural network. Then we have multi-layered perception, or MLP. Each set of inputs is modified by a set of weights and biases. Each edge has a unique weight, and each node has a unique bias. The prediction accuracy of a neural net depends on its weights and biases. The process of improving the accuracy of neural network is called trading. The output from a forward prop net is compared to that value, which is known to be correct. The cost function, or the loss function, is the difference between the generated output and the actual output. The point of training is to make the cost of training as small as possible across millions of training examples. To do this, the network tweaks the weights and biases until the prediction matches the correct output. Once trained well, a neural net has the potential to make an accurate prediction every time. When the pattern gets complex and you want your computer to recognize them, you have to go for neural networks. In such complex pattern scenarios, neural network outperforms all other competing algorithms. There are now GPUs that can train them faster than ever before. Deep neural networks are already revolutionizing the field of AI. Computers have proved to be good at performing repetitive calculations and following detailed instructions, but have been not so good at recognizing complex patterns. If there is the problem of recognition of simple patterns, a support vector machine, SVM, or a logistic regression classifier can do the job well. But as the complexity of pattern increases, there's no way but to go for deep neural networks. Therefore, for complex patterns like a human face, shallow neural networks fail and have no alternative but to go for deep neural networks with more layers. The deep nets are able to do their job by breaking down the complex patterns into simpler ones. For example, human face, a deep net would use edges to detect parts like lips, nose, eyes, ears, and so on, and then recombine these together to form a human face. The accuracy of correct prediction has become so accurate that recently, at a Google Pattern Recognition Challenge, a deep net beat a human. The idea of a web of layered perceptrons has been around for some time. In this area, deep nets mimic the human brain. But one downside to this is that they take long time to train, a hardware constraint. However, recent high-performance GPUs have been able to train such deep nets under a week. While fast CPUs could have taken weeks or perhaps months to do the same. Choosing a deep net How to choose a deep net? We have to decide if we're building a classifier or if we're trying to find patterns in the data and if we're going to use unsupervised learning. To extract patterns from a set of unlabeled data, we use a restricted Boltzmann machine or an autoencoder. Consider the following points while choosing a deep net. For text processing, sentiment analysis, parsing, and name entity recognition, we use a recurrent net or recursive neural tensor network, or RNTN. For any language model that operates at character level, we use the recurrent net. For image recognition, we use Deep Belief Network DBN, or Convolutional Network. For object recognition, we use a RNTN, or Convolutional Network. For speech recognition, we use recurrent net. In general, Deep Belief Networks and multi-layer perceptrons with rectified linear units or RELU, 
are both good choices for classification. For time series analysis, it's always recommended to use recurrent net. Neural nets have been around for more than 50 years, but only now they've risen into prominence. The reason is that they're hard to train. When we try to train them with a method called backpropagation, we run into a problem called vanishing or exploding gradients. When that happens, training takes a longer time and accuracy takes a back seat. When training a data set, we are constantly calculating the cost function, which is the difference between predicted output and the actual output from a set of labeled training data. The cost function is then minimized by adjusting the weights and bias values until the lowest value is obtained. The training process uses a gradient, which is the rate at which the cost will change with respect to change in weight or bias values. Restricted Boltzmann Networks, or autoencoders, RBNs. In 2006, a breakthrough was achieved in tackling the issue of vanishing gradients. Jeff Hinton devised a novel strategy that led to the development of Restricted Boltzmann Machine, RBM, a shallow, two-layer net. The first layer is the visible layer, and the second layer is the hidden layer. Each node in the visible layer is connected to every node in the hidden layer. The network is known as restricted, as no two layers within the same layer are allowed to share a connection. Autoencoders are networks that encode input data as vectors. They create a hidden or compressed representation of the raw data. The vectors are useful in dimensionality reduction. The vector compresses the raw data into smaller number of essential dimensions. Autoencoders are paired with decoders, which allows the reconstruction of input data based on its hidden representation. RBM is the mathematical equivalent of a two-way translator. A forward pass takes inputs and translates them into a set of numbers that encodes the inputs. A backward pass, meanwhile, takes this set of numbers and translates them back into reconstructed inputs. A well-trained net performs backprop with a high degree of accuracy. In either steps, the weights and the biases have a critical role. They help the RBM in decoding the interrelationships between the inputs and in deciding which inputs are essential in detecting patterns. Through forward and backward passes, the RBM is trained to reconstruct the input with different weights and biases until the input and their constructed are as close as possible. An interesting aspect of RBM is that data need not be labeled. This turns out to be very important for real-world data sets like photos, videos, voices, and sensor data, all of which tend to be unlabeled. Instead of manually labeling data by humans, RBM automatically sorts through data. By properly adjusting the weights and biases, an RBM is able to extract important features and reconstruct the input. RBM is a part of family of feature extractor neural nets, which are designed to recognize inherent patterns in data. They're also called autoencoders because they have to encode their own structure. Deep Belief Networks Deep Belief Networks, DBNs, are formed by combining RBMs and introducing a clever training method. We have a new model that finally solves the problem of vanishing gradient. Jeff Hinton invented the RBMs and also Deep Belief Nets as alternative to backpropagation. A DBN is similar in structure to a MLP, multi-layer perceptron, but very different when it comes to training. It's the training that enables DBNs to outperform their shallow counterparts. A DBN can be visualized as a stack of RBMs where the hidden layer of one RBM 
is the visible layer of the RBM above it. The first RBM is trained to reconstruct its input as accurately as possible. The hidden layer of the first RBM is taken as the visible layer of the second RBM, and the second RBM is trained using the outputs from the first RBM. This process is iterated till every layer in the network is trained. In a DBN, each RBM learns the entire input. A DBN works globally by fine-tuning the entire input in succession as the model slowly improves, like a camera lens slowly focusing a picture. A stack of RBMs outperforms a single RBM as a multilayer perceptron MLP outperforms a single perceptron. At this stage, the RBMs have detected inherent patterns in the data, but without any names or label. To finish training of the DBN, we have to introduce labels to the patterns and fine-tune the net with supervised learning. We need a very small set of labeled samples so that the features and patterns can be associated with the name. This small labeled set of data is used for training. This set of labeled data can be very small when compared to the original data set. The weights and biases are altered slightly, resulting in a small change in the net's perception of the patterns and often a small increase in the total accuracy. The training can also be completed in a reasonable amount of time by using GPUs giving very accurate results as compared to shallow nets, and we see a solution to vanishing gradient problem too. Generative Adversarial Networks, GANs Generative adversarial networks are deep neural nets comprised two nets, pitted one against the other, thus the adversarial name. GANs were introduced in a paper published by researchers at the University of Montreal in 2014. Facebook's AI expert Jan Lecun, referring to GANs, called adversarial training the most interesting idea in the last 10 years in ML. GAN's potential is huge, as the network scan learn to mimic any distribution of data. GANs can be taught to create parallel worlds strikingly similar to our own in any domain, images, music, speech, prose. They are robot artists, in a way, and their output is quite impressive. In a GAN, one neural network, known as the generator, generates new data instances, while the other, the discriminator, evaluates them for authenticity. Let us say we're trying to generate handwritten numerals like those found in the MNIST dataset, which is taken from the real world. The work of the discriminator, when shown an instance from the true MNIST dataset, is to recognize them as authentic. Now, consider the following steps of the GAN. The generator network takes input in the form of random numbers and returns an image. This generated image is given as input to the discriminator network, along with a stream of images taken from the actual dataset. The discriminator takes in both real and fake images and returns probabilities, a number between 0 and 1, with 1 representing a prediction of authenticity and 0 representing fake. So you have a double feedback loop. The discriminator is in a feedback loop with the ground truth of the images, which we know. The generator is in a feedback loop with the discriminator. Recurrent Neural Networks, RNNs RNNs are neural networks in which data can flow in any direction. These networks are used for applications such as language modeling or natural language processing, NLP. The basic concept underlying RNNs is to utilize sequential information. In a normal neural network, it's assumed that all inputs and outputs are independent of each other. If we want to predict the next word in a sentence, we have to know which words came before it. 
RNNs are called recurrent as they repeat the same task for every element of a sequence, with the output being based on the previous computations. RNNs thus can be said to have a memory that captures information about what's been previously calculated. In theory, RNNs can use information in very long sequences, but in reality, they can look back only a few steps. Long, short-term memory networks, LSTMs, are most commonly used RNNs. Together with the convolutional neural networks, RNNs have been used as part of a model to generate descriptions for unlabeled images. It's quite amazing how well this seems to work. Convolutional Deep Neural Networks, CNNs If we increase the number of layers in a neural network to make it deeper, it increases the complexity of the network and allows us to model functions that are more complicated. However, the number of weights and biases will exponentially increase. As a matter of fact, learning such difficult problems can become impossible for normal neural networks. This leads to a solution the convolutional neural networks. CNNs are extensively used in computer vision, have been applied also in acoustic modeling for automatic speech recognition. The idea behind convolutional neural networks is the idea of a moving filter, which passes through the image. This moving filter, or convolution, applies to a certain neighborhood of nodes, which, for example, may be pixels, where the filter applied is 0.5x the node value. Noted researcher Jan LeCun pioneered convolutional neural networks. Facebook, as facial recognition software, uses these nets. CNN have been the go-to solution for machine vision projects. There are many layers to a convolutional network. In ImageNet Challenge, a machine was able to beat a human and object recognition in 2015. In a nutshell, convolutional neural networks, CNNs, are multi-layer neural networks. The layers are sometimes up to 17 or more and assume the input data to be images. CNNs drastically reduce the number of parameters that need to be tuned, so CNNs efficiently handle the high dimensionality of raw images. Deep Learning Models or Algorithms Let's now learn about the different deep learning models or algorithms. Some of the popular models within deep learning are as follows. Convolutional neural networks, recurrent neural networks, deep belief networks, generative adversarial networks, autoencoders, and so on. The inputs and outputs are represented as vectors or tensors. For example, a neural network may have the inputs where individual pixel RGB values in an image are represented as vectors. The layers of neurons that lie between the input layer and the output layer are called hidden layers. This is where most of the work happens when the neural net tries to solve problems. Taking a closer look at the hidden layers can reveal a lot about the features the network has learned to extract from the data. Different architectures of neural networks are formed by choosing which neurons to connect to the other neurons in the next layer. Pseudocode for calculating output. Following is the pseudocode for calculating output of forward propagating neural network. Node. Array of topologically sorted nodes. An edge from A to B means A is to the left of B. If the neural network has R inputs and S outputs, then first R nodes are input nodes and last S nodes are output nodes. Incoming X, nodes connected to node X. Weight X, weights of incoming edges to X. For each neuron X from left to right, if X is less than R, do nothing. It's an input node. Inputs X equals output I for I in incoming X. Weighted sum equals dot product weights X inputs X. 
output x equals activation function weighted sum. We'll now learn how to train a neural network. We'll also learn backpropagation algorithm and backwards pass in Python deep learning. We have to find the optimal values of the weights of a neural network to get the desired output. To train a neural network, we use the iterative gradient descent method. We start initially with random initialization of the weights. After random initialization, we make predictions on some subset of the data with forward propagation process, compute the corresponding cost function C, and update each weight W by an amount proportional to DC divided by DW, i.e., the derivative of the cost functions WRT the weight. The proportionality constant is known as the learning rate. The gradients can be calculated efficiently using the back propagation algorithm. The key observation of backward propagation or backward prop is that because of the chain rule of differentiation, the gradient at each neuron in the neural network can be calculated using the gradient at the neurons. It has outgoing edges too. Hence, we calculate the gradients backwards, i.e., first calculate the gradients of the output layer, then the topmost hidden layer, followed by the preceding hidden layer, and so on, ending at the input layer. The backpropagation algorithm is implemented mostly using the idea of a computational graph, where each neuron is expanded to many nodes in the computational graph and performs a simple mathematical operation like addition, multiplication. The computational graph does not have any weights on the edges. All weights are assigned to the nodes, so the weights become their own nodes. The backward propagation algorithm is then run on the computational graph. Once the calculation is complete, only the gradients of the weight nodes are required for update. The rest of the gradients can be discarded. Gradient Descent Optimization Technique One commonly used optimization function that adjusts weights according to the error that caused is called the gradient descent. Gradient is another name for slope, and slope on an xy graph represents how two variables are related to each other. The rise over the run, the change in distance over the change in time, etc. In this case, the slope is the ratio between the network's error and a single weight, i.e., how does the error change as the weight is varied. To put it more precisely, we want to find which weight produces the least error. We want to find the weight that correctly represents the signals contained in the input data and translates them to a correct classification. As a neural network learns, it slowly adjusts many weights so that they can map signal to meaning correctly. The ratio between network error and each of these weights is a derivative, DE of DW, that calculates the extent to which a slight change in a weight causes a slight change in the error. Each weight is just one factor in a deep network that involves many transforms. The signal of the weight passes through activations and sums over several layers, so we use the chain rule of calculus to work back through the network activations and outputs. This leads us to the weight in question and its relationship to overall error. Given two variables, error and weight, are mediated by a third variable activation through which the weight is passed. We can calculate how a change in weight affects a change in error by first calculating how a change in activation affects a change in error and how a change in weight affects a change in activation. The basic idea in deep learning is nothing more than that, adjusting a model's weights in response to the error it produces until you cannot reduce the error anymore. The deep net trains slowly if the gradient value is small and fast if the value is high. Any inaccuracies in training leads to inaccurate inputs. The process of training the nets from the output back to the input is called backpropagation or backprop. We know that forward propagation starts with the input and works forward. Backprop does the reverse or opposite, calculating the gradient from right to left. Each time we calculate a gradient, 
We use all the previous gradients up to that point. Let's start at a node in the output layer. The edge uses the gradient at that node. As we go back into the hidden layers, it gets more complex. The product of two numbers between 0 and 1 gives you a smaller number. The gradient value keeps getting smaller, and as a result, backprop takes a lot of time to train and accuracy suffers. Challenges in Deep Learning Algorithms There are certain challenges for both shallow neural networks and deep neural networks, like overfitting and computation time. DNNs are affected by overfitting because of the use of added layers of abstraction which allow them to model rare dependencies in the training data. Regularization methods such as dropout, early stopping, data augmentation, transfer learning are applied during training to combat overfitting. Dropout regularization randomly omits units from the hidden layers during training, which helps in avoiding rare dependencies. DNNs take into consideration several training parameters, such as the size, i.e., the number of layers and the number of units per layer, the learning rate, and initial weights. Finding optimal parameters is not always practical due to the high cost in time and computational resources. Several hacks, such as batching, can speed up computation. The large processing power of GPUs has significantly helped the training process, as the matrix and vector computations required are well executed on the GPUs. Dropout Dropout is a popular regularization technique for neural networks. Deep neural networks are particularly prone to overfitting. Let's now see what dropout is and how it works. In the words of Jeffrey Hinton, one of the pioneers of deep learning, if you have a deep neural net and it's not overfitting, you should probably be using a bigger one and using dropout. Dropout is a technique where during each iteration of gradient descent, we drop a set of randomly selected nodes. This means that we ignore some nodes randomly as if they do not exist. Each neuron is kept with the probability of Q and dropped randomly with the probability 1 minus Q. The value Q may be different for each layer in the neural network. A value of 0 0.5 for the hidden layers and 0 for the input layer works well on a wide range of tasks. During evaluation and prediction, no dropout is used. The output of each neuron is multiplied by Q so that the input to the next layer has the same expected value. The idea behind dropout is as follows. In a neural network, without dropout regularization, neurons develop codependency amongst each other that leads to overfitting. Implementation Trick Dropout is implemented in libraries such as TensorFlow and PyTorch by keeping the output of the randomly selected neurons as zero. That is, though the neuron exists, its output is overwritten as zero. Early stopping. We train neural networks using an iterative algorithm called gradient descent. The idea behind early stopping is intuitive. We stop training when the error starts to increase. Here, by error, we mean the error measured on validation data, which is the part of training data used for tuning hyperparameters. In this case, the hyperparameter is the stop criteria. Data Augmentation The process where we increase the quantum of data we have or augment it by using existing data and applying some transformations on it. The exact transformations used depend on the task we intend to achieve. Moreover, the transformations that help the neural net depend on its architecture. For instance, in many computer vision tasks, such as object classification, 
An effective data augmentation technique is adding new data points that are cropped or translated versions of original data. When a computer accepts an image as an input, it takes in an array of pixel values. Let's say that the whole image is shifted left by 15 pixels. We apply many different shifts in different directions, resulting in an augmented data set many times the size of the original data set. Transfer Learning The process of taking a pre-trained model and fine-tuning the model with our own data set is called transfer learning. There are several ways to do this. A few ways are described below. We train the pre-trained model on a large data set. Then, we remove the last layer of the network and replace it with a new layer with random weights. We then freeze the weights of all the other layers and train the network normally. Here, freezing the layers is not changing the weights during gradient descent or optimization. The concept behind this is that the pre-trained model will act as a feature extractor, and only the last layer will be trained on the current task. Backpropagation is implemented in deep learning frameworks like TensorFlow, Torch, Theano, etc. by using computational graphs. More significantly, understanding backpropagation on computational graphs combines several different algorithms and its variations such as backprop through time and backprop with shared weights. Once everything is converted into a computational graph, they're still the same algorithm, just backpropagation on computational graphs. What is computational graph? A computational graph is defined as a directed graph where the nodes correspond to mathematical operations. Computational graphs are a way of expressing and evaluating a mathematical expression. For example, here is a simple mathematical equation, p equals x plus y. We can draw a computational graph of the above equation as follows. The above computational graph has an addition node, node with plus sign, with two input variables x and y, and one output q. Let's take another example, slightly more complex. We have the following equation, g equals x plus y times z. The above equation is represented by the following computational graph. Computational graphs and backpropagation. Computational graphs and backpropagation both are important core concepts in deep learning for training neural networks. Forward pass. Forward pass is the procedure for evaluating the value of the mathematical expression represented by computational graphs. Doing forward pass means we're passing the value from variables in forward direction from the left, input, to the right, where the output is. Let's consider an example by giving some value to all of the inputs. Suppose the following values are given to all of the inputs. x equals 1 y equals 3, z equals negative 3. By giving these values to the inputs, we can perform forward pass and get the following values for the outputs on each node. First, we use the value of x equals 1 and y equals 3 to get p equals 4. Then, we use p equals 4 and z equals negative 3 to get g equals negative 12. We go from left to right, forwards. Objectives of Backward Pass In the backward pass, our intention is to complete the gradients for each unit with respect to the final output. These gradients are essential for training the neural network using gradient descent. For example, we desire the following gradients. Desired gradients Backward Pass Backpropagation We start the backward pass by finding the derivative of the final output with respect to the final output itself. This will result in the identity derivation and the value is equal to 1.
derivative of g with respect to g equals 1. Our computational graph now looks as shown below. Next, we'll do the backward pass through the times operation. We'll calculate the gradients at p and z. Since g equals p times z, we know that dg dz equals p. dg dp equals z. We already know the values of z and p from the forward pass. Hence, we get dg dz equals p equals 4, and dg dp equals z equals negative 3. We want to calculate the gradients at x and y, dg dx, dg dy. However, we want to do this efficiently. Although x and g are only two hops away in this graph, imagine them being really far apart from each other. To calculate these values efficiently, we'll use the chain rule of differentiation. From chain rule, we have dg dx equals dg dp times dp dx dg dy equals dg dp times dp dy. But we already know the dg dp equals negative 3. dp dx and dp dy are easy since p directly depends on x and y. We have p equals x plus y, dx dp equals 1, dy dp equals 1. Hence, we get dg df equals dg dp times dp dx equals negative 3 times 1 equals negative 3. In addition, for the input y, dg dy equals dg dp times dp dy equals negative 3 times 1 equals negative 3. The main reason for doing this backwards is that when we had to calculate the gradient at x, we only used already computed values and dq dx, derivative of node output with respect to the same node's input, we used local information to compute a global value. Steps for training a neural network. Follow these steps to train a neural network. For data point x in dataset, we do forward pass with x as input and calculate the cost C as output. We do backward pass starting at C and calculate gradients for all nodes in the graph. This includes nodes that represent the neural network weights. We then update the weights by doing W equals W minus learning rate times gradients. We repeat this process until stop criteria is met. Deep learning has produced good results for a few applications such as computer vision, language translation, image captioning, audio transcription, molecular biology, speech recognition, natural language processing, self-driving cars, brain tumor detection, real-time speech translation, music composition, automatic game playing, and so on. Deep learning is the next big leap after machine learning with a more advanced implementation. Currently, it's heading towards becoming an industry standard, bringing a strong promise of being a game changer when dealing with raw, unstructured data. Deep Learning is currently one of the best solution providers for a wide range of real-world problems. Developers are building AI programs that, instead of using previously given rules, learn from examples to solve complicated tasks. With deep learning being used by many data scientists, deeper neural networks are delivering results that are ever more accurate. The idea is to develop deep neural networks by increasing the number of training layers for each network. Machine learns more about the data until it is as accurate as possible. Developers can use deep learning techniques to implement complex machine learning tasks and train AI networks to have high levels of perceptual recognition. Deep learning finds its popularity in computer vision. Here, one of the tasks achieved is image classification, where given input images are classified as cat, dog, etc., or as a class or label that best describes the image. We as humans learn how to do this task very early in our lives, 
and have these skills of quickly recognizing patterns, generalizing from prior knowledge, and adapting to different image environments. Deep Learning and Theano If we want to start coding a deep neural network, it's better we have an idea how different frameworks like Theano, TensorFlow, Keras, PyTorch, etc. work. Theano is a Python library which provides a set of functions for building deep nets that train quickly on our machine. Theano was developed at the University of Montreal, Canada, under the leadership of Yashua Bengio, a deep net pioneer. Theano lets us define and evaluate mathematical expressions with vectors and matrices, which are rectangular arrays of numbers. Technically speaking, both neural nets and input data can be represented as matrices, and all standard net operations can be redefined as matrix operations. This is important since computers can carry out matrix operations very quickly. We can process multiple matrix values in parallel, and if we build a neural net with this underlying structure, we can use a single machine with the GPU to train enormous nets in a reasonable time window. However, if we use Theano, we have to build the deep net from ground up. The library does not provide complete functionality for creating a specific type of deep net. Instead, we have to code every aspect of the deep net, like the model, the layers, the activation, the training method, and any special methods to stop overfitting. The good news, however, is that Theano allows the building our implementation over a top of vectorized functions, providing us with a highly optimized solution. There are many other libraries that extend the functionality of Theano. TensorFlow and Keras can be used with Theano as back-end. Deep Learning with TensorFlow Google's TensorFlow is a Python library. This library is a great choice for building commercial-grade deep learning applications. TensorFlow grew out of another library, Distbelief v2, that was part of Google Brain Project. This library aims to extend the portability of machine learning so that research models could be applied to commercial-grade applications. Much like the Theano library, TensorFlow is based on computational graphs, where a node represents persistent data, or math operation, and edges represent the flow of data between nodes, which is a multi-dimensional array or tensor, hence the name TensorFlow. The output from an operation or a set of operations is fed as input into the next. Even though TensorFlow was designed for neural networks, it works well for other nets where computation can be modeled as data flow graph. TensorFlow also uses several features from Theano, such as common and sub-expression elimination, auto-differentiation, shared, and symbolic variables. Different types of deep nets can be built using TensorFlow, like convolutional nets, autoencoders, RNTN, RNN, RBM, DBM, MLP, and so on. However, there is no support for hyperparameter configuration in TensorFlow. For this functionality, we can use Keras. Deep Learning with Keras Keras is a powerful, easy-to-use Python library for developing and evaluating deep learning models. It has a minimalist design that allows us to build a net layer by layer, train it, and run it. It wraps the efficient numerical computation libraries Theano and TensorFlow and allows us to define and train neural network models in a few short lines of code. It's a high-level neural network API, helping to make wide use of deep learning and artificial intelligence. It runs on top of a number of lower-level libraries, including TensorFlow, Theano, and so on. Keras code is portable. We can implement a neural network in Keras using Theano or TensorFlow as a back-ended without any changes in code. In this implementation of deep learning, our objective is to predict the customer attrition or churning data for a certain bank, which customers are likely to leave this bank service. The data set used is relatively small and contains 10,000 rows with 14 columns. 
We're using Anaconda distribution and frameworks like Theano, TensorFlow, and Keras. Keras is built on top of TensorFlow and Theano, which function as its backends. Artificial Neural Network Installing Theano Pip Install Upgrade Theano Installing TensorFlow Pip Install Upgrade TensorFlow Installing Keras Pip Install Upgrade Keras Step 1 Data Preprocessing In Importing the Libraries Import NumPy as NP Import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. Import pandas as PD. Importing the database. Dataset equals PD read CSV churn modeling.csv. Step 2. We create matrices of the features of dataset and the target variable, which is column 14, labeled as exited. The initial look of the data is as shown below. In x equals dataset iloc 313 values. y equals dataset iloc 13 values. x. Output. Step 3. y. Output. Array 101 110. D type equals int 64. Step 4. We make the analysis simpler by encoding string variables. We're using the scikit-learn function label encoder to automatically encode the different labels in the columns with values between 0 to n classes minus 1. From sklearn.preprocessing, import label encoder 1 hot encoder. Label encoder x1 equals label encoder x1 equals label encoder x1, fit transform x1. Label encoder x2 equals label encoder. x2 equals label encoder x2, fit transform x2, x. Output. In the above output, country names are replaced by 0, 1, and 2, while male and female are replaced by 0 and 1. Step 5. Labeling encoded data. We use the same scikit-learn library and another function called the one-hot encoder to just pass the column number, creating a dummy variable. One-hot encoder equals one-hot encoder, categorical features equals one. X equals one-hot encoder, fit transform X to array. X equals X, one, X. Now, the first two columns represent the country, and the fourth column represents the gender. Output. We always divide our data into training and testing part. We train our model on training data, and then we check the accuracy of a model on testing data, which helps in evaluating the efficiency of model. Step 6. We're using scikit-learn's train-test-split function to split our data into training set and test set. We keep the train to test split ratio as 80 to 20. Splitting the data set into the training set and test set. From sklearn model selection, import train test split. x train x test y train y test equals train test split x y test size equals 0 0.2. Some variables have values in thousands while some have values in tens or ones. We scale the data so that they're more representative. Step 7. In this code, we're fitting and transforming the training data using the standard scalar function. We standardize our scaling so that we use the same fitted method to transform or scale test data. Feature scaling. From sklearn preprocessing, import standard scalar. SC equals standard scalar. X train equals SC fit transform X train. X test equals SC transform X test. Output. The data is now scaled properly. Finally, 
we're done with our data pre-processing. Now we'll start with our model. Step 8. We import the required modules here. We need the sequential module for initializing the neural network and the dense module to add the hidden layers. Importing the Keras libraries and packages. Import Keras. From Keras models, import sequential. From Keras layers, import dense. Step 9. We'll name the model as classifier as our aim is to classify customer churn. Then we use the sequential model for initialization. Initializing neural network. Classifier equals sequential. Step 10. We add the hidden layers one by one using the dense function. In the code below, we'll see many arguments. Our first parameter is output dim. It's the number of nodes we add to this layer. Init is the initialization of the stochastic gradient descent. In a neural network, we assign weights to each node. At initialization, weights should be near to zero, and we randomly initialize weights using the uniform function. The input dim parameter is needed only for the first layer, as the model does not know the number of our input variables. Here, the total number of input variables is 11. In the second layer, the model automatically knows the number of input variables from the first hidden layer. Execute the following line of code to add the input layer to the first hidden layer. Classifier add dense units equals 6 kernel initializer equals uniform. Activation equals ReLU, input dim equals 11. Execute the following line of code to add the second hidden layer. Classifier add, dense, units equals 6, kernel initializer equals uniform, activation equals ReLU. Execute the following line of code to add the output layer. Classifier add, dense, units equals 1, Kernel initializer equals uniform, activation equals sigmoid. Step 11. Compiling the AN. We've added multiple layers to our classifier until now. We will now compile them using the compile method. Arguments added in final compilation control complete the neural network, so we need to be careful in this step. Here's a brief explanation of the arguments. First argument is optimizer. This is an algorithm used to find the optimal set of weights. This algorithm is called the stochastic gradient descent, SGD. Here we're using one among several types, called the atom optimizer. The SGD depends on loss, so our second parameter is loss. If our dependent variable is binary, we use logarithmic loss function called binary cross entropy. And if our dependent variable has more than two categories on output, then we use categorical cross entropy. We want to improve performance of our neural network based on accuracy, so we add metrics as accuracy. Compiling neural network. Classifier compile. Optimizer equals atom, loss equals binary cross entropy, metrics equals accuracy. Step 12. A number of codes need to be executed in this step. Fitting the AND to the training set. We now train our model on the training data. We use the fit method to fit our model. We also optimize the weights to improve model efficiency. For this, we have to update the weights. Batch size is the number of observations after which we update the weights. Epic is the total number of iterations. The values of batch size and epic are chosen by the trial and error method. Classifier fit. X train, Y train. Batch size equals 10. Epic equals 50. Making predictions and evaluating the model. Predicting the test set results. Y pred equals classifier predict x test. 
y pred equals y pred greater than 0 0.5. Predicting a single new observation. Predicting a single new observation. Our goal is to predict if the customer with the following data will leave the bank. Geography, Spain. Credit score, 500. Gender, female. Age, 40. Tenure, 3. Balance, 50,000. Number of products, 2. Has credit card, yes. Is active member, yes. Step 13. Predicting the test set result. The prediction result will give you probability of the customer leaving the company. We'll convert that probability into binary 0 and 1. Predicting the test set results. Y pred equals classifier predict x test. Y pred equals y pred greater than 0 0.5. New prediction equals classifier predict SC transform NP array 0 0.0, 0, 0, 500, 1, 40, 3, 50,000, 2, 1, 1, 40,000. New prediction equals new prediction greater than 0 0.5. Step 14. This is the last step where we evaluate our model performance. We already have original results, and thus we can build confusion matrix to check the accuracy of our model. Making the confusion matrix from sklearn metrics import confusion matrix cm equals confusion matrix y test y pred print cm output loss 0 0.3384 ac 0 0.8605 1541 From the confusion matrix, the accuracy of our model can be calculated as accuracy equals 1541 plus 175 divided by 2000 equals 0 0.858. We achieved 85.8% .8 accuracy, which is good. The Forward Propagation Algorithm In this section, we'll learn how to write code to do forward propagation prediction for a simple neural network. Each data point is a customer. The first input is how many accounts they have, and the second input is how many children they have. The model will predict how many transactions the user makes in the next year. The input data is preloaded as input data and the weights are in a dictionary called weights. The array of weights for the first node in the hidden layer are in weights node 0, and for the second node in the hidden layer are in weights node 1, respectively. The weights feeding into the output node are available in weights. The Rectified Linear Activation Function an activation function is a function that works at each node. It transforms the node's input into some output. The rectified linear activation function, called ReLU, is widely used in very high-performance networks. This function takes a single number as an input, returning zero if the input is negative, and input as the output if the input is positive. Here are some examples. ReLU 4 equals 4. ReLU negative 2 equals 0. We fill in the definition of the ReLU function. We use the max function to calculate the value for the output of ReLU. We apply the ReLU function to node 0 input to calculate node 0 output. We apply the ReLU function to node 1 input to calculate node 1 output. Import numpy as np. Input data equals np array negative 1, 2. Weights equals node 0 np array 3, 3. Node 1 np array 1, 5. Output 
NP array 2, negative 1. Node 0 input equals input data times weights node 0 sum. Node 0 output equals NP tan H node 0 input. Node 1 input equals input data times weights node 1 sum. Node 1 output equals NP tan H node 1 input. Hidden layer output equals NP array node 0 output node 1 output. Output equals hidden layer output times weights output sum. Print output. Def relu input. Define your relu activation function here. Calculate the value for the output of the relu function output. Output equals max input 0. Return the value just calculated. Return output. Calculate node 0 value, node 0 output. Node 0 input equals input data times weights node 0 sum. Node 0 output equals relu node 0 input. Calculate node 1 value, node 1 output. Node 1 input equals input data times weights node 1 sum. Node 1 output equals relu node 1 input. Put node values into array, hidden layer outputs. Hidden layer outputs equals NP array, node 0 output, node 1 output. Calculate model output. Do not apply relu. Model output equals hidden layer outputs times weights output sum. Print model output, print model output. Output 0 0.995054753687305. Negative 3. Applying the network to many rows of data. In this section, we'll learn how to define a function called predict with network. This function will generate predictions for multiple data observations taken from network above, taken as input data. The weights given in above network are being used. The ReLU function definition is also being used. Let's define a function called predict with network that accepts two arguments, input data row and weights, and returns a prediction from the network as the output. We calculate the input and output values for each node, storing them as node 0 input, node 0 output, node 1 input, and node 1 output. To calculate the input value of a node, we multiply the relevant arrays together and compute their sum. To calculate the output value of a node, we apply the relu function to the input value of the node. We use a for loop to iterate over input data. We also use our predict with network to generate predictions for each row of the input data minus input data row. We also append each prediction to results. Define predict with network. Def predict with network input data row weights. Calculate node zero value. Node 0 input equals input data row times weights node 0 sum. Node 0 output equals relu node 0 input. Calculate node 1 value. Node 1 input equals input data row times weights node 1 sum. Node 1 output equals relu node 1 input. Put node values into array, hidden layer outputs. Hidden layer outputs equals NP array, node 0 output, node 1 output. Calculate model output. Input to final layer equals hidden layer outputs times weights output sum. Model output equals relu input to final layer. Return model output. Return model output. Create empty lists to store prediction results. 
results equals for input data row in input data append prediction to results results append predict with network input data row weights print results print results output 0 12 here we've used the relu function where relu 26 equals 26 and relu negative 13 equals 0 and so on deep multi-layer neural networks. Here we're writing code to do forward propagation for a neural network with two hidden layers. Each hidden layer has two nodes. The input data has been preloaded as input data. The nodes in the first hidden layer are called node 00 and node 01. Their weights are preloaded as weights node 00 and weights node 01 respectively. The nodes in the second hidden layer are called node 10 and node 11. Their weights are preloaded as weights node 10 and weights node 11, respectively. We then create a model output from the hidden nodes using weights preloaded as weights output. We calculate node 00 input using its weights weights node 00 and the given input data. Then apply the relu function to get node 00 output. We do the same as above for node 01 input to get node 01 output. We calculate node 10 input using its weights, weight node 10, and the outputs from the first hidden layer minus hidden 0 outputs. We then apply the relu function to get node 10 output. We do the same as above for node 11 input to get node 11 output. We calculate model output using weights output and the outputs from the second hidden layer, hidden one outputs array. We do not apply the relu function to this output. Import numpy as np. Input data equals np array 35. Weights equals node 00, np array 24. Node 0, 01, NP array 4, negative 5. Node 10, NP array negative 1, 1. Node 11, NP array 2, 2. Output, NP array 2, 7. Def, predict with network input data. Calculate node 0 in the first hidden layer. Node 00, zero input equals input data times weights node 00, zero sum. Node 00 output equals relu node 00 input. Calculate node 1 in the first hidden layer. Node 01 input equals input data times weights node 01 sum. Node 01 output equals relu node 01 input. Put node values into array hidden 0 outputs. Hidden 0 outputs equals NP array. Node 00 output, node 01 output. Calculate node 0 in the second hidden layer. Node 10 input equals hidden 0 outputs times weights, node 10 sum. Node 10 output equals relu, node 10 input. Calculate node 1 in the second hidden layer. Node 11 input equals hidden 0 outputs times weights node 11 sum. Node 11 output equals relu node 11 input. Put node values into array hidden 1 outputs. Hidden 1 outputs equals NP array node 10 output node 11 output. Calculate model output. Model output. Model output equals hidden one output times weights output sum. Return model output. Return model output. Output equals predict with network input data. Print output. Output 364. Chapter 2 Data Analysis. What is data analysis? Data analysis is defined as a process of cleaning, 
transforming, and modeling data to discover useful information for business decision making. The purpose of data analysis is to extract useful information from data and taking the decision based upon the data analysis. Whenever we take any decision in our day-to-day -day life is by thinking about what happened last time or what will happen by choosing that particular decision. This is nothing but analyzing our past or future and making decisions based on it. For that, we gather memories of our past or dreams of our future. So that's nothing but data analysis. Now, same thing analyst does for business purposes is called data analysis. Why data analysis? To grow your business, even to grow in your life, sometimes all you need to do is analysis. If your business is not growing, then you have to look back and acknowledge your mistakes and make a plan again without repeating these mistakes. And even if your business is growing, then you have to look forward to making the business to grow more. All you need to do is analyze your business data and business processes. Data Analysis Tools Data analysis tools make it easier for users to process and manipulate data, analyze the relationships and correlations between data sets, and it also helps to identify patterns and trends for interpretation. Here's a complete list of tools. Types of data analysis. There are several types of data analysis techniques that exist based on business and technology. The major types of data analysis are text analysis, statistical analysis, diagnostic analysis, predictive analysis, prescriptive analysis. Text analysis. Text analysis is also referred to as data mining. It's a method to discover a pattern in large data sets using databases or data mining tools. It's used to transform raw data into business information. Business intelligence tools are present in the market, which is used to take strategic business decisions. Overall, it offers a way to extract and examine data and deriving patterns and, finally, interpretation of the data. Statistical analysis. Statistical analysis shows what happened by using past data in the form of dashboards. Statistical analysis includes collection, analysis, interpretation, presentation, and modeling of data. It analyzes a set of data or a sample of data. There are two categories of this type of analysis, descriptive analysis and inferential analysis. Descriptive analysis. Analyses complete data or a sample of summarized numerical data. It shows mean and deviation for continuous data, whereas percentage and frequency for categorical data. Inferential analysis. Analyses sample from complete data. In this type of analysis, you can find different conclusions from the same data by selecting different samples. Diagnostic analysis. Diagnostic analysis shows why did it happen by finding the cause from the insight found in statistical analysis. This analysis is useful to identify behavior patterns of data. If a new problem arrives in your business process, then you can look into this analysis to find similar patterns of that problem and it may have chances to use similar prescriptions for the new problems. Predictive analysis. Predictive analysis shows what's likely to happen by using previous data. The simple ex example is like if last year I bought two dresses based on my savings, and if this year my salary is increasing double, then I can buy four dresses. But of course, it's not easy like this because you have to think about other circumstances like chances of prices of clothes is increased this year, or maybe instead of dresses, you want to buy a new bike, or you need a new house. So here, this analysis makes predictions about future outcomes based on current or past data. Forecasting is just an estimate. 
its accuracy is based on how much detailed information you have and how much you dig in it. Prescriptive Analysis Prescriptive analysis combines the insight from all previous analysis to determine which action to take in a current problem or decision. Most data-driven companies are utilizing prescriptive analysis because predictive and descriptive analysis are not enough to improve data performance. Based on current situations and problems, they analyze the data and make decisions. Data Analysis Process Data analysis process is nothing but gathering information by using proper application or tool, which allows you to explore the data and find a pattern in it. Based on that, you can take decisions or you can get ultimate conclusions. Data analysis consists of the following phases. Data requirement gathering, data collection, data cleaning, data analysis, data interpretation, data visualization. Data requirement gathering. First of all, you have to think about why do you want to do this data analysis? All you need to find out the purpose or aim of doing the analysis. You have to decide which type of data analysis you wanted to do. In this phase, you have to decide what to analyze and how to measure it. You have to understand why you are investigating and what measures you have to use to do this analysis. Data Collection After requirement gathering, you'll get a clear idea about what things you have to measure and what should be your findings. Now it's time to collect your data based on requirements. Once you collect your data, remember that the collected data must be processed and organized for analysis. As you collect the data from various sources, you must have to keep a log with the collection date and source of the data. Data Cleaning Now whatever data is collected may not be useful or relevant to your aim of analysis, hence it should be cleaned. The data which is collected may contain duplicate records, white spaces, or errors. The data should be cleaned and error-free. This phase must be done before analysis because, based on data cleaning, your output of analysis will be closer to your expected outcome. Data Analysis Once the data is collected, cleaned, and processed, it's ready for analysis. As you manipulate data, you may find you have the exact information you need, or you might need to collect more data. During this phase, you can use data analysis tools and software, which will help you understand, interpret, and derive conclusions based on the requirements. Data Interpretation After analyzing your data, it's finally time to interpret your results. You can choose the way to express or communicate your data analysis. Either you can use simply in words or maybe a table or chart. Then, use the results of your data analysis process to decide your best course of action. Data Visualization Data visualization is very common in your day-to-day -day life. They often appear in the form of charts and graphs. In other words, data shown graphically so that it will be easier for the human brain to understand and process it. Data visualization often used to discover unknown facts and trends. By observing relationships and comparing data sets, you can find a way to find out meaningful information. Chapter number three, machine learning. Machine learning is enabling computers to tackle tasks that have until now only been carried out by people. From driving cars to translating speech, machine learning is driving an explosion in the capabilities of artificial intelligence, helping software make sense of the messy and unpredictable real world. 
But what exactly is machine learning? And what is making the current boom in machine learning possible? What is machine learning? At a very high level, machine learning is the process of teaching a computer system how to make accurate predictions when fed data. Those predictions could be answering whether a piece of fruit in a photo is a banana or an apple, spotting people crossing the road in front of a self-driving car, whether the use of the word book in a sentence relates to a paperback or a hotel reservation, whether an email is spam, or recognizing speech accurately enough to generate captions for a YouTube video. The key difference from traditional computer software is that a human developer hasn't written code that instructs the system how to tell the difference between the banana and the apple. Instead, a machine learning model has been taught how to reliably discriminate between the fruits by being trained on a large amount of data. In this instance, likely a huge number of images labeled as containing a banana or an apple. Data Retention Policy The organization is subject to data retention requirements resulting from a mix of legal, industry, and business mandates. These data retention requirements govern the storage of the organization's information, records, and data. Regulations dictate what is the difference between AI and machine learning. Machine learning may have enjoyed enormous success of late, but it's just one method for achieving artificial intelligence. At the birth of the field of AI in the 1950s, AI was defined as any machine capable of performing a task that would typically require human intelligence. AI systems will generally demonstrate at least some of the following traits planning, learning, reasoning, problem-solving, knowledge representation, perception, motion, and manipulation, and, to a lesser extent, social intelligence and creativity. Alongside machine learning, there are various other approaches used to build AI systems, including evolutionary computation, where algorithms undergo random mutations and combinations between generations in an attempt to evolve optimal solutions, and expert systems where computers are programmed with rules that allow them to mimic the behavior of a human expert in a specific domain, for example, an autopilot system flying a plane. What are the main types of machine learning? Machine learning is generally split into two main categories, supervised and unsupervised learning. What is supervised learning? This approach basically teaches machines by example. During training for supervised learning, systems are exposed to large amounts of labeled data. For example, images of handwritten figures annotated to indicate which number they correspond to. Given sufficient examples, a supervised learning system would learn to recognize the clusters of pixels and shapes associated with each number and eventually be able to recognize handwritten numbers, able to reliably distinguish between the numbers 9 and 4 or 6 and 8. However, training these systems typically requires huge amounts of labeled data, with some systems needing to be exposed to millions of examples to master a task. As a result, the datasets used to train these systems can be vast, with Google's Open Images dataset having about 9 million images. It's labeled Video Repository, YouTube 8M, linking to 7 million labeled videos, and ImageNet, one of the early databases of this kind, having more than 14 million categorized images. The size of training datasets continues to grow, with Facebook recently announcing it had compiled 3.5 billion images publicly available on Instagram, using hashtags attached to each image as labels. Using 1 billion of these photos to train an image recognition system yielded record levels of accuracy of 85.4% on 
on ImageNet's benchmark. The laborious process of labeling the data sets used in training is often carried out using crowd working services, such as Amazon Mechanical Turk, which provides access to a large pool of low cost labor spread across the globe. For instance, ImageNet was put together over two years by nearly 50,000 people, mainly recruited through Amazon Mechanical Turk. However, Facebook's approach of using publicly available data to train systems could provide